this one. <laughs> hey. Nice. We're getting better at this, guys. 10 seconds, no pressure. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Why are you so good at this? championship normally i would follow up on that uh in a silky smooth transition but, <laughs> um i don't where, where did any of that come from where did where they're, the black they're, cats those come are generally from? bad omens but oh bad omens get I was it word thinking, play i was thinking bad luck and oh, no yeah. bad luck things are happening because we're here at the omen oasis championship oh, yeah. we're gonna have some amazing brawlhalla coming <laughs> at us today so we're lucky the viewers at home are lucky everybody that's going to be watching this is lucky so really only good omens yeah, for exactly. us here in the studio and everybody watching and following along at home yes lots of good omens today and of course uh, good omens for our players today because it is another championship another pr tournament and fortunately for us it hasn't been that long since the last pr tournament so we get to see who really had the fire lit underneath them after their performances at the Winter Championship. Of course, Winter Championship, always a very volatile event. And here's where we start to see, is it going to be consistent throughout the year? Or is it going to be the, the situation where the people who lost in Winter Championship get fired up and start to win it out towards the later ends of the season? Now, the time in between the two tournaments, this one, of course, and then the Winter Championship right before us, it is relatively small. The season started a little bit earlier than we're used to with the Winter Championship. That might have caught some people off guard. Maybe they didn't have actually as much time to practice as they thought they did. And then all of a sudden, winter's happened. We have the results and the fallout of that. And then all of a sudden here, a few weeks later, we have yet another tournament. So again, it's not like winter to spring championship that has a huge gap in between. It's like, you kind of got to get going. Once you see the results of that winter championship, whether good or bad, you know there's another tournament right around the corner. You can't just show up for like your first exam, fail it, and be like, hey, well, you know what? <laughs> I'll study really hard for the next one that's in a month and a half. No, instead, the next one is only a few weeks away. And so we'll see who's really been putting in the time, who's been studying up for today's Omen Oasis Championship. It is still an open invita invite tournament, so it's gonna be one of those situations where there are those kind of killers that are getting slept on, those people who are coming in who maybe not have got, or, or who maybe are outside of the top 32 who wouldn't have been invited to some of the other situational tournaments that we have, um, and instead they're gonna be coming in and maybe taking out some of the big names. So we already have had some people get sent down into the loser's bracket, but we are going to talk about players that you need to be keeping your eye on, whether that's on the screen, on the screen you're watching right now, on twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla, or on the bracket. If you're on Twitch, hit exclamation point bracket in chat. That'll give you a link so you can follow along to everyone. And you're going to notice some of those names that are moving through that bracket we are about to talk about. Yeah, so let's start talking about some of the players to watch. And first and foremost, I'm going to talk about the person who I still think is one of the most slept on people in the region. He is one of the people who consistently gets just shy of a podium. He's so stinking good and yet very often is left out of people's top three predictions let's talk about machete uh, i think leaving him out of the top three predictions is not a terrible choice whatsoever depending on the day coming into this one seed number seven that is far outside that top three pr number seven that again is far outside so the seed is sort of more of the volatile one like if you do really good on x tournament you'll be a much higher seed or a much closer seed to that and your PR will still shift but not shift quite as much so in the long run 
that's his PR, still outside of top three. On the more close or more results based here recently, that's his seat still outside of the top three. But we have seen France start to dominate EU Brawlhalla, kind of like we used to see Sweden dominate EU Brawlhalla. Of course, I'm looking at Hazer Delta, I'm looking at Swada, I'm looking at Machete, and there are several other of those French players. Machete is sort of a long time player, back from the past, way long time ago, back when there really weren't that many Mordex is out in the game. There was, of course, the Sandstorm going on. I loved Machete's Mordex as well, but if we're looking at some of his recent character choices, it's a lot of Ulgrim. I think he locked in a Zul on one of his really early pool sets today. So we're already seeing him swap characters just a little bit before we actually get into the real groove of the tournament where you're in top 32. One thing I love about his character picks in particular is that they're fringe meta. There's like a logic behind it where you're like, I see what you're doing. This is a popular weapon but he's not going for the very obvious he's not going for the bode bar he's not going for the taros instead he's coming in with the zolt it still has the axe it still hits hard but then he's got this cannon on the side he's got the things like the sigil where it's like okay sword you can't go wrong but it's got this cannon he comes in with the mordex he's got the scythe of course a popular pick but still it's just kind of this fringe thing that you don't see too often now machete has made it into top 32 but his top 32 qualifier match was against toby t-o-b-i we've seen that name a little bit pop up on the broadcast before that one went all the way to game three so we'll see what machete does once we actually get into that top 32 once the sort of regular flow is going on for him okay um on that note it's time to talk about someone else this is another person who is it's an interesting one he is such an enigma to me because he started off uh last year basically unheard of then he won the world championship for europe and then he didn't do good at the winter championship. So I'm just left baffled at where to put him. How do you predict something that is so volatile of a player? Swada is definitely an interesting one. He has been reporting Bodvar today so far. We love to see that. He is number three on the ranked leaderboard in EU, coming in at a 2662 ELO peak. So it's a very solid peak. Now, occasionally we see people get into those 2800s, 2900s, 3000s, but we're still somewhat relatively early in the season. So he's number three at 2662. Nobody's really hitting that 2900 ceiling yet. But he also did win the two most recent community tournaments that I believe happened after or maybe sandwiched in between or on the outsides of that winter championship. It was Warriors fight number three and Warriors fight number four. So back to back Warriors fights. But if you look at the top three of those tournaments, that podium doesn't look like your standard major or seasonal or omen oasis championship podium like we're likely to see today so he still did come out on top still got the gold medal it's very important but you're not seeing the acnos up there you're not seeing the pavelskis in that you're not seeing the ninjas you're not seeing really any of the other players in that tournament that we're going to be talking about on this pre-show and that you're likely to see on the broadcast yeah that was my big question as you were talking about those community tournaments is like are these community tournaments where you're seeing all the top players come out or are these kind of asterisk community community tournaments where you're going to see people be like oh yeah but there's not x name in that tournament and it seems like they're a little bit more asterisk tournaments it's still great to see him go home with those gold medals but still that volatility in specifically official tournaments has me concerned and one of the biggest things specifically is he has a losing record against most of the players that you would likely talk about on the pre-show. Pavelski hasn't been hitting those highs anymore, so he's not one of those players that we're really expecting in the top three. SWAT has a winning record against him, but all of the other players, if I'm looking at Akno, if I'm looking at Simple, if I'm looking at Blaze, if I'm looking at Ninja, I can't remember if SWAT and Godly went up against one another in Winters, but I bet they did, and I bet SWAT has a losing record against Godly as well. I love that you brought up Pavelski, and I don't want to sit on Pavelski too long, but I do want to mention that I think there's a lot of parallels between Swada and Pavelski. Both of them kind of burst out, won their world championship for the year, and then throughout the year weren't exactly showing up the way that we expect a world champion to show up. But at the end of the day, it's about what you're doing day of, right? All you got to do is win your best of fives, and you're going to be going home with a gold medal. We'll see if you can do that today, but we are moving on to our next player, someone that I have a lot of faith in individually as a player, and that's coming in Fozy here. Going to be one of the lower seeds, or if not the lowest seed that we'll be talking about on this pre-show here, coming in at seed number 10, which means not going to have the easiest bracket here. If I'm just looking at top 32 real quick, 
crossing my fingers that Fozy even made it in here. <laughs> uh, it's going to be Fozy versus Machete in winner's round one. Winner of that moves on to face Akino. So you, either player that we've talked about here on the pre-show has to face Akino to get in on the top eight winner's side. I think Fozy certainly has the potential. Polymonto hooked me up with some insider information that Fozy is likely playing a Jiro today. I still think there is some room to go and succeed on Jiro. I don't know how much of him <laughs> is underutilized, like how much is there beneath the surface and extract and use, but I really think Fozy is one of the possible next players and could be like the number one Swede in EU Brahala. Okay, it, it sounds to me as a kind of an a almost third party in this uh, that you're kind of getting in early on the yes. Fozy prediction. Yes. Because, like, by numbers, there isn't a lot there for Fozy. It's not like True. he's getting consistent podiums or anything like that. He's, I mean, he didn't even top three in the most recent tournament that you can make the recency bias. So it sounds like you're kind of trying to slip in early and be like, yo, keep your eyes on this guy for maybe the rest of the year. But right now, you're putting him, you're putting him big. You're putting some, uh, some pressure on him. I'm trying to put my finger in as many pies as I possibly can to Gross. get in early so that I look like a really smart guy uh -huh. when the good stuff happens. And yeah. if it doesn't, I, I mean, it's whatever. It's, yeah, it's, absolutely. it's not a big deal on that one. But just a little bit more on Fozy. Peak 2601 ELO, a little bit under 200, or a little bit over, actually, 280 ranked games. So he's been doing a little bit of ranked grinding on that. I really think Fozy has some room to go on this year specifically. We could see him pop off this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's definitely a, a person to keep their eyes or to keep your eyes on. But I'm not exactly confident the way that you are. But that's okay. That's why we talk about him here on the pre-show. Up next, let's talk about Simple. Simple, a name that I think is very easy to have a lot of confidence in. Has very consistent top threes. What do you want to say about Simple? Uh, ninth in Winter Championships. That's scary. Yeah. If you're looking at a player like Simple, who is sort of that one of those consistent top threes. So again, we always have this question in the winter championship is, is this the harbinger of things to come? Or is this that one tournament that happens every year where we sometimes we see people go into that tournament and pop off like Tiffany, who then don't pop off as much the rest of the time. Or we have characters like Blue specifically in the EU region who popped off in a winter championship and then had the era of Blue. Simple is one of those people. Winter championship going in with Simple. I think I put him in my top three. That ninth place does worry me, though. It's not like he got fifth or six or anything like that. He got ninth, he was outside of top eight. I think that was hopefully a wake up call for him. It's been three weeks, he's had time to practice. He's been streaming. I hope Simple does better and reaches that potential that uh, we have all seen him reach in the past at this tournament. I will tell you something that maybe will give you some confidence. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of patterns. I'm a fan of recency, but I'm also a fan of patterns. And if we look at Simple's official tournaments, he gets one ninth a year. In 2020, it was ninth at Summer Championship, fourth at LTC, first in Autumn, and then second at Mammoth, second at VCX. 2021, second at Winners, ninth at Spring, third at Parsec, second at Summer, first at Mammoth, third in Autumn, second in VCX. So he's getting his ninth out of the way early. Now he gets to go in and get those top eights. Of, his, uh, of the times he gets into the top eight, he has 68% uh, of the time he podiums. So if he can get in the top eight, I'm feeling really good about the simple thing. Now, one thing I am worried about, though, is if you look back a little bit earlier into 2020, he got two nights that year, once at Summer Championship and once at Spring Championship. All right, championship. well, my, my, my stats stopped right <laughs> to shy. Right. So I, I'm hoping that he outgrew those two ninth places. He's gotten his single one for the year. He got it out of the way early. I think he's going to be coming out very highly rated this year. His seeds are going to be high. His power rank is going to be high. His earnings are going to be high. Everything is up for Simple right now. I expect that to continue here in the Omen Oasis Championship. I mean, at the very least, his play style has been consistent. You know for a fact he's going to be coming in with the bow bar. You know for a fact he's got a very solid play style that doesn't have to change too much from opponent to opponent. So it's not going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of really minute changes that end up leading to victory, hopefully, for the Simple Top 3. Who do we have next up on the docket, Duke? All right. 
up next, we're going to be talking about Akno. At once, the top seed of every tournament in EU. Of course, still dominating the double space. Still a fantastic 1v1-er, but he's not the top seed this time. Instead, he's coming in as the second seed for the Omen Oasis Championship. And that is based off largely of his place in the Winter Championship, where he got second to Godly. And if you look at a lot of top players' Winter Championships, it'll look a little bit different than some of the other tournaments of the year. Aknos didn't look too much different for the most part. I mean, everybody you saw him going up against three O's and three ones early on against everyone except SWAT. Of course, that's sort of like one of the highest contenders for Akno. He went all the way to game five against SWAT, but still beat him in game five. All of that is normal. That is all to be expected. But then when he went up against Godly, that's where things sort of started to change. And we didn't see that standard success from Akno. It's still. Both of them went to game five. The first knockdown into the loser's bracket, that was a game five. And then the grand finals victory that Godly had was also a game five situation. So it'll be interesting to see if they if they go up against one another, which I think is highly likely. If we get to those game five situations again, and if Godly is able to do what a lot of people aren't against Akno. Akno had to change characters several times against Godly. So at least at that moment, he didn't really have what he needed to, all of the ingredients that he needed to beat Godly in that moment. He was trying multiple different characters. He played the uh, the Petra. He went to a Mordex, I think, at one point. But here recently, I was looking at one of his streams. He's been playing a lot of different characters. He was playing a Yumiko a lot yesterday. He also played Azoth quite a bit yesterday. If we look at the regular Koji with 93 ranked games in the season, looking at the Mordex, 27 games. Looking at the Yumiko, 28 games. Azoth, 17 games. So even if the success is not the same, I think we're going to see some more variation coming out from Akno in his play and his characters as well. Okay, yeah, he does have a large character pool. I'm going to hit you with some quick statistics okay. before we move on to the I'm next ready. person. Of the times he gets into top 32, 50% of the time, he goes home with a gold medal. That's pretty good. That's insane. Of the times he gets into the top eight, 58% of the time, he goes home with a gold medal. That's pretty this good. This guy, gold medals tournament after tournament. He has been a long time favorite. So, I mean, we're already getting into the top 32 because the tournament is going on. I think there's a decent chance that he's going to go far, but the only question is he's going in to that X factor. He's going into godly. And Godly is an interesting one, man. God, there's there's a lot of uh, mystery sort of around Godly, but there's also not a lot of mystery around Godly because <laughs> going into Winter Championships, everybody was like, you got to watch Godly. you got to watch Godly. He's one of the best players, if not the best player in EU. But we were just sort of waiting to see what would actually happen in that specific tournament setting because you can go through as many ranked games as you want. You can go through as many community tournaments as you want, but you can never fully replicate that actual tournament setting. So that was sort of the mystery around how Godly was going to perform. Well, the mystery was solved. Godly performed quite well coming out on top in that. Coming into this one, he's going to be seed number eight. So his bracket is not going to be as difficult as it was previously. I believe he went into winter championships at seed 86. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to hit you with the only statistic that I was able to find about Godly and that of his Brahalla official tournament, he has 100% gold medals. He's played in one official tournament, Winter Championship 2022, and he got a gold medal. This guy is a monster, and of course it shows because the whole community said to keep their eyes on him. And I will admit I was a doubter. I didn't know because he wasn't tested, but now he's been tested and proven, and I've got, uh, you know what, I, I'm converted to the Church of Godly. I definitely believe in Godly as well. Uh, there is still that potential that he will be that type of player that comes out wins big in Winter Championship, and then doesn't really reach those highs that often anymore. Again, pointing out a player like Tiffany, even a player like Pugsy until just recently, kind of. Pugsy was the guy who would send a random tweet and then say, but I won Winters. And that would be like one of the things that he holds on to going forward. I think Godly will not be sort of a more of a flash in the pan in that situation. I think he really has the room to go this season. And even in twos as well, alongside Simple, I don't think that gold medal spot is going to quite easily go to Akno and in twos, Akno and Blaze, quite like it used to. It's not as much of a given anymore. Yeah, it's, it's super exciting to see Godly, who, again, he hadn't really competed. He, he 
was gone. And then he comes in, he wins Winter Championship, and now everyone's got their eyes on Godly. They want to see how well he can do. It's going to be an amazing 2022 for Godly, if, especially if he can really continue this rise. Of course, he's already hit the top, but to rise in twos as well and to suddenly be able to dom dominate a region after not competing at all, that is massive. He has a couple different characters, or a few different characters he's likely to go into this tournament with. The Rayman's level 22, the Mordex is level 38, the Koji is level 29. But it's time to match players to numbers okay. here. Predictions are coming out. I'm going to go first on this one. I have it written down in front of yeah. me. Nothing has been changed. We're going to nail it for the first time. In third place, I told you I was going to bet big on Fozy. I'm looking for the ROI. Fozy coming in third place. I think he is the number one Swede for Brawlhalla. I don't know. I, look, I'm going to be real. I don't know if he's going to top three it, but I, I think the potential is there. Okay. And when he does, eventually, I'm going to look like a genius. <laughs> in second place, I have more of a safe bet coming into this one. Coming out with Simple, though, this second place and first place are really the top three of EU can go to like six different players at any given time. The second place is Simple, and in first place, Godly, I think we're going to see a repeat of what happened in Winter Championships. Possibly even more dominant, but I can't wait to see more Godly play. I can't wait to see more EU Brawlhalla. Uh, now it's time for my predictions, and I, I think I've gone a little bit safer than you have, especially by not having Fozzy at the very least. In third, I have none other than Simple. I believe in the Simple top three. He gets it so consistently, I can't not have him. And generally, when he gets into the top two, he's going up against none other than Akno, who I have in my second place. And the only reason why I have Akno so low, drastically low, is that I believe in the godly. I said I was converted. I'm praging for godly i mean recency alone is one of the biggest reasons why i think godly has the edge over everyone right now i don't think people have had the time to lab out how to specifically defeat godly and if you folks at home viewing on your devices if you want to get involved with the predictions we want to know what you think make sure to head on over to twitter hashtag bh esports and put your predictions on you might even see them come up on the screen tag me at who is sparky tag duke in it at duke the letter x fam and we want to know who you think is going to be coming out in top three we've already seen some predictions flying on twitter early we'll be releasing ours right after this pre-show is over but we're always curious what the rest of the community has to say about the top three. Yes, of course, and you can also watch along. There's going to be plenty of tournament action here on twitch.tv slash brawlhalla, but also on twitch.tv slash pro brawlhalla. But on uh, that note, let's talk about what's going to be happening today. We've got top 32 happening in just a little bit, which means it's going to be all best of fives throughout that format. Sparky, what else we got? One versus one, you know it, baby. It's double elimination. You got two chances. You lose one. It's okay. You can lose one more. The prize pool, all region singles prize pool, 50K, baby. Big numbers coming out. We do it for the culture. We do it for everybody playing at home, enjoying this tournament. You know this format. You love this format. We've seen this format produce some of the best Brawlhalla we've ever seen. Those best of fives, baby. That's where the juice comes out. I love that the the all of the text was in all caps, and then you came out yeah, just speaking look, in all caps. I read the prompt. Yeah, you really do. You, you hit all of the uh, quotation marks and everything for that prompter. Uh, yeah, awesome action coming up in just a little bit. I don't know what else we can say about that format. I, I Man, the format's straightforward. We've been running that format for a long time. We've tweaked it here and there, adding some more best of fives for that real, true competition that both the players, the viewers, and us love to watch. Yeah, um, okay. I think on that note, it's time we uh, set a thing of... Oh, mention for Omen Oasis first. Okay, that's that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course, if, if you haven't heard, this is the Omen Oasis Championship, sponsored by none other than Omen Oasis. Sparky, what do you know about Omen Oasis? Look, they, we were in the, like, well, we, not we, Brawlhalla was in the ad. Yeah. We watched the ad. I didn't, I don't know if I've seen that ad that actually had, had Brawlhalla in it. That beautiful collaborative space where you can all yell at each other and say mean things to one another. That is, uh, that's gaming, baby. That's the best part of gaming is the social aspect of it. And Brawlhalla was in the ad, the game. It was in the yeah. ad. Well, of course, Brawlhalla, Sick. very social game. And of course, the ability to uh, be social with your friends, communicate, voice, all that goodness with Omen Oasis. Make sure to go and download Omen Oasis. That'll let you engage with your friends playing games in maybe a different way than you're used to. 
Absolutely. All right. Um, okay. Now it's time. Uh, Y'all, we're going to get real for a, a moment. It's, uh, of course, the European champion, uh, the European portion of the Omanoises. And, of course, things are happening in Europe. So uh, we would like to say a piece. Um, Red Cross, you... Uh, Red Cross Ukraine is uh, a fantastic organization that helps provide for the peoples of Ukraine affected by the recent war that is currently going on. And uh, they do so by giving food, shelter, clothes, and first aid uh, to the peoples of Ukraine. BMG Blue Mammoth has donated $10,000, roughly 300,000, I gotta double check how to pronounce this, Hrivnia to uh, Red Cross Ukraine. And if you at home want to donate some to uh, Red Cross Ukraine as well, you can go over to redcross.org.ua slash donate or at Red Cross Ukraine on Twitter. And to all of our Ukrainian community members out there, please stay safe. Our thoughts are with you. I believe that about wraps it up for the pre-show here. We will be moving on into the games in just a moment. Make sure to tweet out your predictions. Make sure to have fun in chat. Make sure to head on over to twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla to see the other matches going on featuring your favorite players. I've been Sparky. That's Duke. Duke, take us home. Yep. We've got, uh, again, great action coming up in just a little bit for the Omen Oasis European portion uh, of the Omen Oasis Championship. We're going to take a short little break, and when we come back, that top 32 will begin. So stick around.
What is poppin' Brawlhalla? Let me say that again one more time. What is poppin' Brawlhalla? We are back with the Omen Oasis Championship. It's your boy Flambo back in Froggy Fresh with my king to my side, Ajax. AJ, how you doing, bro? Flambo, it has been way too long. Even though it hasn't been in this game, we get to bring this back together here. Like you're saying, it's been a little while for yourself, but I'm just so happy to be able to be rejoined by you, of course, here at the Omen Oasis Championships. We have an incredible follow-up towards a ridiculous Winter's Championships on all regions, including the EU, which is going to be kind of crazy already. We already hearing Pavelski going down at the losers, which is what who, who would have been here in this upcoming match, but it's probably Pavelski's own doing, going down there off, going deep for edge guard plays. We already already know, but it's going to be an incredible top 32 the first match we have coming up next is going to be Shaijaru versus knees let's pull up the stats these two actually haven't fought head to head okay so we have a fresh slate i love that because you get to see a lot of adjustments being made but most likely uh after the recent performances at winters a lot of people have you know a lot, a lot, a lot to prove we saw godly have that really deep run you got akno who's clear to be trying to get that w again today how are you feeling about the other matches that we coming up as we get ready for Shaijaru and knees well so you know, the EU has always been a little bit of a, uh, I, I guess I'd call, sometimes it's easier to read, other days it can be mm -hmm. a little bit crazier, right? There was a time where a player like Hermeson, for example, would make it like really deep into the bracket. And today, he seems to be doing pretty good. I'm wondering if he's going to be able to make like a nice deep run day, because that'd be great for me. But in the same vein, there are players in EU that like kind of disappear and then come back for a while. And Knees is one of those players, right? We're about mm -hmm. to see him pull up right now. But Knees used to be like rocking it back in the day with that Knicks. And now, show him back is going to be a great time. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and, and see what these two Sejaru, of course, were saying before, has the bow bar. Yeah, likewise with Sejaru, you know, there's a, uh, was looking up for recent, Sejaru being one of the players that can make top 32, but not really making it too far consistently. We were talking about that pre-show. And with Bodvar, it's EU. So mm -hmm. you get to get a healthy dose of Bodvar at all times. Uh, and we only getting two top 32 placements actually right there, but has been here before. So do they make the big run? Are they going to be able to make that run here against Knees? Again, no history between the two. But with Knees, on the other hand, you have the consistency. You have things like the Koji. That's going to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like It's so good at keeping someone like Bodvar out spacing-wise. Because the moment he gets in, you already know Sword is going to be a big issue. Especially KO percents when it comes to the hammer as well. How are you feeling about the way that you uh, Seijaru is going to approach trying to get around that gameplay from Knees? Well, see, that's the tough thing, right? Because if you are throwing out that Sword and like that's everyone's like the bane of their mm -hmm. existence it comes out so quick it's hard to punish and it can really keep you at bay similarly with the kind of like the side light on the sword as well it's like okay it can kind of cover higher than most people think so he's gonna have to be looking out for that granted we'll see on the side of knees what knees wants to bring to the table right we're going to go ahead and take a look at the stats that knees has here as knees as we were mentioning before one of those players who's been around for a little bit um PR 12, right? So you're mm -hmm. definitely not far down there. And you can look at those earnings, right? Like a little over 10K to his name. Has a gold medal. Almost 30. Almost 30. Top mm -hmm. 32 placements right there. That is nothing to laugh at. Exactly. That's the biggest thing right there beyond even just having that gold medal the amount of placings that knees has the consistency knows what they're doing at this position because as you get on in the tournament we are, it, stamina is a big key factor as you get later in brackets especially now in best of five territory so being able to stay focused keep your composure especially against someone who's coming up who you thought you're going to be facing against say a pavelski you have an upset that happened and now you have to adjust mm -hmm. that's something you need to be able to be confident in as we see coming up with this next match i think knees definitely has the upper hand at the moment i agree but i do like seeing upsets so who knows maybe we'll get another one from Zajaru. Yeah, and especially everyone's been grinding in Brawlhalla. It hasn't been a very easy pathway to the top. Mm -hmm. Sejaru definitely entering tournament after tournament. Today could be the day where we see someone who, you know, makes pretty decent runs in brackets, but usually stops kind of around now. Today could be the day where he pushes a little bit further, gets that mm -hmm. extra little inch, maybe even breaks into the top 16, top 8 area of bracket. But first, Knees is going to be that first hard hitter that he's going to have to take out. Yeah, I think a big example of that as we get ready for them cup coming here is Hazer Delta. We saw Hazer Delta yes. get the LCQ and then immediately drop. I mean, you're going into first seed, so you have to run into Akno. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But 
then rebounding. I believe it was fourth place or third. It was really deep into the bracket at Winters, and that is an incredible job. So maybe today is Sejaru's day. We'll see as we get ready. We're going to start off on Mammoth. One, How are you feeling so far with the pick? It's actually going to be... I believe that's Val on the other side and Mordex, uh, so we're completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this, people will be mixing all kinds of things. I knew from Nies we were going to see a Scythe Legend already coming off with the offstage play. Not going to convert into anything, but yeah, I mean, Val is another one of those characters that is picked all of the time, right? That sword, once again, going to be that tried and true weapon. The gauntlet's never a bad pick. I like it. Yeah, and when it comes to these dude, this isn't something we haven't seen before. We did pull out the Mordex a few times as well at Winter, so this is a very consistent character. But nice. going for the weapon toss off stage, catching the early recovery, and immediately we see a first stock gone. All right, just like that. That's all it takes. You mentioned it before. That weapon throw, you see the stars come out. That shows you that the recovery was stuffed. And immediately, we see knees on the back foot here. Granted, on this Mordex, going for the offstage Ooh. ground pound. No dodge. Manages to fight back with a neutral air. And that's what you like to see is Tejaru is playing immaculately right now. Knees probably didn't expect to get this much heat this early in bracket. Oh, Flavo, I don't think that uh, Knees was prepared for the fact that it looks like Tejaru is trying to bait. Uh, needs to come down there because there was quite a few times just kind of positioned perfectly. Okay, I know you're coming down here. I'm going to get this there for free. Now you're unarmed, and the pressure is on as we see Sejaru continue to push this lead. Oh, man, yeah. My, my guy's getting chopped up right now. Here we go. Sejaru uses the dodge wisely there, man, just to avoid the potential edge guard from Knees. Knees trying to find a stock, man. Some potentially the verge of setting up a three stock if Sejaru is able to go ahead and close this out, but there's the neutral stick coming out from these finally able to take that first stock, but look at all that damage. Yeah, that took a lot of time to get there, and you're pretty much within range of uh, D-Light recovery pretty soon, but the Gauntlets are going to come on deck, does inspect, catch recovery off the top, but no KO, gets the read though on the dodge and closes it out, didn't go for it the first time, converted it on the second time. And that's why it's so tough too, when you get hit by Gauntlet Sidelight, there's like a myriad of options you can go for, and like being patient is so good because you can kind of linger around the dodge area, and if they don't do anything, that recovery is going to get you right Right off the top and just like that I mean you can see Sejar is pushing forward with this lead knees needs to make a comeback here you have the scythe in hand I've seen knees do this before you can go ahead reverse near him send him off stage and just convert but will you be able to find it because Sejar is playing so well on the defense absolutely one of the things that you can always believe in, in a, when it comes to needing a comeback is that scythe but also just the incredible power for Cordex and those powerful six on the mm -hmm. gauntlet so you have to watch out if you go and put a bad jump in the wrong spot but wow. Somehow just get by, does get the wall touch, but not actually didn't get the wall touch and is going to free fall down. So we're back to even, only in the yellow. This isn't that bad for knees now. Yeah, I think he's managed to reel it in and bring it all the way back. He tries to go for that 50-50 off the sidelight at low percents. Doesn't quite get it, but the damage deficit is starting to get a little bit lower here. Sejaru answering back. How did he dodge through that down thing? Nobody will know. Oh, oh, oh no! Going all off stage. You got the dodge! Smash him up again. That's You're it. not going to get the wall touch and knees takes the first game after St. Jaro had wins. such a good start, but I think a big part of that, we were talking about the consistency. You've been here before. You know how to keep your composure, and Nies was able to clutch it out, stay calm, and got game number one. That was robbery, dude. That really was. <laughs> that was actually like, oh, man, if you are St. Jaro there, you have to feel kind of bad because Nies was able to just play patiently, right? Mm -hmm. Send him off stage, and he just kind of looked at him, saw the dodge, and said, all right, well, I'm just going to dare you a little bit further, and that's all it takes. Yeah, and now I believe I saw what was the counter pick to Brawl Haven. Removing platforms, going much smaller, deciding my neutral is better than yours. Okay, we are here. Going, my neutral is better than yours. I'm going to outplay you much like I did in the first stock. Do we see that even happen though? Because currently Needs is just having a field day with this edge guard. Sejaru did make it back, but that was a lot of damage he had to take to get back. Oh, and hold on, man. We're seeing Nies answering back with that side yet again. Sejaru needs to find potentially an early KO or just kind of hold that center stage. Now, the kill boxes are small on this stage, right? If you want to go for a recovery off the top, you can do that quite a bit lower here. Even with a KO on the side, a character like Val, that gauntlet side signature is going to carry you so far that by the time you get released, it could be a KO. But we're not even seeing that come out into play here because Nies is just so good with the offense. Exactly. Oh, knees pushing right now, trying to catch him deep off stage, trying to catch a recovery, but Sejaru somehow catches the very bottom corner. Nice. Of the but the recovery comes through, gets a stock. Doesn't matter for very long, though, because that's deep in the red. Oh, yeah.
And it's one of those things where, like, when you are getting hit over and over, berated off stage, right, you kind of want to jump, you're trying to get back to center, and you get to a point where you, as the person who's conducting the edge guard, you can go for a reversal saying, I know you're going to try to dodge through me. And just like that, Sejaru adding on all this extra damage, gets that Sayer, puts him in the corner, the side stick comes out, Weapon Pro forces the dodge, potential edge guard, but he can't line up the unarmed down air, but it doesn't matter, recess the position, looking for that final blow. And still hasn't been able to touch, tries to catch him down off the bottom of the stage. Oh my Multiple gosh. Deep off stage right now, they are both boxing, but Sejaru just misses out, that was so close, but it's going to be Knees who finally gets it, however, deep into red here is Knees now. Sejaru's got to keep it calm, because we saw this same situation mm -hmm. last time, and Knees brought it back. And I, I like the play from Sejaru off stage as well, right? Despite the fact that he didn't end up coming out on top, even if he did, it's like the risk reward is very worth it. Now he manages to find a gravity cancel, delight recovery, true combo to get that KO off the top. And this is what I'm talking about here, right? We were saying we saw this position before. You're ahead, you have a good amount of damage, a small brawl haven, you're racking up a lot of damage here. If you can keep this up, you are gonna be going to a very relaxing game three. Exactly, that's a good one to get the confidence boost going. Niche, go ahead, try and find him off stage. And I like the attempt from Sejaru trying to go for the D-Sync just to back him off. It's like, hey, you stay there in the corner. Didn't really do much after that, but I think nice. Sejaru's really controlling the pace of the game as we see him going for a deep edge guard here, Flambo. Okay, patience. Goes for a D-like ground pound. Now, that's not a true combo, and that's why you were able to see Knees dodge out there. But Knees is swinging with an immediate weapon pickup into Signature, trying to find an option. The defibrillator is not going to hit. The recovery is going to be enough off the top, and Sejaru is able to close out game number two. And look at the damage done. 591 to, like, what? We got 340 here, so they got him a little mixed up on the sides here. But, no, that's actually perfectly fine. But despite all that, I mean, it was good, right? Like, yeah. he was able to make the adjustments. He came out right on top. And, I mean, wh what does Nice have to answer for that, right? That was a convincing game, too. Absolutely. I think a big part of that was tempo control was entirely mm -hmm. in Sejaru's favor, especially after things got a little bit out of hand with that crazy edge guard they were both going for. That could have been a big moment for Nies to come back and just take it away because Sejaru had weapon control. Nies was unarmed. Decided to commit deep off stage, going for the GCD light to try and catch an early stock but kept the composure after that. That was a circus of a game number two, yes. but still an incredible, like, an incredible adjustments from Sejaru. That's exactly the reason why we're seeing Sejaru so deep into the bracket right now. And, it's, you know, you keep that kind of composure. This is the type of match that could get you moving forward in the round. We were wondering if maybe it could happen. Because I'm thinking about it like, we saw in game one, like, I I'm honestly going to say game one and game two weren't all that different. I agree. The difference was just that at the end of game one, and these was clutch, right? Mm -hmm. But it felt like Sejaru was setting the pace of game one, and then at the end, kind of lost control of things for a second. And then game two kind of played out the way we thought game one was going to go. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in these now... I'm kind of, I'm panicking a little bit. Hey, but. hey man, look, when yep. in doubt, Bodvar out. That's it, it is, it's it's That's EU fine. time, so you already know. If you are struggling a bit and you are down in matches, reach the old faithful. We're going to get the Bodvar. You always got to go back to the basics, man. I mean, Bodvar, Bodvar has put in, like, more overtime than any Brawlhalla legend, period. This man gets so much work done that I do not blame Nies for going for it. Especially before, he had two weapons that excelled off stage, but he wasn't really finding those early KOs. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's like, all right, well, if I'm not finding that, let me go to some weapons that have some pretty strong neutral here. And he has that sword and the hammer for the KO potential. Honestly, simplicity is key sometimes when you had a match that was pretty dominant in one other person's favor. You need to slow down the game. You need to shut it down in a way that will get you back in. So far, we're seeing these with a very slight health lead, but it looks a lot better because you see how they were, they're were they both playing around mid-range, not really over committing at all. And then the, the whiff punish game has been much better, at least for uh, for knees to begin with. And now stop Sarah is just a stock away. And as you say it, right? One stop, yep. two stop. There it is. You find the Sarah and that's the KO knees blazing a trail right into the lead with that stock. And it's going to be up to say Jaru to say, hey, all right, you know, you were able to deal with some of the kind of like the rarer weapons, honestly, Gauntlets and Scythe in comparison to Sword and Hammer. But now can you deal with the classic? 
Uh, both are trying, trying to deal with the big ground pound off stage to get back in the game. Uh, the Sarah off the stage, just missing there. We're going to go back to neutral here. What is it out of Sejaru that you saw in game number two that you'd like to see come back here so far? Because Nies has definitely taken control of the game and now hammer back in. It's going to be a little bit more scary. What did you see that was so good that you want to see uh, brought back? Well, so I think where Sejaru played extremely well was when he got the hit, he did a great job of baiting that he's going to do an immediate attack with his movement next mm -hmm. and then just waiting, seeing what his opponent did and then responding but this time around you know it's a little bit tougher you're scared of hammer because you know that down air is a very good option that you can whip out when somebody tries to make a play like that but i'd like to see that confidence come back I agree. I think, you know, the playing with the whole two moves ahead mindset is really good. I think it gets way more scary as you stare down Bodvar because if you whiff, you're getting a big punish. So maybe it wasn't as fearful, even though Mordex is also a great whiff punish character. But Sejaru has even the health back up here, Flambo, as they get oh the GCD light into a downer and just keeping this damage going. Yeah, no, he's starting to cook, man. This is what I love to see, especially like when people start going for double chase dodges and they get a successful hit afterward. That's how I know Ooh. they're feeling confident. Good down here. Doesn't want to play with hammer recovery, and I don't blame you. Find that D light there instead. That was a perfectly timed dodge by knees. Like the heck? That was crazy. Yeah, if that didn't come through, we're looking at Sejaru taking the lead. And speaking of Sejaru taking the lead, actually, uh -oh. this health lead Hold is on. getting better, but Knees does get neutralized. Decides the weapon toss just to try and push maybe off stage. Hunting for the hammer. Now things are frightening. Woo. <sighs> That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. He was doing such a great job of capitalizing in scenarios just like that. But in that scenario, couldn't find the KO. He's one recovery away at this point. Honestly, he has so much damage racked up on Knees. I'm wondering if a gauntlet end light might even be enough. And this side light recovery is going to do it. And there we go. Sejaru going to go ahead, pull up a very slight lead here. But you know, Knees, depending on what weapon he picks up next, if it's a hammer, Stomps air time. If it's a sword, D light recovery. And there's a gravity cancel D light. He doesn't have a dodge for a little bit here, but no capitalization from Sejaru. But Sejaru has to play perfect. Oh, Ooh, big what? drop. That was a really good like, dodge there for a moment away from the GC uh, D light into the Ser. But Nee still gets it anyways. Hammers on deck. Even stocks. This is going to matter so much because the way that these two are playing, we talk about how counter picks usually matter a lot in a oh. game three. But right now, you really need to go up a game here between these two because this is as even as it can get. Okay, Sejaru, are you going to be able to go up 2 1 in the set or is Knees going to be able to hold his own? Getting those juggles with the hammer, that falling nair is such a scary option to deal with. And you're going to burn your gravity cancel just like that. Gave Sejaru a free two heat hit punish like it, it's scary around these parts man like especially when your health is approaching the orange you need to be careful with those gravity cancels because it could cost you so much in the long run agreed like you look like a genius if it works and it's sometimes you feel a little silly but especially here at ko percents neutralize gonna put him off stage go for the wow. and just catches him off Go wow. Did not really go for that ground pound that early on every other edge guard. Decided to hold back a little bit to wait for Knees to jump early. Not that time. Immediately going off stage right after him. Shuts it down. And it's going to be Knees moving up 2-1. But had to work really hard to get that 2-1. Oh, man, that hammer ground pound, dude. Like, that's the thing with that move. That hitbox is bigger than you think it is. And, like, especially, you, you, we did see, right? He, like, waited a little bit. He was like, all right, the ground pound's coming. I'm going to move forward now. But it's like, uh-uh, honey, you didn't wait long enough. And that lack of patience is going to get you punished. But you got to touch the wall at some point, right? Like, what do you do? Yeah, the damage between the two was just so close. This one we were talking before, how it was, like, six... 640 to 3 and this time very very even just running it back uh, running it here to Brawlhaven this is what we saw the counter pick was oh. for Sejaru last time and we're gonna see the switch off okay so we're gonna have Lucian coming up here and honestly not not a bad pick because Lucian oh wait hold on oh wait wait are you about to get clipped <laughs> it's it might be a bad, <laughs> okay. might be a bad okay. pick in a second I was like I take it back I take it back but no Lucian like he quick he doesn't have the most KO power, but on a stage like small Brawlhaven, it doesn't matter because the stage makes up for that shortcoming. So I like the pick, but also if you won the last game, like, are you sure you want to swap your legend? I think part of this is counter pick is in favor of Sejaru, and two, if it does go to game five, you spend this game four, almost playing in a way that's super passive to get Sejaru frustrated. You're constantly spacing with the blasters. You're constantly keeping them away. And when you do switch off to Katars, all of a sudden you get rushed down. It's hard to keep up with that pace, but Sejaru not really caring about that at all because they do take the KO off the top. Let's see if this count, like change does matter. I don't agree sometimes with uh, switching on the, the, on the win, dub, mm -hmm. but so far, you know, Nisa's made a lot of good choices. Let's see if it actually matters in this one. 
Okay, knees going for the ground pound. Some people consider that the Qatar forbidden move, but when it hits, oh, it feels so good. Guess the recovery right there. Sejaru so trying to land. I love the retaliation down there to make it back down to his footing. But knees trying to get something going with these blasters, and that's the thing I'm always worried about is that, like, blasters is definitely a hot, cold weapon. You're either cooking. Oh, he drops the last hit of the recovery. That would have for sure led to a KO. It's so close, dude. And you can see Knees is kind of like hunt. Like, you can see red, like red in his eyes. He's going for a lot of D-Lights just trying to catch the landing from Sejaru. But Sejaru just keeps playing around it as we see so many landing coverages coming through. The Katars come back in. But Sejaru trying to get the dare to recovery just to get that extra bit of damage to get the KO off the top. And now we're pretty much in D-Light recovery range. And we're going to see a three stock up to one lead here. This counter pick not looking too good. Yeah. I don't know about knees, man. Small Brawl Haven seems to be working out, at least for Sejaru, right? Because this could potentially be two back-to-back -back dubs on this stage mm -hmm. for Sejaru if this does play out. But we do see knees finally manages to get the first KO there. And a great thing about the Blaster's recovery, especially on a stage like this, is it picks you up and carries you that much closer to the kill box when you're going for that final hit. But Sejaru just seems to not really care, right? He's getting hit after hit after hit. Yes, yeah, Sejaru is embodying the hold forward mentality and it is working. And especially against someone who's trying to play very space happy against you. You see like all of this, all these attempts for uh, Nis to get that perfect blaster spacing just to chill away and say back off. But Sejaru has not cared. I'm really liking the adjustments here. And once you, once again, we talk about how the, the pick to Brawl Haven worked out last time. I think the no platform game has just been so much better in favor of Sejaru so far. I mean, we're seeing like Knees is just struggling to even get down to the ground, switching back over to these blasters, just runs up and oh, does well. an NSIG. You just get him. Don't let it be you. Don't let it be, <laughs> don't let it be don't you. Don't let it be you version one. We're seeing a three stock comeback possibly here. Three was down uh -oh. three to uh -oh. one in the red. Knees pushing here and not feeling too worried about you. Oh. But does catch him on the follow up. Just missed the first attempt. Does get the second one. We're getting a game five flambo. Oh man. I, I do give credit to Knees for not dodging there because like so many times the, the, the gauntlet mix up is you get hit by satellite and it's like, am I gonna dodge immediately because sometimes they go for immediate side light recovery it's not a true combo but like you don't want to get hit by that but a lot of the times they wait for you to do something and then react to that so you're like you know what i'm just gonna do nothing i'm gonna bet my chips on the fact that he's not gonna go for immediate recovery but then despite that he still got caught by recovery a little bit later yeah. it, was, it was a ballsy play but i respect it sometimes the best option is nothing at all it, it, it just it just shows the no you, mix you, up mix up yeah the, <laughs> the best mix up is no mix up but also if you bleep hard enough all your buttons are plus this is true <laughs> This is true. It's <laughs> true. Well, look at just the way that Sejaru decided to play entirely. It was pretty much all sword that game because gauntlets are going to get spaced out the whole time. So you decide to keep that pressure on. Now we're going to see demons. The no platform game still surprisingly coming in here from these. Okay, but I like this idea though, right? Goes right back to the bow bar. That's what works. So we should yep. probably go back to that. And maybe, maybe Nice just doesn't like small brawl haven. So maybe he was like, all right, this is a throwaway game. I'm going to just do whatever on this stage. Not let you have too much more time to download the bow bar I got. Then when we hit up game five, I'm going to try to clean it up on this stage, Demon Island, and potentially get the W. But so far, I mean, it's been pretty close. Sejaru got him off stage, looking for a potential edge guard. Oh, that's a oh, big flow. That not getting the wall touch and also something we saw an attempt on that didn't end up connecting. This stage does also make it easier for Val to catch that D6. So if you are poking your head up around a little bit too much, you're going to get hit. So let's see if Sejaru capitalizes on that next time. But Nis is going to make a comeback. However, after what we've seen so far, even after uh, SDing there, I think that Nis is still in a really good spot to even this right back up. Yeah, you one stomp stay away, maybe two depending on positioning. That's going to be able to do it. Add the side light for a little bit of extra damage. And now it's certainly going to KO. We have ourselves a tie battle here. Say so Jaru's like, yo, where the weapon at? Yo, weapon spawn, please. Oh, it's on the right side of the stage. I think Nis is happy right now. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, he's not going to stop him, though. Okay, oh, he that, tried. Too late. That's so that's so important, being able to actually get in and get past that, because Nis had complete control. And now it's actually switched up. Never mind, Nis is able to get in with the neutral lights, pushing him off to the side, trying to catch the quick Sair to catch Sejaro poking his head above the stage. Oh, wow. What a wake up, dude. Just said, you know what? I'm that grab cancel D-Light. There we go. Three-piece. Haven't seen that in a bit. Sejaro trying to rack up that damage. Things are extraordinarily close right now and you know you want to be the person who has two stocks to one in the final game of all games you know you want that little buffer for you like all right i want to rack up a little bit of extra damage before i say goodbye to this stock that's a big reversal sir that's the weapon toss i don't know if knees is making that one back gets a great it does a great job going up oh and gosh. around the edge guard say jaru now unarmed actually oh. both of them unarmed but hammer oh. is on deck 
He's like, I need that weapon. Oh, there it is. I don't need a weapon. Now he got one. What's up? He's pulling up to his crib. What is he about to do to him? The Sayer's gonna send him off stage. Weapon throw gets around it, but he doesn't have enough resources to make it back from there. And we have Seijaru up two stocks to one. This is the position we were just talking about in the final game of the set. Can he convert this into a victory? Already getting all this extra damage. Knees has no answer, no dodge. Fast falls, picks up that sword, and says, you know what? I want to get rid of this stock. I need one down there, and he finds it. We have ourselves a match. Last stock game, number five to start off top 32 already on winner's side. Seijaru trying to continue oh. this run in top 32. What? Please, really? Keep it going, but so far, very even. Flambo, give it to him. I, I just don't believe, I, I don't know how he managed to finesse that, but it worked. Managed to get that grab against the satellite into the recovery, pushing back into the side. The tail end of that's going to hit the D-Light recovery. It's not going to be enough. Knees needs to find something. Ooh. I love the response. A great reaction. Catches the landing. He hasn't touched the ground. What a KO for Knees. Oh, that was my. wild. That God. was wow! God like clutch God! Clutch God knees! Let's go, say Jaru! Try again next time! Knees was so deep in the red! And that was say Jaru had complete control! But knees, clutch God, like you said, shut it down, came back wow. through, realized that Seijaru overextended a little bit and said, oh, your resources are gone. Let's wow. go ahead and have a field day. Couple great reads, couple great callouts, but the biggest thing was the overcommitment at the end and knees saw red immediately. You have to capitalize on those positions when you can. Oh man, that was so good. I've never like, that's a punish, okay? Oh, yeah. that. that is a punish like my man said i saw you burn your dodge i can see the sweat drops on your head so i know you're gonna swing when you're coming down i'm gonna catch that with the d light send you back off stage oh your dodge is probably gonna be back by mm -hmm. now let me send you that side sig with a kiss of death mm -hmm. dang and that the, was great the scary thing, that was great like this it's so frightening right there because you got your dodge back and it's a 50 50. do i go for the dodge and they immediately wait or they wait for it or mm -hmm. do i not go for the dodge and they swing immediately but he still had stage position too, so even if you don't dodge there and the guess is wrong, you now have to potentially face a D-Light Sayer coming back into the stage as well. Everything was in Nisa's favor there after such a good ending, like, or, or excuse me, like damage at the end for Seijaru in favor. But Nis shut it down. And that is exactly why Nis has been here before, getting That's these facts. W's over and over again. That's There's a facts. reason why that, that, that resume is looking really good. I was gonna say, you got gold medals. One of, one of those players had gold medals and it wasn't the Rude. one that, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that's how you get them, bro. You got to be clutched. You got clutched on twice in that set. You know, there was mm -hmm. multiple opportunities where it looked like, say, Jaru might have been able to take the next step up. But he said, try again next time, bro. I'm not going to be the dub that gives it to you today. So. Yeah, that game number one really was the foreshadowing of the entire set, huh? Like mm -hmm. being able to make that comeback before it, what was it, what was game one or two? That comeback at the very end. That was game one, yeah. Okay, it was game one. That, that just pre-telling us exactly what we were going to be running into at the end. What an immaculate way to start off the Omen Oasis Championships uh, for Top 32. Like that, that we couldn't have asked for a better start. No, I have to agree, man. I'm like, if that is the first match of the day, going to game five with talent and skill expression of that caliber, y'all ain't ready, bro. I mean, they're not ready for this next one either because we were talking about that one. We have another high caliber set coming up next. We got Simple, Simple, can't spell. Yeah, simple it, goes crazy, though. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Simple, the reason why I messed it up is because it's versus Sarme. So I kind of merged their names gotcha. together. So Simple versus Sarme. Simple is currently up 3-0 on Sarme, which is, to, to be fair, a lot of people have to say that same sentence when it comes to Simple as well. Yeah, that's true. Hey, we were talking about healthy dose of Bodvar. This is where you're getting it. Well, you know, Simple... So, I, simplicity is key. It, that, yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I appreciate his gamer tag only because it's so accurate to the way he plays the game. Like, he just kind of, yeah. he will look at you, you know. He'll be like, hey, what's up? And you'll just kind of be on the other <laughs> side. You're like, uh, I'm chilling, I guess. And then he will just kind of make his way over and say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm chilling, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. And then, But if he needs to turn it on, he'll turn it on. Yeah, then while we wait for them to get ready, let's just take a quick overview again. I, I want to take a look at that last match because it was just, there was too many great things. Just, I believe this was game one here. This really was, actually, no, this was game three when we saw the first switch up to the Bodvar. Mm -hmm. And that Bodvar made a lot of really good adjustments to get back into it. I think you might have been right on that game four where deciding to switch off to the Lucian and then come back was a pretty good idea because you're able to change the tempo of the game, but also you don't want Sejaru to start adjusting to that Bodvar because oh. of the way they were playing early on. 
Yeah, and that we... ground taunt was such. I know. That, that, that was a message. And you can see he did the gauntlet side air as well to try and kind of spike him down, but it just was not able to connect. Man, knees just absolutely obliterating him in that game as well. And we see in this game right here, man, just to get the side light recovery. I think it was on a punish on a spot dodge, so we got the recovery uh, as a true punish as well. But, mm -hmm. I mean, despite that, man, like, if we're getting plays like that this early on, then I personally am extremely excited to see what this next game's gonna look like. Sarme and Simple, you know, Bovar City, perfectly cool with me. We got our Viking brothers gonna be sitting there duking it out. Probably a lot of small mammoths. If I, I don't think we'll see much Miami Dome, to be honest. I don't believe so either. I think you don't wanna, well, I mean, even on the other end too, you're gonna have Sarme with the Koji. So you don't wanna give, you do not wanna give Sarme free access to consistently trying to press you on platforms. So when it comes to Simple though, Simple is, again, we were talking about simplicity is key. There's a reason why Simple is PR number three. That money is looking kind of nice. That resume is looking kind of nice. We were talking about the gold medals too in favor of Simple. And plenty of trips to top 32, getting the podium, this is going to be one of the biggest tasks for anybody to deal with this weekend. We were talking about predictions beforehand. If you had Simple in your predictions, even with a relatively poor performance when it came to Winters, it's still a good guess. But when it comes to Sarme as well, also been performing very well of late. Yeah, Sarme, on the other hand, I mean, because, you know, 63K is a lot to beat, right? <laughs> but Sarme, on the other hand, you know, I think he'll be able to step up a little bit because Simple's just been around five ever, bro. Like, it's kind of <laughs> hard to step up on the block of someone who's just been so grandfathered in over time that it's like, all right, like, how am I supposed to compete with that? Like, take a look. PR number 18, does he have a gold medal? No. Does he have a silver medal? No. Does he have a bronze medal? No. Has he ever made top eight? No. But he has made top 32 six times before. And you know what? It's this story that I honestly find a little bit more exciting. Because today could be his day, right? It was almost, almost, almost the day for Nisa's opponent. But for Simples? Bro, what, what, what did Sarme and Sejaru do to you, man? You're like, yeah, did he make top eight? No. Did he win? These are the nah. stats. These are but the stats. It's, it's the truth. And uh, it, you, we were talking about it before. It's uh, the biggest thing is you love to see the the rising stars really make a name for themselves and just continue. Like it's not like Sarme hasn't been around, but like wanting to see that podium visit. We've seen a lot of really solid play from Sarme in dubs. We've seen Sarme have incredible runs of late, but hasn't been able to get that top position yet. And we're gonna be seeing things start off here on game the run with Mammoths. And there we go. Looks like we're going to have the dog out. All right. We got Mordex once again. Big baddie wolf dad coming out to see what we got to see. Hold on. Something to the other side. It's not going to quite be a conversion to an early KO. But despite the fact that Sarme doesn't have the placements quite to the aptitude that Simple has, he does have heart. And we're going to see if he can play his heart out to get that W right now. So far, keeping up with one of the best in the game, man. It's hard for a lot of people to say that. Yeah, 100%. And the Mordex also, you know, talking a lot about the Koji, but the Mordex is also a primary pick for Sarme mm -hmm. as well. So this is definitely going to be a really good option here to try and just, once again, controlling the pace of the game against Bodvar. It's so important because Bodvar just needs a couple quick conversions. You need to be able to push as we see a big Nair attempt just to try and keep that that edge guard extended doesn't get much, but this is very even so far to start things off, like you said. Ooh, okay, I like the punch coming out here. Ooh, and he gets a... Wow, I love that conversion. Ooh. That's the way to punish a dodge. He didn't get the weapon throw there, but it did force out that dodge from Simple, and now he's stuck in the corner. It's going to be a D-Light recovery. Not enough to KO here. Sarme still has a chance. Doesn't have a weapon, but I think a D-Light recovery unarmed will be enough. We need to see him go for the unarmed and neutral sig. That's not going to hit, though, and Simple, you know, and Simple's way of doing things just runs up, hits him with a break dance, and said, let's get rid of that first stock. Yeah, and now Simple with a stock up and weapon advantage, but the thing is, Sarme has kept it even so far, especially this deep. You cannot let Simple get a lot nice. of extra credit and closes it out right off the bat and gets it right back to even. I love the placement of that gauntlet ground pound as well. Went for the instant dash jump, turn around and clip it right over the lip, the corner of the stage there to go ahead and secure that first KO. So now we have ourselves a battle. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. We're seeing a lot of good calls here from Starman just getting that damage on. We haven't seen uh, many grounded calls. Like, we haven't seen any D lights. We haven't seen any side lights. Just try and get those combos. It's mostly because Simple just keeps jumping around them. So, yeah. that is a really good way to keep Simple grounded. As we see Simple currently trying oh. to have a meeting with the ground. We saw the attempt right there from the GC D light. Did not ooh. get it, but still keeping his damage going. Yeah, I gotta say, despite the fact that Sarme wasn't able to convert into the full KO there, he was able to make sure he got something for every interaction, mm -hmm. right? Despite the fact it wasn't, all right, you're not completely knocked out. I'm gonna get at least two to three hits for a conversion. And now he's fishing for that final blow. We found themselves in a similar position last time as well. Simple got the stock the first time last time, and you might be able to do it again. Can Sarme get the stock first is the question that I have rotating in my head right now. Yeah, you see Sarme just trying to look for a jump or look for that sidelight into oh. recovery, but does get caught by simple as soon as the hammer was on it's like okay it's time to play gets the lead again but still very even what is it so far that simple is just doing to keep sarme out whenever they're at kill percents it's just kind of like sarme's using two weapons we're finding oh wow Ooh. that's gonna be a beautiful ground pound to go ahead and bring things back but sarme's using two weapons that kind of have like an awkward time ko right mm -hmm. if you're going for gauntlets you need to get basically a recovery or a signature if you're using scythe once again you're looking for either a signature or potentially like a recovery off stage or something of that nature to get them off the side but otherwise it can take you a while to find that blow so simple's kind of staying inside the hitboxes and potentially just winning the game right here that's it yeah just get that gravity cancel d light or ground pound and just closes out the game like that right he just kind of carried him to the side it started with that first scythe recovery i think and then he was able to get a reversal around sarme to go ahead and convert things yeah excellent conversions coming in i think the biggest thing is that you talk about how it's a little bit harder to get those ko's with the weapons on Mordak, by comparison to Bodvar. Simple exploited that very well. Kind of played around that KO range. Like, look, I know you're going to fish for the side light gauntlet here. I know you're going to fish for a big attempt at trying to maybe catch a Nair with the site to get me deep off stage. And just kept almost baiting Sarmay to go for it to then get the whiff punish. So mm -hmm. even though they were both able to get deep into the red, Simple always saw through when the KO was coming. And that's the thing too. That's why a lot of people pick Mordex. Because out of the Scythe Legends and the Gauntlet Legends, Mordex has arguably the best kit in terms of like, I got six that are really fast, they cover a lot of area, and, and they're hard to punish, right? And speaking of making things really difficult here, that's Whoa. a punish. Caught him. Oh, oh, is it gonna trade? Wait, oh, nice! I, I love love still that. walked away with that. That was I almost love that almost cost Sarme. But even if it was a trade at that point, you went so deep. It's like, okay, worth. We end up with the trade, but Sarme gets a very well executed edge guard there and keeping this damage going already, Flambo. Yeah, no, Sarmai played that perfect, right? Because Simple, I'd argue, also played it extremely well, tried to make it, all right, I don't want to lose my stock. Can I try to trade at least? And then Sarmai was like, well, if I get this Nair, I can get my chase dodge to go straight up, and then I can still recover. And that's he was able to make this slight lead he has for himself here. Wow, he got a touch just on the corner. Simple needs a D-Light Sayer or recovery, but Sarmai's not getting it to him. A duck trying to take out the trash. Almost gets the ground pound, but the reversal Sayer closes out the dreams. I heavily respect the attempt almost Same. caught the ground pound that would have put you out three stocks to one and you're so deep in the red it's worth it's like fine you get you get back on still have you uh like relatively in orange but i mean simple is also gotten the damage right back on it simple is refusing to let these leads last for long on favor of sarmi but sarmi is pushing him deep off stage just avoids the downer oh, oh did he get the wall touch though that is yeah. that's huge you we, we take those the head bump <laughs> man it gets Every Brawl Hollow player, you know, it's like you, you think you got the drift just perfect to get the wall touch, and then you end up under the stage, and then your dreams are shattered. Mm -hmm. But we've seen Simple, you know, he definitely has the uh, the resolve to go ahead and bring this one back. But I feel like Sarma is playing extraordinarily well, you know. And it, we saw the same thing before in the previous set. Like there are these players that you know you look at the numbers and you're like, this, this guy got no shot, and then you're watching the set and you're like, hold on. Yes, he does, right? Like, it's yeah. not that close anymore. The window and the space between the skill of players has gotten so much smaller over time. Exactly, because even when you're looking at this match right here, like, it, you still need to keep your composure against Simple as he uh, evens it right back up there with the stomps there. But Sarmis looked a lot better in this game, too. So I think even for Simple, it's like, e uh, even though I may have a bit of fear in you, I am up 3-0, I think Sarmis playing looking at his opponent and not having that initial fear of, oh, you may be the better player, but I am playing extremely well right now. So far, I mean, it looks like simple 
just kind of racking that damage back up so quickly. Sarme tries to go for a reverse there right here. You can see opting to go for the active input to send Simple backwards off of those D-Lights to potentially go for a read, but just hasn't been able to get the follow-up. Simple's holding the corner so well. This is what Simple does best, man. Yeah. He will just kind of sit there, and he will look at your option and then just push you back to the corner. Rinse, repeat. Yeah, holding ledge is just such a scary sight, especially when you have sword and hammer in mm -hmm. hand, but like, this is extremely close. This is only game number two. We were talking about high quality matches that were going to be upcoming. This is extremely close between the two. And if you're Sarma, you cannot afford to give up this game too. You do not want to go down two simple games. Simple spot. That's simple spot. He's just looking at him, dude. <laughs> the weapon throw to go ahead and break things up. Oh, it doesn't get the recovery though. He needs one recovery and he manages to find it. Sarme manages to snag game two. Simple probably wasn't expecting to see that today. Yeah, that kind of, I think that caught Simple off guard because Simple was playing that mid range so well. We talked about the control of the ledge, mm -hmm. but also center stage control has been very well executed by Simple. Repeatedly, we're talking about his ability to, especially at KO percents on the, uh, when they're going for the last stocks. Simple almost always baits Sarme at the right time. Sarme saw through something there, mixed it up properly. We get a game number three, but at one apiece. Oh man, we're back to Mammoth. And I was saying, man, we're gonna see a lot of Mammoth for yeah. this set. It's just Simple, this is Simple's home. You know, this is home base. This is where he squads up at the end of the day. This is where he puts his pillow down and brings his blanket. Like, you don't like leaving here very often. So we're gonna see. Does he have a hammer body pillow that you're trying to yeah. say? Hey, yo, it, the end of the hammer is quite nice for that, you know? It's, it's hard, but it's good for his back. <laughs> oh. Going around the globe, we've seen him do that quite a few times. Come on now. All right, now Sarme just uh, Sarme ha struggling a little bit like, by comparison, trying to get in, but does get a reversal at least get you stage, trying oh, to control yeah. ledge. Weapon tossing the wrong way, but so far the simple simple has just been so good on defense. Yeah, I mean, look at that, dude. Was able to go all the way around the stage, make it back to center, grab a hammer, and just control the stage immediately from that point. Has a Sayer, it doesn't KO. If he gets another one, though, it definitely will. Maybe even an end light in the corner might be enough. And he's looking at him, a recovery will do it. He's just trying to find, he, he waits for the right time to strike. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is the way Simple plays. So a lot of this is being broken up by the weapon throws from Sarme because that little jitter mm -hmm. to the flow of Simple, it, it's been the difference, honestly, for him to find these openings. Yeah, I agree. Because it's simple. There it is simple, again. It, yeah, simple does not just pull the trigger right off the bat. He he nice. waits for when the resources are gone. And Sarme's defense on ledge. We talk about simple's defense, but you're right. Those weapon tosses to stop being pressured at ledge allowed him to get back in. This stock is definitely on borrowed time here because Hammer is staring you down. But great job at least getting the first stock. There we go. Double weapon throw. The recovery is going to punish from the other side there. And Simple is able to find the KO. But even if you analyze the amount of attacks that Simple threw out in the last 45 seconds there, I think it may have been like three, maybe four. He does not throw them out super often. He wants to make sure if he's doing it, the probability of it connecting is at least 80%. Yeah, maximize your reward on hit. You don't want to be just... The more that you swing recklessly, the easier it is for someone to get whiff punishes. And you do not want to do that against someone like Mordex, because Mordex is going to make you pay and like even when simple whiffs right like how often is he getting punished for mm -hmm. that that's the way i like about how simple approaches the game but on the other hand here i like the way sarme is dealing with it he's like all right well like he's not throwing out of a lot of attacks which means i don't have a lot of options to punish but when i do find them i capitalize and he goes for the last down air does oh, it matter turn around grab the cancel d like ground pound I'll take. Amazing reversal right there. Decided to go for the initial ground pound. Simple saw through it, and instead of going back up, decided to go for a ground pound of his own, but Sarme saw it. It's like, you know what? That, if I guess this correctly, you go down. That is all incredible from Sarme, because Sarme in the first game, we were a little worried about how he wasn't able to close out the stocks, but it's looking oh, significantly no way. better here. No I way, he got him! Right he got him! He completely closes it out. No issues closing out stocks, and no issue taking the lead, because Sarme is now up two games to one on Simple. That doesn't happen very often to Simple. Uh -huh. Simple's not used to that. Simple's not used to that at all, man. That's great play from Sarma here. And I feel like especially in those last two stocks that we saw Simple lose, Simple played a little bit out of his comfort zone, right? Like you don't expect Simple to go for a play like that based off of the way he's been playing the entire set. So normally that works on people. He's like, whoa, Simple like just went for a ground pound on me. Normally he would just sit on stage and wait for me. But Sarme just had that little bit of intuition that said, you know what? I, I can kind of feel the pressure. I'm getting to him. You know, I don't, I don't want to read too far into it, but I feel like it, it, when it comes to someone who's been the king of consistency for a very long time, after having a relatively oh, poor gone. performance, 
Oh, yeah, and he gets the chase wow. dodge back! Okay. That's a king! Yeah. That's a king! Okay, now I'm definitely gonna say it. Sinful is playing very nervous. Uh, and we saw the very... He's what? We, yeah, we saw the early play from before, but after that, you know, the recent performance of Winters, now playing as well, and now here potentially facing an upset where Samri's playing really well, this will make you break that, uh, that really good defense you had before. Sinful has to get a big play and consistently get big plays to get themselves to a game five. Okay, so far, I mean, despite the fact that Simple's behind, he's controlling the stage pretty well right now. One stomp. Oh, he does the stomp in the wrong direction. You can see he's stomping the yard right now, right? He's like, please give it to me. Please give it to me. I need to get this KO. And it's costing Ooh. him big money. You can feel Sarme sharking here. Going for the final blow. Gets the ground pound. He did Bro. get the touch, though. Their weapon throw. Is that going to be enough? Doesn't quite find it. Still keeping him off the side. You Double down air. GI is not going to save you there. And Simple is potentially on his last legs here in the winner's side of bracket against someone he has a 3-0 record against. Chat, repeat after me repeat this sentence because this doesn't sound correct we are set we are looking at sarme up three stocks of one and potentially beating simple three to one here in winner's side simple does finally find a recovery off the top to get a ko simple is still extremely talented and can make a comeback but it is not looking too good right now flambo yeah i'm saying i mean don't let your dreams be dreams kids like simple you could bring this back but every single blow you take from this point forward is that much closer to putting the nail in your own coffin how are you you gonna go out you're gonna come out a champion or you're gonna come out you know six feet under we gotta find out dang he really that hit he had line of sight for that side stick to actually connect there even though he was so low under the stage it's not looking good for simple sarme doing it again sarme is we were talking like sarme is playing just out of range consistently with punishing anytime simple commits to anything simple finally finds a sarah there's another one but some deep off stage simple has controlled ledge so well does get the sarah gets it back to one stock so all of a sudden simple has woken up there is some Decent damage on Simple, but Sarme, don't let it be you, man. We haven't hit that oh, version one yet. Don't let it be you. Hold the phone. We know this is Captain Consistency right now. Look at the way he's holding the corner. He knows how to hold that corner. He's like one of the boys from The Wire right now, right? He's sitting there and saying, yo, don't step. Don't step. And Sarme, he's trying to step, but if you're going to do it, you got to make sure you take over. Like, hold on now, bro. You don't want this comeback to happen to you. You need, like, a D-Light recovery. I don't think Ooh. it'll be enough. It should be enough now. Has the scythe in Ooh. hand. Oh, what are you going to do here, Simple? Okay, Sarme just misses out, but Simple gets a neutralize, puts him off to the stage, keeping oh. that pressure on. Sarme, you oh. can't get too reckless here, because that's going to allow you to get ah. out of it. But Simple capitalizes on another neutralize. This Wait, is so dodge. crazy, Flambo. This is so close. And you can see he was too scared to commit on the ground pound. He was like, am I going to go off stage with it? I don't want to do it. But Simple's bringing it back. Is he going to be able to do it? He's like, maybe a D-Light recovery. Oh, he Woo. dodges up and gets caught by the recovery. Sarme is able to take out one of the EU. Titans, simple 3 1 in a very, very, very convincing game three. Though almost, it could have been more convincing. It got close at the end. Got close at the end, but it was a convincing game. Well, then, is all I could say. Like, what an incredible job from Sarme. We were talking before about Sarme's recent performance is looking pretty good, but you haven't seen that, like, the big convincing W that you could get mm -hmm. against one of the top players to move forward. Down 3 0 historically against. Simple. That has changed today. Going 3-1 now, and yeah. that one mattering very much as we see Sarme gets to move forward in the winner's side. And even taking a look at the stats, like the damage dealt was fairly even across the board here. Looking at the signature or signature count, we have zero from Simple, right? Like, Simple doesn't really press that button. I thought we might see a bold bar sword down sig toward the end there to try and clutch it. Didn't even whip it out. And I was like, wow, okay, like, hey, you want to keep it simple, that's fine. But Sarme, we were talking about before, how many gold medals? Zero. How many silver medals? Zero. How many bronze medals? Zero. How many top eights? Zero. But now, you got a dub on simple. I think Sarme can add some stats to those zeros now to make them ones today. All right, I need somebody to do this for me, please. So take the whole segment earlier from when Flambo broke down the stats of how Sarme has no Ws and then edit it to add in. And I took that personally. <laughs> 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 because what an incredible that's, answer! That's real. What an incredible answer, man, from Sarve. Just, but you know what? That's that's what we live for, right? That's what we want to see. We want to see people make those big upsets, make themselves, like, like, be the next one to be on the top. It could be you. It could be you. It could be you today, especially if you happen to be co competing in the Omen Oasis Championships. It's been such an incredible first two matches to top 32. These are like winners' finals quality matches, and we're that's only just starting it so far. I, I 
I, I am, I could not be happier. You know, this is what Brawlhalla Esports is all about. Like, yeah, you know, sometimes you have a tournament where like, Agno and Blaze pull up and they just, everybody like, that's part of tournament. Just sign my paycheck really quick. But Thank you very much. There are also <laughs> tournaments where it's like, you have players like Godly who come out the cut and then it's like, yo, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, you know what? We've seen that happen with Java. You know, it's not the first time players like like Stingray, same thing. It's yeah. like, well, who are these guys? And then they pull up and they show you what it's all about. Anyone can go into the lab. Anyone can practice. And it could be you to be the next star of Brawlhalla taking out a Titan like Simple. So I mean, speaking of that taking out, we're going to take a quick look once again at Sarmay's incredible play from that last match and be able to get that W against Simple in the first place. The, the biggest thing in that in the early game, I can't, pretty much can't say it enough, Sarmay was getting baited very easily. There was a lot of times where somebody was kind of coming in and making it obvious, okay, my side light is going to show up and then right, like even right there, simple, just constantly play just out of range mm -hmm. where you couldn't get the, uh, the punish, but you have multiple games to play with. You have to be the one to figure out where are they finding that. And as the set went on, Sarmai found it, and we saw Simple do something we don't normally see. Get very scared in a lot of spots that allowed Sarmai to capitalize, especially when you have someone like Mordex, who is an incredible whiff punish character. And this is kind of like what it's all about too, right? Like these are the kind of plays that we saw Knees was not able to get in his set, where it's like you're going off stage and you're getting those KOs very early. And not only once, by the way, but two separate occasions, we were able to see Sarme go off stage in a scenario where he was almost certainly gone. Like mm -hmm. there was no way for him to make it back. And he was able to find the hit, get the chase dodge and get back on stage. Yeah, it is absolutely incredible the way that Sarme was able to just take control of that game. And a lot of positions were like right here. We saw the commitment there. S Simple decided, okay, I'm going to go for the ground pound and the spacing from Sarmay to get the GCD light into the ground pound to make sure that he was just out of range. If you misspace that by a little bit, you are down a stock, but saw through it and then it just continued, especially on plays like this where Sarmay was up a stock, said, I don't need this. I'm going to go all the way down there and close it out. Yeah, I, I mean, you love to see it, right? Like a good old, a good old ground pound or like scythe weapon throw into an arm down air like mm -hmm. to close out a stock like that's just that's the icing on the cake man i love seeing that conversion time and time again but I despite that <laughs> You know, we're going to be going ahead and moving on to the next match we got coming up. We have nothing but Titans swinging it out in this bracket. And it sounds like I, we got Swatter. Yeah, yeah. And you also alluded to the other person's name a little while ago. We talked about people storming onto the scene. It's going to be Swatter versus Godly. Swatter is, is somebody early. at the end of, like, pretty much t uh, 2021. Swatter was on a tear going through all of the tournaments, championships, BCX, you name it. But the way that Swada has been able to become one of those kings of consistency, really challenging Akno repeatedly, getting that W at the end, like it's just such an incredible rise for Swada's play, has nothing but just consistency at the top level of play here with that Bodvar. It's going to be relatively stressful fighting up against someone who decided to also storm onto the scene. Mm -hmm. And not only show up and perform well, but win the whole thing, yep. which I guess, by the way, uh, <laughs> my, my, my predictions were only had one and it worked out, but it's going to be against Godly, who could be using a plethora of characters against Wada. Which I, 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 I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm, I'm, I, I honestly, I don't know where this is going to go. And it, you know, like Godly at... It's like, because the first thing I said was this was early when, mm -hmm. I, when I realized what the match was, right? Because I'm like, this is a set that could very easily be grand This finals. is grand finals. Yeah, yeah you like know. <laughs> like it, but, you know, the, the way that power rankings work and seeding and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. you win one tournament, like, all right, bro, that's one tournament. We're not going to uh, automatically put you, like, in the top three seeds just because you got one, you know? Like, yeah, you're going to jump in power rank, but, like, you got to prove yourself again I'm and glad then again. And then we're like, okay. I'm actually glad you said that because it is actually Swata who's seed number one here over Akno because of recent performance. But after, you know, storming back on, top eight, it is eighth seed for Godly after winning. And honestly, I think Godly's going for the two people. I would not be surprised that all oh, of Swata is the one that puts him into lower side of bracket because even as incredible as that Rayman was and as incredible as the Bodvar is from Godly, I still think Godly is currently making a name for being the best player in EU, but Swata is not somebody you could get comfortable with mm -hmm. because Swata 
you cannot fall asleep on the incredible run that we saw from the end of last year. We're going to be seeing things start off here on game number one with Demon Island. All right, and just like that, we're getting some some classic Bobar, right? A lot of him, and also a lot of Mordex, right? Like a lot of people want the power of those Gauntlets and Scythe to go ahead and get those quick and early offstage KOs. That's going to be a three-piece coming out from Godly, punishing the lack of dodge there on a SWAT. A SWAT coming down with nothing. You saw the sweat beads, so Godly's like, all right, let me get some more. God Godly, oh, Godly. Got a little lucky there on that SWAT one. is also playing the game, too. Let SWAT <laughs> play the game, too. This has been a majority of the show, but SWAT indeed is playing the game, closes it out, takes it a great KO off the top. They, these two are scrapping, Flambo. Yeah, I mean, th this is a complete shift in terms of the type of game that we were just Ooh, watching. Oh, went for the double downer. I respect it, but didn't even need it. Godly's able to get the KO with just one scythe down air there. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, simple, you know, likes to keep it simple, chill on the side, play the spacing game. These guys, they like to break that mold exceptionally quick, right? Right in your face, getting in there. And we're seeing Godly making it so hard for Swata to have any space, immediately zone breaking off any whiff. Perfect punish on that. Exactly. And one of the things Gosh. that, the, like, these two are so good at capitalization nice. for war reward on hit. You see a lot of hammers, oh. and you see <laughs> incredible reads with the sick. Godly calling out that jump so hard. I was about to compliment Swata on his hammer conversions, being one of the best in the business at it, but Godly, we haven't seen too much of the Mordex, but this Mordex is looking absolutely oh. incredible as we see an attempt to try and get a stock right there. Sarah's going to reverse it and gets it back to even. Okay, and that's going to be a good break for Swata there. I think Godly was like a little bit late on that jump recovery, and he was able to jump and get over it and get the punish. But despite that, we have ourselves an incredibly close game. Like, these stocks are flying. It's only been, like, this 6 10 right now on the clock. Like, we've barely yeah. been here, and this game was almost over already in the orange. Godly has the, the damage lead. And, you know, Mordex Sig right now might just do it. Home and Oasis speed run any percent. That's pretty much what these That's two are going for right now. This is incredible oh. when they are boxing. But Godly does get reversed. Oh. And Swata trying to go deep oh, off stage to try sure? to catch him, but gave it up. And that might cost him here. Oh, He's got to go weapon. high. Groundhog yep. coming in. Absolutely. And Godly is going to close Wait, it out. Uh, I mean, at this level, that was so you fast. can't. Yeah, you can. It, it for for many that might be a little bit questionable to go off at that point. But Swada had something in his mind, and Godly saw through it. It is incredible <laughs> watching these two play. Cause Flambo, you said it. We hit six minutes, and there was four stocks gone already, and they were both deep in the red. Yeah, yeah. That's. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even. These guys are just absolutely crazy on the sticks. Like I, I, I don't know what else to say. They, go through it so fast and Swato really bet it all there on that last stock but you know probably beating himself up a little bit but hopefully not too much there because you need to make sure your mentality is in check as we hop into game two keeping it right back on Demon Island Swata still going aggressive with this hammer and it's like it's a tough weapon to do that with to be on oh my oh, gosh oh, oh, that, high. that's not that is not a oh, tough they weapon to oh that trade mattered so much that oh. was about to be a free stock but godly still is not done so where are you going i was not done with you guys swat nice. somehow box his way out still alive but oh. very short-lived because that oh wait no it's, oh that's okay it. i was about it. to say it almost got the wall touch swat did everything he could to stay alive but godly was not having it yeah that that entire first stock was just butterfly in the sky <laughs> mountaintop waves so high like like he got completely red between the lions like said this is what a vowel is this is what a consonant is like you're gonna learn today this is phonics like it was absolutely a master class on how to read someone but despite all of that swata the resilience of a madman able to strike back instantly and take things back. Can somebody tell these two that you can, it does, you don't have to immediately claim all your frequent flyer miles. Like, <laughs> they are, they are cruising through the skies right now. I don't recall the last, all right, this has been the first time in a while we've seen them two stay on the ground for a bit. And they are immediately, they, like, the ground pound in the air just trying to box back out. You do not wow. waste any time. Wow. Not a disadvantage. Catches them off stage. I don't think Swata is going to get back. No, actually just gets the poke Holy, with the recovery. These guys are crazy, dude. <laughs> these guys, and they're just, they're just swinging, and it's so fun to watch. Like, look at Swata go, dude. And Godly has the response ready every time he whiffs. There we go. That's another whiff punish. And he... I, I like that. Wow, it's gonna find him on the way down. Oh my gosh, Godly's been trying to catch these high recoveries from Swata over and over. We keep seeing him do those, do those weapon throws that he throws like diagonal up into the side, and I think Swata knows now. I think he's gonna go low. 
Exactly. And one of the things that's been incredible, oh my goodness, speaking of incredible, just running right up on Hammer, staring you in the face. No fear at all of Stomp Stairs. Like, okay, what if I just run up and what, what if I just get you with recovery myself? I, I'll, I'll take it out. They are moving with a purpose. They are not just swinging recklessly, Flambo. There is always a good purpose behind what they're doing. This is some of the best aggressive play we've seen so far as recovery takes it off the top. <laughs> I have no idea who to guess who is going to walk away with the set. Damn, man, we were saying this could be grand finals, bro. You know, granted, I want Swada to win this game only because I feel like sets can be a, uh, are like a little bit more fun and interesting to watch from the spectator side of things if it goes to like a 1-1, one, one, then a 2-1, then a 2-2, two, two, you know? That's, that's I, what I'm hoping for. I want a game five. Like, I, 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 oh, I just want a game it. five in. It might be a little bit harder to do because Swada does not get the wall touch and Godly gets a gift on that one. Godly moves up two games on Swada. On the other end, though, the other thing that's fun to watch from a spectator is like, can you do the reverse True. to make this go to a game five? Because then that shows some real fortitude and resilience right there. And Swada is going to have all the pressure now heading into this game number three because otherwise, I mean, we were saying like, Godly's here to do the back-to-back, -back, right? Mm -hmm. Like, cover a lethal weapon. Like, I want to make sure I got the crown before, and then I get it again, and I'm going to pull up to the restaurant, and I'm going to say, a seat for three, me and two, my two crowns. One. Yeah, I, I, I mean... What a what a way to like establish dominance, especially starting off 2022, right? And I'm not too surprised we're seeing the switch up here to the uh, to Mammoths because we saw Swata kind of struggle a little bit to get that wall touch. And even though Swata was kind of boxing with it to say, okay, I want to get these early mm -hmm. edge guards too. Now that you're down two games, you can't afford to do that. And we also have a swap over to Koji, the samurai himself, rocking the sword, the bow, the tatami mat, and of course those signature slices we're seeing right there with that neutral signature coming out from. Swata. Water. Hopefully this pick is going to be enough to keep him relevant here because on the other side of things, like Koji, like, you know, we got like four to five friends, you know, may not be living too long, but not seemingly being a problem because that bow was able to go ahead and secure the KO with a decent amount of life still left to live on this stock. You know what Koji does to you? Makes you not so jump happy because we saw, like, Godly's constantly oh my gosh, floating yeah. in front of you for free. And, so it, like, Swada's play with the bow so far has been so good to keep him grounded. And also, if you move too much, you're getting hit by GCD6. Aww. So you got to chill. And I think with the way Swada has swapped up, even if this is kind of close, oh. I wouldn't be surprised nice. to see God uh, Godly switch up, even though this Vortex is looked really good as they close on the stock. Okay, man. No, I'm, I'm loving the Koji pick right now. Koji, of course, also has eight base decks. You can spec into nine if you want. It means he's able to swing very often. It makes those conversions off true combos a lot easier to get. And because of that, like we've seen Swat has been able to swing and, and get away with a few things a little bit easier than some other legends would. And just like that, sitting on a two stock lead right now. Right, he's, he's sitting pretty good. He has stock to play with here. Godly, on the other hand, you know, being slowed down a little bit. And I like, he's catching him on the jumps a lot. You're right, yeah. he was doing a lot of end lights on the bow, a lot of nares with the sword as well. Oh, careful, touch that wall. <gasps> oh, tried to get the reversal with oh, the weapon Oh, you can't toss. get away! You oh. can't get away! <laughs> I, I like the attempt. I respect the attempt. Tried to get the reversal on Godly, but Godly, only, t only the yellow, not that much damage, and currently on our but. It, actually, unarmed doesn't even matter. Swatter plays with three weapons. He, he is constantly boxing. Oh, big read there for the side sig. Not going to connect there. Side light. He dodges down. No punish on that. Godly racking up extra damage. Swatter trying to go for the side signature again, and it's not going to KO. So he might want to wager the risk reward a little bit more here. Oh, he got him. He caught him. That's it. Yeah. The, he only had one mix up there. It was either he dodges and gets caught by the unarmed down air that we saw right there, or he risks it and hopes that he's high enough to go for a gravity cancel D sig there and catch the corner of the wall. But, I mean, just like that, Godly with the 3 0 and a handshake saying, man, that was well played. Definitely one of the most funnest matches of Brawlhalla that I've ever had the pleasure of casting. But. It's a shame that it had to be a 3-0. That was one of those matches where you look at it and go, it was 3-0, but it was close. And mm -hmm. you're correct, because even though Godly walked away with it, every game went to last stock, last hit. Godly was able to walk away with the W on that second game where we missed the wall touch, but still kept it even the entire time. But that one, the Koji looked incredible, was able to space him out, really kept them grounded a lot more. We talk about the anti-airs, but Godly, when you give him an opportunity to reverse a situation in his favor, I don't think I saw a single time where he didn't get it. 
No, I have to agree, especially like I feel like we saw those Koji Sword side six coming out quite mm -hmm. a bit, specifically on the last stock of the game. And it was at a range where it wasn't going to KO, you know, but I think it ended up being a little bit some nerves coming up saying, I want this game to end right now. I'm a side sig, I'm a side sig. And it just did not quite find the mark there. I mean, even taking a look at some of the stats that we got here. Yes, yeah, si six attempts at the sigs. 17% connected. Like you, you were right. He, he was, he was hunting for it. Most, some of them were to like just get positioning. Like, okay, I don't like being comfortable over here. I'm gonna go side sig, get back to center stage. Even if it doesn't hit, I'm back to center stage. But we didn't really see a lot come in from the bow compared to the first stock. The first stock was where most of the damage came in, and then Godly kept him off the bow. It's like I mm -hmm. refuse to let you get access to it. And by the time you do get access to it, you're already going to go down. It was always in the red by the time he got to it, and Godly figured out exactly how he was controlling his jumps as it went on. Tried to go for the reversal weapon toss off stage, which almost connected, which we'll see potentially here in the highlights as they get back into that match. I like the switch, but man, was this an incredible set. Game one, game two, I think probably could fit the entirety of somebody's yeah. game wanted. <laughs> <laughs> just in the replay itself, man. I mean, clean little pickup right there. The classic Mafia. Just go and go ahead and secure that one out. And then on the side here, just beautiful edge guard. He went for the double dare. He didn't even need it. It was just enough on its own. Just enough knockback on it. And right here, I believe, is where he sends him off stage. He doesn't have the dodge. Dodge is right through. And you can see they're swinging. They're, like, trying to get the mm -hmm. punish, and they're not guessing quite right for a little bit here. But then he gets this, this side sig where, like, the icicle is out just long enough and high enough that I don't think Swato was expecting to get hit by it. Yeah, and even if you dodge back at that point right there and try to fade away, you're the likelihood hit. that you're going to get to the wall safely, yeah, you're getting hit. And Godly is not going to give that up because if these two never left opportunities untouched, especially when it came to whiff punishes. And oh. Swata misses out on the le uh, ledge right there too from an amazing weapon toss coming from Godly. I think, man, Godly is absolutely looking primed and ready to get that 2P. There's a reason why if you weren't a believer before, you need to believe, be a believer now. Yeah. It's what he took just 3 old Swata. Like, <laughs> that's, that's not a sentence that's you a champ, say out bro. loud. <laughs> that's a champ right there. And he just, he made it look, I'm not going to say easy, you know, because, you know, it was a 3-0. So you may see that and say that was easy. But we were saying 3-0. But it was close, though. Yeah, you please, know, like, please show close, people though. that match. Like, if anybody, did, like, missed out on it, make sure you check out the Brawlhalla page afterwards to get and take a look at that match because that one was a fun one, regardless of it being 3-0. I biased, really wanted that to be a game five because I wanted to see a whole lot more of that because that was going to be incredible. But we are going to see the return of somebody we did see a little while ago because we're going to get, I believe, say, Jaru versus okay. the win. Now, I don't know who they're playing just yet. I didn't see it. Uh, oh, ooh! Okay, so... Confirmation. It was the winner of Blaze or Hazer Delta. And Hazer Delta is the one who got the W. Bro, this tournament is wild. Hazer Delta this has been a monster plate, but over Blaze too. This is this is a nuts tournament, man. Like Omen Oasis has absolutely been going crazy. This is a PR event, and we're gonna be looking at say Jaru, who we saw earlier. And oh excuse me, I'm sorry, it was knees. Uh so Nice. I'm completely wrong. My bad. So Nice coming in here uh, was able to clutch it out earlier against Sejaru. That's right. I forgot. We almost had the big upset there. But Nice, like we said, has been here time and time again. Uh, has that consistency. Was able to shut it down against Sejaru earlier in mm -hmm. that game five, where Sejaru looked like they were going to take it. But against Hazer Delta, who, like we said before, BCX last chance qualifier winner, but then the great run at Winters. That gold medal, I believe, being the LCQ. Like, how are you feeling about knees going into this? Because Hazel Delta is just going to be running Taros through and through. And I know... I am so... Okay. Every time I hop on the mic for Brawlhalla, usually I say Taros is the answer, or I say ignorance is key. And I think Taros is the spirit of ignorance, right? <laughs> like, I mean, look, he's a bull... Does, does that face look like the face of someone who cares? <laughs> you know, I, like I, I feel like I feel like Taros might help me push my car if it was turned off. Maybe yeah, one time. Just yeah, to, yeah. I mean, I, I'd <laughs> ask him to. Like he's definitely the dude on the street that I'm like, yo, you trying to help me move nah, my he's car? He's definitely smashing my window with a hammer. <laughs> let me let me be real here. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Delta has just been playing so well of late. That Taros has been a monster running uh, running the Roman Reigns skin primarily through the the Winter Championships. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about like the ignorance behind playing Taros. He embodies it. Like, he, he understands, That's like, right. look, 
I know what I got. I know that I have plenty of KO power no matter what. Axe or Hammer, you try to play around with me and you're going to pay for it. So it's going to be on knees to have good spacing with that Mordex through and through to make sure you're not getting whiff punished hard by Delta because that could be a, a pretty much the telltale side of the whole set. For top 12 winner's side, we're getting into Demon Island, game number one of knees versus Delta. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little I'm a little nervous for knees. I felt like the performance versus Seijaru made me feel like his gameplay was a little bit shaky. Maybe he's cleaned that up a little bit now. I mean, you're starting off pretty strong so far against Hazer Delta. But one thing we haven't been able to see yet today, this is actually the first time we're seeing Axe on the screen. Which that like, is a very, very weird surprising. thing to say right? yeah, in the winner's side of this bracket. <laughs> so we're finally getting access to our first Axe here. And I think part of it, like, you definitely have a little bit of fear for the way that Nils was playing, but I think also Sejaro was just playing so good. Oh, what a weapon throw. Wow, okay. Wow. Look, his one thing that Delta does a lot, too, is he's, oh. he's not very... Um, reserved with the sig use so you have to watch out because at any point the neutral sig might come through but it's gonna be knees getting the first game first yeah. stock i mean so th that first weapon throw that knees got stopped taros and sig which for certain would have spiked them off the stage and taken that stock so good weapon throw from knees knees also went for a gravity cancel delay on gauntlet and as you can see that move right there that end sig on hammer is perfect for the space that gauntlet players want to do mm -hmm. that gravity cancel delay at so delta has answers knees also has some answers of his own but i don't know if he's gonna be able to make it back here he goes for a falling stair it's not gonna be enough dodges through another weapon throw catches the recovery doesn't get the final blow there and knees should be able to make it back onto the stage with incredible no problem incredible job from knees kind of dipping around that because you took a lot of hammer throws as well all you need is just that one good guess with that ground pound. It's coming through, and these kind of played around ground pound distance. But Whoa. Delta is currently looking at another trip off the side of the stage. What? What is it that Nice is doing so well so far, at least, to kind of play around the spacing from Delta? Is because Delta keep Delta is not shy about trying to get these KOs. Yeah, one of the things about playing against Axe is that like you know you're gonna get hit. You just have to like weigh the value of what you're willing to get hit by. You know, like. Axe recovery, probably don't want to get hit by that at KO%, mm -hmm. but we just saw that happen right there. But like Axe Nair, you can take a few of those, you know. Axe D-Light, you don't love it, but you'll take a few of those. But when you're getting hit by like Sairs and, you know, neutral lights over and over, those tend to put you in scenarios where you're more likely to get KO'd. So I think Nise is doing a good job of trying to evaluate, you know, his risk reward on getting hit by certain moves. And he's able to carry it into a KO right here. He's doing a great job so far. I mean, Delta doesn't seem to have an answer yet to this Mordex. We also haven't seen Hazer really find any KO move, right? Like he's yep. thrown out SIG after SIG after SIG. One technically hit, like on the stats, it'll probably read his hit, but it got interrupted by weapon throws. So. I mean, damage mitigation has been key. Woo! Like playing that hit clean. <laughs> damage mitigation don't matter much when you get caught by a sink like that. D Delta's KO power is the, pretty much the thing that will keep the game even. Because even though Nisa's de uh, defense has been on point, eventually one of those is going to find the mark. And oh. we talked about before multiple GC uh, neutral sinks to try and snag a spike. Delta's going to keep going for that, regardless of how many times that whiffs. So you can't play around ledge too much here wow. on that stock. I love that wake up down air coming out from Nice to stuff the ground pound follow up. That's a very common follow up after the nair from Axe. That's one way to go ahead and shut it down. Dodges through. I'm scared from the down sig. We haven't seen Hazer Delta or just Delta throw out that down sig from Terrace on Axe at all. Mm -hmm. And that's the one where, like, when you get to percents like this, you start trying to, like, run through your opponent. It's the one that generally takes you out. Exactly. Oh, okay. Like, Nice want just no fear whatsoever. Coming in with the gauntlet, you have jump. to watch out. That's crazy. Okay, that weapon toss kept him safe. You saw it. He was hunting for the ground pump, but he instead hunts for the recovery Wait, in one, center stage, win. catching him on a mistake and gets him off the top. Great job from these, able to shut it down because that was deep into red. That was anybody's game. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty happy with how Nies played that game one, despite the fact that, you know, looking at the damage numbers and the stocks, it was incredibly close. I felt like he did a great job for the most part of avoiding all the catastrophic moves that could take him out significantly earlier. He did get hit by one Taros Axe side sig, and we saw what the result of that was. Yep. But aside from that, he's been doing a pretty decent job of keeping Delta at bay. Yeah, and this is another match where uncommon at this point, they have no set history against each other. The Hazen, mm. uh, you know, Delta coming in, kind of storming onto the scene of late too. It's a big consistent, but hasn't been in this position a lot, but now is starting to do so. So we're seeing Nies having to learn on the fly because Delta is someone who will swing heavy every time. But Nies is also someone who refuses to let you ever touch the wall or stay comfortable because those ground pounds have been on point. 
And you have to see as well, like generally most people don't want to go off stage against Hammer, right? But when Delta was recovering back to the stage there, he burned his Hammer recovery first. So then on the side of knees, he's like, all right, I can go off stage and go for the ground pound with no fear of getting reversed. And that's going to lead to this hefty lead that he has right here. Delta throwing out recovery after recovery, trying to find these hits, getting stuffed out the air. And you can see knees trying to read a high recovery from Delta as well. Oh man. Okay, weapon throw doesn't hit. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Say, knees, yeah, knees is able to get by like uh, pretty much unscathed at that point. Only took one hit, but knees has just been capitalizing on his damage. Oh, However, nice. does get the call and Delta trying to change him off the top, trying to DC stop to this air to just shut down the pressure. But Delta needs to get this ASAP because that is starting to get away. Now finally gets it. It's Hammer and X, so that damage could get evened up really quick. Yeah, this is like, I mean, you know, he's in the orange. That's probably like two side light nares from Taros. Like, <laughs> yeah. he, he really does rack up the damage quick. And there we go, there's one nair. Gets a down air as well. And you can see he's already approaching the yellow knees. Finally gets a chance to pick up a weapon here off of that unarmed neutral light and a potential conversion. No dodge on Delta for a little bit here. He's going to be able to take note of that. Oh, tries to catch him with the D-Light, and that's the down tick. Wow, it spiked him at the worst angle, but somehow he's still able to make it back. I have no idea how you were waiting for it, Flambo, though. You called it in the last game. It's like, I want to see that d sig at Lech. He's oh, kind of letting again. him get up for free, but these have been pretty much for free for Nies. If there's one thing that's been the KO consistently, it's that gauntlet recovery off the top. He keeps catching Delta, and Delta currently looking at another deficit. Okay. Go. Delta's gonna go ahead and pick up this hammer. Gets a Sayer here, trying to find the final blow. That Sayer would have done it. Taros forced that just so high that it would have been enough outright from that position. Needs one more hit here. No dodge on these, but since Delta didn't have a weapon, there was nothing he could do to pressure that position. He was like, I'm gonna lose to the disjoint of the site there 10 out of 10 times. But he just finds a rogue Sayer because that's what Axe do, right? And now we have ourselves a tied stock battle. That was actually really good from Delta, too, because Delta kind of played around knees trying to get that damage on. Just got to center, caught the Sair, and now Delta has an opportunity to get this back to even. This is only one game piece, and if there's been a consistent thing when it comes to our winner's side of bracket so far, never oh, assume oh. anybody's walking away with NEW, because Delta continues this juggle, and knees struggling a little bit to get on the ground, but finally catches an air, trying to catch a ground pound. And we've been seeing Delta's been doing a lot more of these grounded d lights to try and catch either. Oh, you got caught, buddy. It's going to be a tough hot for you to get back the recovery is going to be able to be clutch here goes for another one maybe a weapon throw no a turn around and light he turned around for that he knew he tried to cross through him there and now delta has weapon advantage and potentially he's just throwing them all away he's throwing all the weapons away now knees has one and delta doesn't have one delta's sweating a little bit now oh bro knees hit him with a you okay like you would have thought and then delta said no you like just yeah the, <laughs> the way that it, he had him on the reversal but knees just missed it afterwards and then the chaos of no weapons no access to being able to close it out but delta Delta gets game number two, and easily what could have been Nisa's game two after that reversal. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm loving this, man. Literally, it just constant scrapping, constant pressure. The damage right there, even though it's uh, in favor, in skewed in favor of Delta, a majority of that happens to come from the weapons. Nisa was the one who was constantly getting the chaos early. So, the very even gameplay from these two. And we saw Delta threw out 10 signatures in that last match, and only two of them connected, but like, it's, it's kind of the, I'm going to keep throwing them out so that you constantly have to think about mm -hmm. them and spacing around them, even if I'm not necessarily hitting them, because when they do hit, I'm going to get my money's worth. Right? Exactly. So it's going to be a tough time for Nice to play around that, despite that we're seeing, like, Delta is getting most of the damage racked up on the Axe, and then if not finding a KO with the Axe, you know, swaps oh, over to the Hammer oh. and gets like a Stomp say or something, fine, whatever. But on the other end, though, we see Nies is actually getting most of the damage with the Gauntlets, and that makes sense, right? We're seeing a lot of those KOs with the recoveries off the top. Yeah, and we're going to see, not not really trying to play around with the small room to work with here, going to go over to Mammoths, deciding to just make sure survivability is a little bit easier because they have been very, very aggressive off stage so far. I'm not too surprised to see this run over here, but Delta going right back to center after the weapon toss, not trying to get scooped up and set right down to the blast zone. Yeah, that happens one too many times against Scythe, man. You play with it, you get burned, but that's going to be a clean stock because the weapon throw just blew up the recovery there. Just poor timing from the recovery from Nies there. Stuffs his weapon, or his recovery, and now he just doesn't have the resources to get back. But I think he's gonna be fine to go ahead and reset and try to bring this back. Yeah, Nies has definitely been able to get, like we said, KO consistencies, particularly from this, and then catches the Sig off the side as well. That Bing. weapon tossed <laughs> just for a little bit of extra. Hey, stay down there, be humble. Getting into two stocks apiece. There's a reason why Delta has made it to this point, but you still cannot fall asleep on how good Nies has been playing so far.
No, you can't. I mean, just take a look. I mean, knees, keeping him in the corner, goes for a, a, kind of a cheeky ground pound there, but he knew that Delta didn't have a dodge, so like the risk reward was def worth it. And there we go. Speaking of no dodge again, gets the ground pound, almost manages to secure the KO right there. I don't know if Delta wants to be here, bro. Yeah. Like, just scythe. I, I was actually pretty surprised that Delta decided to box with that, considering how many times he's been scooped up by by uh, knees, but I, I think Delta just plays with that, like, no fear oh, mentality, wow. man. He's constantly out there. Yeah, one thing I'll say that Delta does that most people aren't so willing to throw out is just, he just, hold on a second with the KO, grab can't steal that recovery. No, a perfectly cheeky, I love, I love what knees tried to do there, right? Because I think most people would have gone for a gravity cancel unarmed D like ground pound there, and you tried to wait it out and go for the gravity cancel unarmed side tick for the recovery. But Delta didn't fall for that. He said, you know what? I'm gonna just sit here. Oh, word, ground pound time. He took it to the bank. Exactly, and Delta has done something better. Now, this lead may not last for very long because of how deep into the ready is, but Delta's been the one with the stock up lead throughout this game. Mm -hmm. Every other game, even though it's wow. gotten close, it's been with Delta behind first, but knees going off stage, getting it, and establishing another stock loss. This is game one apiece again. I don't think anybody wants to be going down with this because it's just so crucial to not go down in the game set the way that they've been pressuring off stage. All right, I think he has a dodge and that's it. A reverse nair. Oh, I like what you try to do there. It was rude. <laughs> it was rude, but I liked what you tried to do there, but it's not going to be enough. Delta able to find the scoop off the top, valiantly played from knees, but not quite good enough. Delta going to go ahead and proceed in the set 2-1. Extremely even damage to 481 to 467. Not nearly as many uh, six coming in from Delta there. We talk about how he kind of does them just with the, the sake of putting fear into you, but he just pretty much outplayed him in center stage there. From what we've seen from Nees was able to make the adjustments before, what do you need to see out of Nees now to bring it to a game number four? See, I'm wondering if Nees is going to keep the uh, the Mordex pick. Oh, there oh. we go. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think so. I, I, I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> so, well, there you go. <laughs> we got Rayman. Yeah! Well, you know? Rayman has quite literally taken over. They're getting two championships over at Winters between both EU with Godly and us. us. I can't remember. Snowy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> North there you, go. Hey, you really you let me struggle with that one too. Hey, you like, bro, oh, you got it. I believe in you. <laughs> Coming through. So Rayman putting in that work, axe in the gauntlets, but the pressure that gauntlets has, you still have it from what we saw before. Not gonna be losing here either. So deciding to go away from the scythe to get the consistent KO power from the axe. Doesn't even matter though, because the gauntlets have been putting in the work throughout the set and he got the first lock. Yeah, he was able to get that ground pound with relatively no problem at all. I mean, Delta, you know, trying to swing back here, almost caught that sand. That probably would have been the stock. Tries to get the turn around. Whoa! And that's going to be all the way to the other side. And that's going to be actually clutch for Nice here, because it means he's going to be able to survive and get a little bit of a reversal. Gets two, three hits now, keeping him, you know, kind of occupied in the air here. But he's going to go ahead and chase him down with the down air to get the first KO. But if I am Nice, I'm perfectly happy with that. I got like somewhere between like three or four hits before getting KO'd mm -hmm. there that I otherwise probably shouldn't have been able to get. And so if I'm walking with that lead into this next stock, it is definitely not a bad hit. Oh yeah, my God. especially oh in my a God. position where you're getting pressure too. It looked like you were going to take a Sarah to the face off the side there, but knees going deep off stage, not going for the ground pound, kind of waiting for Delta to use a resource first, but trying to chase him off the top of them are boxing the neutralized, putting him off stage. Oh, right, a high option there. Goes low, gets the reversal. Sayer has to run to the other side. No, it's going to be enough to KO outright. I thought he was good, but he probably burned a few options before getting hit there. And that allowed Nees to go ahead and secure the KO. And now with that Rayman, which Rayman has some cheeky setups at low low damage. Like at white, you can get down sig true into side light nair. And like that, that's all guaranteed damage. Takes you from white straight to mid yellow orange. Yeah, you do not want to be taking that as it goes on because you're seeing oh. the incredible range that Nees has with those sigs coming in from Rayman. Nees going deep off stage, oh. trying to catch the GC, stopping the Sarah, but now gives up stage position. Does, however, get back on. Goes fourth down there, trying to rip him off stage. And Del Delta, does he get the call? No, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Hold on now, but he does have that axe in hand. Nees is saying, you know what, we're about to bring this to a game five. If I keep playing like this, but to slow down. High weapon throw. Delta's able to call it out this time around. We have ourselves a final stock scenario. Granted, there's quite a bit of damage racked up on Delta, but once again, you can't. You know, that, that's ignorance right there. Exactly. Man. Like, we, we've we've seen multiple times oh. now where Nees has gone down oh. really early to multiple hammer uh, hits. Look as we see Delta Look just keeping that. it going, almost Look catching him on the dodge. Nope. Getting stopped tied. there, just keeping it going. You're right, Flambeau. That doesn't matter as Delta. You got a side sig, you. I feel it. Oh, it was an end sig. Okay, okay, you, you, okay. You, you, you felt it. It was coming. <laughs> 
Oh, no, but knee is saying, I don't want to throw it away. Oh, but you dropped the conversion. That could have been an unarmed recovery. It might have been enough, but he manages to find it raw. Thank like the heavens for win. knees there. You know he was definitely sweating the moment he dropped that true combo, and he had to kind of throw himself in the heat a little bit again to try and find the last blow. But we are going to be going to a game five. You can take a look at the stats right there. 518 damage to 535. That's about as even as it can be. In the heat is so accurate. Because in the last game, they were separated by like maybe 30 damage. In this game, it is still extremely close as well, but in Three, 500 range. Two, one, these two one. have been going at it. It's been incredibly close. We have a game number five here between Knees and Delta. Delta really just establishing complete control with the hammer. We haven't seen much axe from Delta throughout mm -hmm. like the oh majority of this outside of those six. But nice. try gets a reversal here, going for a big ground pound. We haven't seen him really go for that too much. Now starting to try and pull it out. I love the bait we saw from Delta there as well. Was able to bait out the Rayman down sit, but just wasn't able to capitalize too much there. I mean, even taking a look at this hammer play from Delta, like I, I have to agree, he's mainly sticking on that hammer and he's getting a lot of hits in there. But Knees now swapping over to these gauntlets, he's going to be able to see how he's able to build his retaliation. Oh, I guess he didn't want him. Yeah, this, is, this has been the bread and butter and the money maker, but instead, you like not feeling it, deciding to go with the Ooh. axe, just wanting to be able to box, now getting rid of hammer, it. trying to go for a big stare, nice. does get. Is oh, he getting the wall touch? Okay, gets the recovery, sends him high, but it keeps the pressure going. Okay, we'll take it. It wasn't enough to KO, which definitely isn't what he's wanted, but grab the cancel D-Light recovery. Yeah, we'll take that. Actually, not a bad, bad make out at all from me. So, I mean, despite all that, Delta, we saw, especially at the end of that last game, was able to equalize things extraordinarily quickly, mm -hmm. right? Like, that was over the span of maybe like 10 to 15 seconds. So, like, if you are Nees, you need to build a hefty lead. Like, I mean, like, thick lead right here to make sure that you can go ahead and secure this set. Five Cs on that. You need a massive lead here. You like you need to get that pressure going. You need to keep Delta from getting any kind of comfort. And Nisa's doing that so far very well to neutralize, catching him. Everybody decided to go for a jump stare. Does get the stomp stare, but a lot of damage in favor. The extra credit turn we like to bring up a lot. That was very good for Nisa. Mm -hmm. And just like that, I mean, I think this was a good amount of damage. This is kind of what I was looking for, right? You got him in the red here. You have your gauntlet. to D-Light Recovery is going to KO at this damage range, assuming you're able to find it. And if you're Delta here, you're just trying to get a weapon, right? You're like, I, I at least need to get something to swing with to start. Come on, what can I find? Oh, looks like I can't find anything because this guy knees is just being so oppressive. Oh, and he goes for the ground pound, and he oh. goes for ground pound back, and then just, goes. just keeps it going. Ground I, pound train? I, I am so surprised because knees had such a good, was doing such a good job on Weapon Starve. It's like, you might as well just keep it going, right? But knees. Decided to try and go for the ground pounds to catch him off guard. It's like you assume I'd go back, but now Delta still deep in the red. Pretty much anything will take him out. Delta just oh. trying to get back into it. We've seen this is this is an oh. even game. This is a very Ooh. even game now. This is tough, man. Like he had such a lead built up, and just like that, we're watching Delta go ahead and turn things around. Scoop. Hagen dies. That's going to be a quick one to send my guy back to the blast zone. And now we have one stock remaining on these. You did the job to bring it this far. Are you going to lose in game five? Is Delta going to be clutcher than you are? I mean, this is where champions are built, right? You have to get this W. It's game five. Delta holding on to a very, very small lead here because a neutral light should possibly take it out. No, the he <laughs> it takes forever to take Taros out. Trying to go off stage. Ooh. Does catch him, though. Gets it to final stock apiece. Knees, so what does he decide to commit? Make? Gonna stay with the Axe. We've seen a lot more Axe this game five mm -hmm. by comparison to the Gauntlets. You were saying that before. You need to keep Delta away. As the Weapon Toss catches him, but it's not enough to keep him away from Hammer. And man, we've seen Delta rack up the damage so fast that I'm looking at these damage numbers and I'm like, it's not going to be like this for long based off what I've seen so far. But Knees saying, hold on, maybe I can prove otherwise. Not quite though, Delta. Not going to be able to start from the weapon spawn. Wasn't quite the best for that. But despite that, I mean, he is scrapping, dude. Knees is behind. Goes for the Mafia. It's not enough Whoa. to KO off the top. That was so close. Does that be the difference here? Does Knees... Go, he, he's getting set deep off stage. Getting back does have options oh, to build a wall touch. <laughs> yeah, that was not what I was expecting at all. The neutral light gonna send him back off, and now he's on once again, Flambo. Oh, what is he gonna do here? He has to find a way in. He can't. Delta's gonna go ahead and get the down air and does a side sig at the end for celebration, taking out knees. 3 2. We're gonna be seeing knees in the loser side of bracket there. Delta was just more clutch. 619 damage to 497. Nice. Like, Delta is continuing to show. Ignorance is the answer. It is. Like, just uh, it, 
when you see somebody who gets uh, like a W at a last chance qualifier, it's like, okay, was that a fluke? Are you going to be able mm -hmm. to repeat that? Right? Because you did that without all the PR players, uh, like all of the top PR players who've already qualified. And then the run at Winters. And now here, keeping it going. Delta is here to stay. Knees has been here so much, like we were talking about before, as we get into the replays to talk about this match. But Knees finally got caught slipping a little bit at the end. That was as close as you could possibly get, but Delta just playing so clutch. And Flambo, you're right, man. Just the way that he was playing, like, they, they, like yeah. ignorance is key, but that's what you got to do as someone who's playing Taros. Use that great damage to your favor. He just, he made it look like, I don't know, I've seen many a player play Taros, right? Like, it's not like Delta's the only person out there playing this character, but the way that Delta does it feels like he embodies the spirit of Taros when he plays, man. He says, you know, I'm gonna go for this play. It may be risky, but it, it, it's what the bull is all about, you yeah. know? I mean, like, the, ra the Raging Bull is pretty much like the, the startup of how he starts the set, right? We talk about all of those six. He put out 10 in game one. That's why we were alluding to the fact, like, he's he's not one shy to use them. He will put them out on you, but the horn, it, puts, it puts fear into you. Yeah. Like, it makes you, like, regret the idea of going near ledge because of that Axe d sig because of the massive range that Side Sig has. But also, if you go too close to ledge, you might just get scooped up. So he puts fear into you early and then he plays around it later because mm -hmm. he knows you're going to use those defensive options in those frightened spots. And Delta took advantage of that. Center stage mostly went in favor to, uh, to knees with the gauntlet, but it kind of disappeared in game five. No, I have to agree. Like, especially like from the side of Delta, I don't actually think most of the SIGs that most people are like concerned about for Taros, I don't think he landed any of them. He didn't get like the axe and SIG. We didn't see one neutral SIG that actually connected either. We didn't see the neutral SIG from yeah. Hammer, yeah, didn't yoink them to the other side. We didn't even see a Hammer side SIG connect, which usually robs people of their stock absurdly early. He was able to get it mainly through just pure Hammer gameplay, right? Mm -hmm. He was stomping, he was saying, he got more KOs with down air than most Hammer players normally get. I feel like Very most of them true. get them off with the Sayer or something like that, but he was just like, Bing, and Axe Recovery as well was the other one. Yeah, but once again, make sure that you continue to watch the Omen Oasis Championships. Make sure you go ahead and check out HP Omen as well. Check out the website and check out all their amazing products. I happen to be using one of them in front of me right now with all the stats. And it's just, it's incredible to be here. And sh uh, big shout outs to uh, the studio for having us here in the first place. Mm -hmm. But Flambo, it's going to be a temporary break, but not a long one. Now that's facts. For everybody watching at home, make sure that you go ahead and tweet out how you're feeling about today, how you're enjoying the matches, how much you love Brawlhalla at hashtag BHEsports. But aside from all of that, we're going to go to a quick break. It's been Flambo. It's been Ajax. We're here kicking it with you. We'll be back shortly.
can claim your free Omen Oasis in-game title limited time by scanning the QR code. Look, it's way down there. Or if you're uh, on uh, Twitch.television, Twitch.tuvalu technically, uh, slash Brahala, you can scroll down and there's a little uh, 
bumper, there's a little uh, icon that you can click as well yeah. to claim your limited time free in-game Omen Oasis title. Yeah, super easy, and it's free. So. Yeah. Can't, Why not? Can't not, you know what I mean? It's right. free. Exactly. What better what what better price tag? But you know what's not free? These matches, although some people might say some of these <laughs> players are. Uh, we've got two people in our top eight already. I'm Duke, and join with me is none other than Cirrus. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? Um, oh, we can see them answer up yeah. there, actually. Fun so, fact. Right up there. Uh, send us your messages. Tweet at uh, hashtag BH Esports. And uh, your message is going to be up there, too. Delta for the win. Delta He's for the win. He's feeling good. Okay, so we've got two of our top eight already, Godly and Delta, but we've still got two more to find out about. Akno and Fozy, Sarme and the Ninja 729, and the one kind of interesting name there, of course they're all interesting names, but Sarme, kind of the upset here, yep. taking Simple out. Simple's out of the tournament, so some predictions are blown already. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of the main reasons I have not delivered any predictions just yet. <laughs> but I will say Sarme is a player we've been seeing for a while, and he's, he's hovered in that, like, Top 25 area, kind of working his way up, and I believe he's like top 17 now. Um, and you know he is. Uh, I think he's showing up today. Yeah. And we'll check in with him little uh, a little while later. But for now, we've got Akno and Fozy on it's deck. Akno, of course, PR number one. If you've been watching Brahalla Esports, if you know about Europe, you know about Akno. Of course, of course. And great performance in Winter Championship as well. So I'm excited to see uh, how he's going to stack up against Fozy. Obviously, big PR difference between the two. And in terms of being a veteran for tournaments, Akno got 11 gold medals. Fozzie's at zero right now, so there is a little bit of a gap there. But yeah, uh, uh, let's see how that plays out. <laughs> but look at the number of top 32s. Fozzie actually having more top 32s. Oh, look so. at that. Yeah, yeah, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, though. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's like not even the bridesmaid. That's like you got invited to the <laughs> wedding. <at least. laughs> you're sitting on the right side of the party, but yeah. you're not... Uh, you're not going back for the uh, for drinks afterwards. <laughs> no, no. You got one drink ticket, and that's it. Uh, we got a matchup. That, it's going to be an interesting one. Of course, Fozy coming in PR number 10. Uh, he's, he's definitely the underdog. But, I mean, Akno, we've seen, we've seen him fall. Yeah, and we've seen some great upsets here today already. I mean, simple like we were saying. So um, I don't know if that's going to be too much of a difference, to be honest. But looks like we are getting ready to lock in Sora with a big Surus message. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to tweet at us with hashtag BH Esports uh, in your message and uh, let us know who you think is going to win. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Cyrus, I'm going to put you on the spot. You didn't give a prediction for your top three, but I want to know your prediction for this one at the very least. Okay. Um, Akino has got to be top three for sure. For sure. No, I'm talking um, about this match, though. Oh, this match? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go with Akino. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> safe bet. I, ne I never go against the odds. Yeah, you know, okay. Super safe better. Uh, Akno, I mean, he's a great player, and we've just seen amazing things from him this year. I think 2022 is going to be his year as well. So, it, It's very hard to bet against Akno. Of course, yeah. he's generally the favorite for the European region. But Godly, I mean, that last match we saw with Godly and Knees, I mean, I, I thought Knees was going to take it, but then Godly, you know, is playing great, especially after the Winners' Championship run he had, so... I don't know. Maybe Akno will have a tough time of it. I'm still going to say I'm going to stick with Akno for this yeah. one. How about you? I'm, I mean, yeah, I got to stick with Akno for sure. I already have him in my prediction, so, of course, that's part of it. But at the same time, like, you got you to gotta go with the numbers. I'm a numbers guy yeah. coming in. You got PR number one versus PR number ten. That's a whole ten times difference. Easy math for that one. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I got I to gotta go for Team Akno. Yeah, and, you know, I always feel like the top, when, when you get to, like, the top five, when it comes to PR, the skill gap just increases oh, yeah. more and more. So, like, the difference between top 20 to top 10 is way smaller than it is from top 10 to top 5. So, you know, we might be seeing that in play here as well. Yeah, especially with the, the consistency that Akno has had, of course, coming in multi-time gold medalist. You can yeah. see 11 gold medals. He has more gold medals than he has silvers and bronzes combined, like... How do you compete against something like that? No, I mean, one of the greats when we're talking about EU Brawlhalla, especially in the last three years, um, it's 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 going to be a tough one for Fozy. But Fozy has played great, and we've seen a lot from him recently. I mean, Fozy is just a name that you've seen around in community tournaments, you've seen in, in official tournaments, majors, and he's doing great. It's Honestly, it's only a matter of time, I think, till we see a couple medals up there on his stats page. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, Fozy, definitely a strong competitor. Sparky uh, called him out himself and was saying, I'm a big fan of Fozy mm -hmm. and think he's on the rise. Was saying that he was likely going to be coming in with the Jiro, but instead we're seeing the Rayman for game number one. Oh, interesting. Two, one, brawl. 
All right, Demon Island here for game one. Akno versus Fozy. Akno, of course, on that Koji, and Fozy on the Rayman. The Rayman, it's an, it's an interesting pick. Of course, it's a little bit more meta. We saw Godly do really well with it in the Winter Championship, so not too crazy to see Fozy be like, you know what, Akno, I saw you lose to this not that long ago. Yeah, you think that's what he's doing, a little bit of a counter pick there? Maybe, hoping that it'll work out for him, but right now, Akno doing a really good job walling out Fozy. You can see just all these neutral lines playing the spacing game. This is a much safer Akno start. Yeah, definitely. Fozy showing him a lot of respect and giving him space. And Agno kind of taking advantage of that. I think punishing him a little bit with those side airs, just kind of building up that damage slowly. Nothing too crazy just yet, though. All right. Oh, I love the patience there. Fozy got the side light and immediately spot dodged. Was hoping to get that reaction onto Agno's dodge, but Agno with the patience got the down signature, and Agno's going to take the first stop. I mean, stop. it's game one. Everybody's got three stocks you just got down to the second no reason to get too hasty you know it's time to learn to read your opponent figure out how they're dodging what moves they're going to do so that's what you kind of want to see foes is kind of playing it a little bit safe right now and then just getting comfortable playing against Agno. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, there's plenty of learning time in this one, but at the same time, you want to see Fozy finish off this stock not too long from now, because, of course, any time that Akno has on this second stock, it's time to build oh. up damage, and you're seeing it happen. Oh, Holy. he is relentless right now. He's at it. He's at it. I okay. mean, barely letting Fozy back on stage, but Akno just punishing him without a weapon. There it is. Are we going to see a three stock here? I, it, it'll be tough. Fozy definitely has some KO tools, right? The Axe side air, the, the gauntlet recovery. But at the same time, Akno with just that quick burst of damage onto Fozy. That was the neutral sig and double recovery to really put pressure out onto Fozy. Yeah, Akno just covering so much space with that bow. I mean, it's just great bow play you're seeing right now. Again, you know, it's top tier go PR1 bow play. <laughs> Arguably the best bow play in the European region. Fozy is struggling here. He is not able to get a hit. Akino just That's a burn dodge. Spacing. Ooh. Wow. Not able to make it back. Nice weapon throw from Fozy. That hit really hard. The second Akno burned that dodge, you saw Fozy dip over, throw down that axe, and of course, it doesn't do the most damage, but it did have quite a bit of force on it, especially with how much damage was built up onto Akno's first stock. Akno just showing a lot of patience, but a lot of aggression as well. Not giving Fozy any space on the stage. Fozy with a great little uh, neutral air gaunt combo there. But is it going to be enough? Fozy's got to play real safe right now. Oh, snap. And avoid just that. Akno taking game one with the GC neutral suit. Yeah, you learned that one. Recently. I did. Yeah. I did just yesterday, actually. Yeah, proud of you. <laughs> Downlight into the gravity cancel neutral signature coming out from Akno to finish out game number one. But really, I want to give it to the bow play. He was able to put out a lot of damage Best move accuracy was the bow end light, hitting 60% of them. Yeah, I mean, definitely. He just showed a lot of aggression, a lot of stage control. And yeah, you can see even in the damage uh, dealt department, it's, a, it's actually pretty even uh, for Akno. He was able to put out 271 on his bow and 257 with his sword. And uh, you're seeing Fozy forced to make those swaps. Still no Jiro for Sparky's prediction, in, uh, prediction. Instead, Three, it's going to be the Olgrim. Yeah, interesting pick. Uh, have we seen Fozy on Olgrim today at all? Uh, I don't think we've seen Fozy on stream period today. I can double check the bracket on who he has reported. Uh, Either way, it's a great, it's an interesting pick. I, you know, I think he's trying to counter a little bit of that bow play. Agno sticking with the sword for now, but uh, you know, I want to see, I want to see Fozy really use that lance and kind of just apply the same pressure that Agno has. All right, so of the reported characters Fozy has played, predominantly been the Rayman today, but he did play Olgrim early on in the pools before switching to a Queen Nai, followed by the Rayman. So uh, not completely out of the blue, but it might be out of the game as oh, the down is take the first stock. Just massive punishing off stage over there. I mean, just relentless. Again, those down airs back and forth. Fozy not able to make it back at all. That's the quintessential reason why people say not to play Lance off stage. Just the ability to shut down that movement and yeah. take a stock is so strong. Yeah, and you you lose your recovery, you get interrupted, and it's just it doesn't matter where you are. That's just that's a stock right there. And you're seeing he's gonna play a little bit more standardized on stage. Akno able to get back up, and we're seeing a similar oh. situation to game two or game one, where. 
Fozzie needs this stock off of Akno. Yeah, Akno just um, just doing some amazing bowstrings there again. I mean, oh, not giving him okay. an inch. But Fozzy managed to take the first stock off Akno, and his deficit is not as bad as it was in the first game. Do you think this is a character switch thing, Duke, or is this a game two thing? I think it's definitely character switch. The lands working really, really well for Fozzy, especially into this bow, right? Like one of the things Lance does really well is have a strong horizontal game. And guess what? When it comes to the air, Bo doesn't have the best horizontal game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see Akno kind of just relying on that end sig when he needs a big horizontal hit. Not much more else he can do in that stage. Ooh. Oh, beautiful wow. ground pound. What an option there. I love that. The GC forces out a dodge from Fozzy. He hits the ground pad and was able to keep it over the corner so it didn't bounce off the stage. Unfortunate it didn't KO, just high defense on the old Grim, but everything is evened up. Things are looking a lot better for Fozzy here in game number two. Yeah, and you know, I think part of that, you know, as we've seen Akno in the last couple minutes or so, it seems like he's getting a lot more comfortable. He's going a little more for the style. But is it too soon? Because we're seeing <laughs> Fozzy punish him for it now. And uh, maybe Akno got a little too oh! too early. Beautiful haymaker up there. I love that. The yeah. down air into a recovery. Generally speaking, in these offstage unarmed plays, you'll see a down air and then like a jump ground pound or maybe a second down air. But really looking at the situation, going for that stage spike with a recovery, really well done for Fozzy. And now he's got the stock advantage. Mm -hmm. Yep, it, he's not too far behind, but this is the first time we've seen him take a damage lead in the last two games. And there it is, it's evened up. Akino tying it up, one stock apiece. He's got his pick of weapons. He's going to go in with the sword. He noticed, you know what, Bo, maybe not working as well into Fozzie's Olgrim. So we're going to try something a little bit different. Go for the sword. Yeah, and Fozzie just swapping to the axe as well. We haven't seen too much of the axe just yet, but... Uh... Akno able to make it back on stage. We know fozzie has got an axe. He had it with the Ray Man. There's that carryover from the previous game. Uh, hasn't shown too much with it, but... Is showing enough because he's got the damage advantage. Yeah, and you know, he's getting those side airs and those neutral likes and, and just building up the, the big heavy hits. It's only a matter of time until one of those side airs sends Akno off the side and confirms. But Akno being Akno has the bow and is piling on that damage right now. Again, we're seeing that aggression. I think Akno has, uh, he's like, all right, I gave you enough respect in the last couple minutes and uh, now I want this match. He's like, all right, you got to look good for a little bit, but uh, I still got to close this one out. And I love the decision making from Akna, right? Had some fantastic juggling with the bow, and then he immediately made the active decision to swap over to the sword, likely for the KO potential, and now he's he was Back. weapon starving. Yeah. Back on the bow. A little bit of dancing. I think both players are just kind of, you know, holding on to that Ooh. last stock. Big hit from Fozzy. It's not enough. Akna able to make it back. He throws his weapon. Ooh, nice Man. neutral. Fozzy has a lot of things that could KO right now, but Akno gets past the neutral light, has no weapon in hand. He's going to back off, picks up another bow, and wants the down light. Oh, the, the down sig does not connect, and oh. Akno <laughs> finds the unarmed side air. He's going to take game number two. Yeah, nice little side air to send him off. You know, I think uh, Akno definitely showed him a lot of respect near the end of that. Didn't go off stage, didn't push him, didn't kind of apply any of that pressure we saw in the, in the first couple stocks. But uh, at the same time, you know, it was the right decision. You know, he just waited, waited for the right moment and uh, confirm that stock. And the big thing for me is like, Fozzy actually put out more damage, 637 damage to the 563 from Akno. Oh, okay. So not too much of a difference then. Yo, I'm, uh, I love the stats that we get. These are some secret stats. Bo, uh, his, his best move accuracy on Akno was bow side air. He hit 100% of his bow side airs. That is unfathomable to me. That's kind of cool. 100% side airs. I mean, you know, not just skill, but knowing which option to use at the right time. Game three here, Akno up 2-0 on the set, and this is a best Ooh. of five. So if Akno wins this, that wow. is the set for him. And Akno is just going in. I mean, I love the way he just followed him off stage over there. Just, you know, just went all the way deep and said, hey, there's no chance. If you're, like, the only way you're coming out of that is if you're going around the stage. Yeah, I really forced Fozzy to disengage. Akno has some fantastic spot dodges inside of these side areas. Still gets the wall touch oh. turnaround opportunity. Fozzy forced to disengage again. The threat of Akno in the off stage is so strong. Yeah, Akno oh, definitely snap. a little more comfortable again. 
He's uh, going for the style and going for the aggression. And you know what? He's earned it. When you're up 2-0 in a best of five, uh, you can kind of play around in game three and uh, do what you like. And uh, Fozzy is going to really have to work hard around that. Great weapon throw. Beautiful options there from Fozzy. Oh, he's being very patient with us. Oh, didn't go for the immediate follow-up. Even a recovery would have been nice. Just Akno is so incredibly damaged. And now Fozzy running away in the unarmed. He's going to survive for a little while, but that was a potential stock he could have taken. Oh, beautiful ground pound. Just playing a little bit off the edge over there. And uh, Akno just edged it out. Got the stock. But, you know, he's not too far behind. Oh. Yeah, those recoveries hurt. Uh, for some reason in my head, I was like, Fozzy's the one deep red. How did that recovery do no force? But no, this is the second stock of Fozzy. And now, Fozzy trying to find a KO tool. It's going to be the Lance neutral light. You yeah. never see that KO. <laughs> Very rare for a confirm option there. But hey, if it works, it works. I mean, at the end of the day, he's able to keep this one relatively even. This is looking a lot better than it did in game number one still. The fact that he's able to keep this sort of close, but the D-Light and Zig. Akino just punishing him with those combos, though. Just one, two, three-piece after three-piece. A little bit of footsies here. Downlight, no immediate follow-up from Fozzy. Downlight side air, just punishing him. Fozzy throwing his weapon to uh, oh, snap. Oh, off stage control by Akno is amazing right now. Fozzy is playing Akno's game, though he is in a dangerous position. I would not recommend that. Yeah, I mean, Fozzy's definitely been willing to do the off stage unarmed against Akno. A bold decision, and he usually rotates out when things start looking Ooh. hairy, but a great spot dodge and a turnaround. Akno able to clean up that second stock, and he's one away from earning his spot in the top eight. Yeah, beautiful dodge by Akno there. A little step back and then the desync to finish up the stock. I mean, that is what you do when you're comfortable and you have a lead. And uh, Fozzy is just needs to tighten it up right now. Cannot afford to give Akno any of these little options, whether it's a tiny hit here, tiny hit there, or a backstep desync. You know, that'll end it. Akno's spot dodges have been so on point. Even gets the Nair right there to touch up. You saw him sweat beating, but he utilizes that Nair to make sure that he can get back up onto the stage and keep that threat on Fozzy. Is this a thing? Is Akno known for his dodges? Because I feel like I noticed this in Winter Championship as well. Like he just has some real beautiful, good-looking frame perfect dodges. I mean, that's what that's what happens when you're a top competitor. Oh, the weapon toss actually dropping him out of that neutral air, but Akno still too. converting. Agno just going in. <laughs> Beautiful downsick. It's not enough to send. One more hit. And he's he, he went for the craziest hit possible. The gravity <laughs> cancel down like he's going for style. You see that weapon toss out of nowhere. Agno is definitely playing with his food. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, he's having a little fun too. Uh, it's a shame it's at Fozzie's expense, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I think Fozzie's having a good time too. He's great Brawlhalla being played right now. Beautiful hit. Okay. Hey, it ain't over till it's over. Yeah, we've seen zero to deaths happen. It ain't over till it's over. Akno does get the weapon spawn, though. Fozzy's going to need a big offstage play. The Lance potential for the horizontal, but it won't Ooh. matter. D-Light recovery. Akno cleans it up. 3-0. That's a neat little downlight recovery to end it right there as well. Akno 3-0. Yeah, he's just going on into the top eight. Now, I know I think we both predicted Akno to win this one. Yes. But did you think it was going to be a 3-0, or did you think it would be a little closer than that? I was hoping for it to be a little bit closer. Yeah. I'm a big fan of some close Brawlhalla. I love uh, I love a 3-2, you know, a game five situation, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not too surprised to see the 3-0 at the very least. You know, we have seen a couple game fives already today, and I guarantee we're probably going to see a couple more. Um, I was really hoping this one would go. Yeah. And, and, I, and I thought it was. I thought it was. It was close enough, and if anyone can do it, I think Fozzy can hold his own against Akno right now. I do want to see what the stats say about it, though. A little bit of a difference there, 536 to 662. Everything else is kind of even, except uh, Fozzy's signatures just don't connect as much. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at the uh, the average damage per engagement, which is only a five damage difference, but it really shows in the damage dealt versus damage taken where you're mm -hmm. seeing the, the disparity. So Akno is clearly getting more engagements on the Fozzy. Right, and I mean, if we go by the average, we're seeing about four more engagements that Akno was able to do. That was enough to take the dub. Yeah. 
Really well done. You see the weapon throws the damage dealt per weapon. Fozy very clearly was looking into that land. And you're seeing Akno really adapting from game two, right? We talked about how Akno was having a strong bow game. And Fozy came in with the lance, started shutting it down. So then Akno's like, all right, I'll play a little bit more sword this time. Man, Akno really held on to that second stock too. I mean, I don't, I don't know which weapon that was during the second stock. I think it was a little bit of both, right? Yeah. He had the, he had the bow and he had the sword. But man, he held on to that second stock. Yeah, he was on it. He was keeping it. And of course, that's the top competitor that, competitor that we know and love. Akno earning his spot into the top eight cleanly. It's okay, Copium. Fozy's not out yet. Double elimination, <laughs> all right? Yeah, yeah. Fozy now uh, set to have a really good loser's run. I mean, the bracket's looking pretty tough down there, too. Uh, at this stage, you know, losers or winners, you're going to face some heavy hitters regardless. But uh, I think if anyone can do it, Fozy. I, I have a lot of faith in Fozy. Okay. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, follow, I've, I've watched him climb up and uh, always enjoy watching him play, too. Okay, well, uh, in terms of other people who are enjoyable to watch, let's talk a little bit about Sarme and the Ninja729, our next match to see who's going into the top eight. I'm personally a big fan of both of these people. Yeah. Sarme mostly because he's, he's a community guy. He's one of those yes. people that yes. I see in Twitch chat very yeah, yeah, frequently. Yeah. He'll very directly at me and be like, hey, this thing that you didn't know or you said wrong. I'll be like, all right, cool. Shout yeah. out Sarme. Yep. Same here. I mean, see, I see Sarme in Twitch chat a lot and uh, always a pleasure to interact with. And, you know, he's a great player. We've seen him climb up and he's firmly in the top 15, top 20 now. Uh, Sarme, PR18 right there. Uh, six top 32 placements. So still relatively new when it comes to the, the upper echelons of the pro scene. But, uh, you know, he has he's taken some big dubs uh, in the yeah. last couple seasons. I, I mean, I know, um, you know Fry, who's PR17, has not been able to defeat Sarme in tournament just yet. And, um, you know, that's saying something. Fry's probably one of the best fates out there as well. Yeah, Sarme, I, I mean, if you want to talk about getting on the ground floor of a player, I think Sarme is one of those people that you got to talk about. He is definitely on the up and up, coming in only six top 32s, right? He's still relatively new to the competitive scene, but he is mm -hmm. he's rising. I mean, already taken out Simple in a best of five. That's yeah. huge. On the other side, though, he's going up against the Ninja 729, a very yeah. historied competitor, mm -hmm. and he has some of my favorite matches to watch in the European region. Yeah, I mean, Ninja729 is a name and a face we've seen a lot in the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, if we, if we take a look at those placements as well, top 32, 30 placements, top 8, 13. So a lot more seasoned. And, you know, that makes a big difference when it comes to competition. I think just being able to have that stamina and that focus and that mental comes with experience. The more you've played and the more you reach the top 32s, the more you get used to it and the better it is. Looks like we're locking into game one, Sarme and the Ninja729, winner's quarterfinal. Here we go. The Ninja 729 back. Oh, oh, oh. those are nasty okay. cannon combos right off the bat. We're 10 seconds into this game and the Ninja 729 already hitting the NOS and uh, <laughs> really just trying to run all over Sarma, showing he's like the disrespect to the lower PR. You know, I loved that uh, normally when you see someone do those cannon strings off the stage, once they reach a certain point when you're off screen, they'll usually just come back horizontally. Yes. Yeah. He didn't do that. He went and he went for those neutral airs, tried to get Sarme's return back as well. You know, and I like that commitment. I like that commitment. Yeah, definitely showing the, the practice Ooh. with the cannon, able to clean up that first stock quick and easy. The Ninja 729, like you said, usually with those cannon strings, like once you can't hit the recovery, they'll just hit the ejection seat, start going for the side airs back towards stage. But the Ninja 729 hanging out there, uses that cheese dodge up to try to catch another hit. Wow, these cannons are just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just the one, but he's hitting so many, it feels like there's multiple. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling every one of those in my body right now. Sarme unable to space correctly with a bow right now, and then just not getting enough coverage. Oh my gosh. Just... The air control throwing out cannonballs into the sky swaps to a different cannon. Sarme throws away the bow, though. Oh, sick. beautiful G GCD sick. And a neutral sick to catch him on the jump. Oh, trying to catch another one. Ninja 729 being a little cheeky with this one. Still has a huge lead over Sarme. No anchors thrown out just yet. A little too predictable, maybe. Beautiful downlight recovery. Ninja 729 still at three stocks. Sarme only at one. One man, Ninja Seven Two Nine came in real hot on this one. <laughs> no warm up time to this one. Yeah, it's I like, really hope he's got the momentum. Oh snap! Oh, he backs off a little bit. I'm surprised he didn't chase with like a down air after hitting that ground pound. But you know what? He's getting so much damage built up. Like this is a pretty secured game. 
Yeah, I think Sarmay, you know, I, what I want to see from Sarmay is a little more reset Ooh. and a lot more patience. I think he's going in and Ninja729 is just punching it. Beautiful down light there, uh, down sig there from Sarmay. Yeah, he was able to clean it up, made sure to uh, to not get the restock. Is that it? Least, oh, and, uh, wow. JV3. Yeah. The unofficial. Yeah, the unofficial. Fresh stock for the Ninja 729, and man, that was quick and dirty. I'm I'm curious what Sarmay's adjustment is going to be, right? Like you're you're talking about patience, and I think patience is a good option. But I was almost curious to see if he was going to change characters, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It looks like he's sticking with the Koji. I I thought he was. I thought for sure we're going to see a character swap. But hey, you know, if you're comfortable with a character, there's nothing better than having that on your side. Yeah, I think that's that's something that's indicative Three, of two, like the new bloods, one. right? The new ones yeah. who are kind of on the up and up. They're like they pick a character and they they just know it through and through. Right, and you know I I, I think I get that a lot. You know, people always tell me to pick a main, and uh, it definitely has its advantages. You know, when you know a character better than you know any other character, you're always going to do good on that. Yeah. And of course, there are counter picks and this and that, but nothing beats the one that you know better than anything else. Sometimes experience beats all. Ooh, the ground pound attempted. I respect the idea, but unfortunately didn't quite have the positioning and a good weapon toss from the Ninja 729, but you're not seeing the gas pedal that the Ninja 729 was able to hit like Ooh, in game one. Man, that cannon is just absolutely... Now, I will say one of the other things I've noticed, and maybe this is uh, this is one of those uh, indicative of new blood things that I've seen, is instead of the character swap, we see the skin the swap. Skin swap, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just gotta look the part for the battle. Right, and new drip can get you uh, pretty far. And, you know, seems like it's working better for Sarme in this match. Uh, yeah. Just a little bit, but at the same time, Ninja729, very healthy still on this first stock, going sword versus sword. Has the edge guard potential oh, double wow. down. Anchor, he got the wall touch though, so can't conclude Beautiful the stock just sick. yet. But man, the threats from the Ninja 729. I mean, the way the Ninja 729 is using the entirety of Citrus kit is amazing. I mean, I'm just seeing signatures left and right, GC here and there. I mean, he knows this, look at that, there it is. I mean, he knows this kit inside out and he's using it to its full potential. I'm going to I'm gonna need some stats genius to let me know, but I'm pretty sure the Ninja 729 has more health right now than he did in game one in the same situation. Like, this is there's a much realer potential of a three-stock right now. Oh, doesn't get the recovery, though. Sarme needs to find something to deny the three-stock. The Ninja calls his bluff. He dodged hey. underneath the ground pound, but a nice D-Light recovery, and Sarme will deny another three stock. DLR recovery will get you out of, out of a lot of situations. But there it is. I mean, Ninja 729 just absolutely going in. I mean, it's that, it, you know, it's the NOS. It's the yeah. NOS. Like you said, there's no better way to put it. I just, I, I'm watching him and I feel like he's playing at a different speed. <laughs> He, he's, just, he's just running at a faster uh, rate right now, but Sarme does get the wall touch. Ooh, didn't connect with the grand pound. Oh, no Ooh, wall touch. The Ninja 7-2-9 going to take game number two. Beautiful game, too. I mean, Duke, I need to watch the times on these matches. I yeah. don't know how quickly they're popping. but They're, they're blink if you, and you'll miss it matches. Yeah, it must have been a couple minutes each, like two or three minute matches here. Man, so much just immediate aggression coming out every single time. I mean, just nonstop. Three, two, Here we go. Game number one, three, and Sarme going to make the swap. It's over to the Fate this time. An interesting swap. Literally no carry over to the coach. Yeah. I wonder what this is. Um, you know, the Scythe, I think, presents a lot of opportunities for him, especially against uh, Cannon. But is it going to be enough right now? In terms of area that he covered, I mean, yeah, it's it's not enough to negate <laughs> whatever jet fuel is coursing through Ninja 729's blood right now. He's, he's definitely, uh, he's on that jet fuel right now. Yeah. Sorry, mate. All right, he's starting to get some momentum, going for the Nairs and Sairs, but Ninja 729 did have a dodge, so he's able to get out. Oh, oh beautiful snap. read there. We get a big two-piece. Didn't quite get the weapon toss for the KO, but he's still getting so much damage built up. The D-Light Nair will likely do it for the Ninja 729. He's just, he's not Ooh. waiting at all. 
He's like, okay, this one didn't go. I'm going to throw my weapon at you, and then I'm going to bump you, and then I'm going to do this. Like, he is just not waiting for Sarmie to move at all. He's trying to put out as many hitboxes as possible, right? Like, he'll throw out the cannonball, and then he'll throw out another attack behind it. He'll throw the weapon up, and he'll throw something else behind it. What is the opposite of parry play or passive play? Because this <laughs> is that. It's that. It's unparry play. All right, side stick thrown out from Sarmie, though. He's looking all right. Very real potential, Ooh, and yeah, he'll get nice. it. The ground pound. Sarmie going to keep this one closer. Yeah, Sarmie wants this game, and he wants it bad, because this will put it at 2-2, two, two, which means they can go to a game five, and Sarmie is still in it. Remember, this is the winner's side, so both of these players can afford to take one loss before they're knocked to the loser's bracket. Well, Sarmie with the orb in hand, hoping that that'll be the tool to do it for him. Stuck on this corner, but yeah, that cannonball does not go as Ooh. low as like a thatch cannonball. So you can actually stay right underneath it. Turn around, goes for the weapon toss the other direction. Was trying to read the move out wide from the Ninja 729. A little unarmed there. Ninja trying to get that cannon. He's been doing great on it. I definitely want to see the uh, weapon stats break down. How much he's been relying on the cannon versus the sword. But at this point, I mean, after three games of almost dominance, despite Sarme even getting a, a win, I don't know why he would switch off the cannon. No, definitely it's been it's been the cannon show from the Ninja 729. Like, he'll have those pops with the sword, right? He'll get something simple, D-Light recovery, things like that. But it's definitely been the cannon show. And, of course, when you've got jet, jet fuel in your blood, you're going to want to fly around like you do with that cannon. Yeah. And, you know, I love the way that um, wh when you get a character swap, Game three, game two, it takes a little bit while, it, you know, just to readjust. Yeah, there's a warm-up time usually. Yeah, Ninja 729, none of it. Just right back into it. He's been able to get the reads. He's been able to adjust super quick to the scythe play from Sarme, and just as if nothing's happened. Yeah, Ninja 729 does not care what character you are playing, but Sarme, he's hoping that this character will be the one to put him back on the board so far. I mean, it's been his best chance so yeah. far, and he's doing great. I think he's got a solid choice. A couple, couple dirty uh, sight strings and maybe a little orb combo can get him there. Definitely a real possibility of closing out this game. The falling neutral air coming out from the Ninja 729. D-Light neutral heavy, not quite enough. Not enough. I love that little, uh, the GC Haymaker. Yo, it's optimal. There. You get extra force on it versus a recovery. I did not know that. Yeah. So. Gonna have to practice. It's optimal. It, it's definitely better. It's harder, for sure. But Final it's, it, it's better if you can get it. Oh, man. Sarmie's so damaged, though. He needs a big string here. Doesn't get the dodge read. Final stock here in game three for both players. Sarmie is down 2-0. A little correction from earlier. Uh, Ninja 7-2-9, oh. though. Two games up, and the recovery is enough. He takes game three and advances on Sarme, being sent to the loser's bracket. Was okay. that kind of how you thought it would play out, dude? Yeah, pretty much. The Ninja 729, the higher seed. Of course, you'll love the underdog story in Sarme. Always. He's on the rise, but the Ninja 729 is already in the sky. It's yeah. hard yeah. to try to meet him up there. I am still heavily rooting for Sarme. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of him, not just in the loser's run, but I think 2022 is going to be a great year for him. Um, I want to see how far he goes today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's, his run is not done yet. Again, this is the winner's side, so he's going to go down into the loser's side of the bracket to potentially make that lower bracket run. I think we can even see who he's going to be running into. Yeah, it's going to be Seijiru uh, to get into the top eight. So that'll be a tough one for Sarme, but at the same time, like, who knows? Anything's yeah. possible. I mean, yeah, Sarme took out Simple. So look at the damage difference here. 660 to 472 and 30 to 40 damage per engagement difference. That's not too much. It's, it's not... You know, it doesn't look as bad as when we saw those heavy cannon strings. Yeah. You know, I, I, but I think what these numbers don't tell us is the control and domination that Ninja 729 showed on this stage. The, there's definitely a lot that these uh, these numbers don't quite tell the story of, but at the same time, you still see like the disparities, right? Yeah. 660 versus 472, and then the disparity in the damage per engagement as well was definitely in favor of the Ninja 729. I mean, and look at that. Ninja 729, 398 on cannon, 104 on sword, and 157 unarmed versus 235, 198, and 39. Okay, so there is quite a little bit of a difference there. And Sarmie definitely um, favoring that scythe. Not too much, though. Yeah. 
it, it's interesting because I really thought that Sarmay's orb was going to be the thing that worked better. Yeah. There was very mo various moments, right? Like even that first KO was off an orb ground pound. So I was thinking like, oh, yeah. maybe this orb is going to be the thing that works out. But he went into lean into the side, whatever. It got him to the final stocks. I can't blame him, but unfortunately it wasn't quite enough. Uh, either way, Ninja729 moves on. We've got four of our top eight. Let's see some highlights from that Ooh. previous match, though. Yeah, again, you can see just the, the sheer aggression. This oh, is, wow. That was like the first we 10 seconds 10. of our, our set. And there it is, following him up right there. Yeah. And you're seeing a great weapon usage. Like, So you saw those weapon toss numbers, and a lot of it was like actually just like straight up aggression, trying to keep those those follow-ups, or he'll do a juggle to mix up. It was very tricky weapon tosses. It's not the, the style of weapon tosses that we're seeing from some other players who have similar weapon right. toss numbers. I mean, I, when, when you see a lot of weapon tosses, in my mind, a lot of it is spacing or approach techniques. Mm -hmm. I feel like for the Ninja 729, it was just part of his move set. Yeah. You know, he's using it as attacks and just keeping Sarme in as much hit stun as possible and just not giving him any chance to recover or anything like that. Yeah, his weapon tosses were generally part of the flow. He would, yeah. he would throw it up, kind of dodgeball tech against the opponent, or he would hit a neutral eye and then chase dodge weapon toss. Like, it was all part of this flow that he was doing. And uh, there you're seeing, again, like a weapon yeah, toss to beautiful. try to keep some aggression, but also deny. Weapon uh, toss again, yeah. probably. Nope. <laughs> Maybe. There's one. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is what we've seen more and more is just more and more weapon tosses being incorporated into gameplay. And I think Ninja729 is just taking it to the next level, mm -hmm. making it part of his attack moveset, and then just running with it. You know, I'm, I'm excited. That's a, that's a nice way for the, the, the meta to develop as well. And I think uh, Ninja729 is a great example of how you can really incorporate weapon throws into your gameplay. Yeah, that's the type of weapon throws that I, I definitely love to see. But uh, like I was trying to say, uh, we've got four of our top eight now. Godly yeah. and Delta versus Ooh. Akno and the Ninja 729. Yeah, this, this is going to be a, a good one. I think we have uh, Godly and Delta up next, yeah. which is, Godly, as you know, has had a massive run. I mean, played amazing in Winter Championships, of course, and has been playing great today as well. Uh, same can be said for Delta on that Taros. Heavy, heavy hitting. Big PR difference. I mean, especially if we're coming. <laughs> yeah, the PR non-existent versus <laughs> PR 33, that's a that's an infinite difference. Uh, but you got to believe Godly's PR is like, it's on the rise. If you, if you like did a poll of people who watch European Brawlhalla, most people would put Godly's PR above Delta, like the yeah. emotional PR, oh, yeah. if yeah. you will. Um, but at the same time, like technically PR, uh, De Delta's been part of the scene for a little while longer. He's been competing. He's right. gotten one top 32 under his belt. Technically, Godly has one gold medal. Right. Uh, but, you know. That was happening. from Winter Championships? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, stats, TB, TBD, TBC. Yeah. Uh, TBC. But to be, to be to be confirmed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be seen, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, isn't that like a TV channel? <laughs> like, what? Um, but I am expecting a godly dub here. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think godly is. Just after what we saw in Winter Championships, he's got one, he's up 1-0 when it comes historically in this matchup, and uh, you know, just from what we've seen godly on today, I think he's coming out with a dub. Interesting swap coming out from Godly. He was on the Mordex earlier, but it looks like he wants the Rayman to go up against Delta's Taros. And Delta's Taros kind of starting off strong, getting some good hammer oh, momentum. But a nice beautiful axe punishing from Godly. Now, um, it's not wholly unexpected seeing Godly on Rayman. He did, I believe, win winners with yeah. um, Rayman. So, you know, not a, not a super um, unexpected choice. Yeah. It's not that odd, but at the same time, it's also like you were playing the Mordex. It was looking so good. I'm curious what decide, uh, why made him want to make the swap, but either way, both of them in the red right now. Who's going to... Oh! oh! Didn't what? touch. Yeah, did not. That's unfortunate. I think he was looking to touch the soft platform and maybe just went through it. I yeah, might have slipped a little low, but can clean up the stock. Oh, a good weapon toss, but God. not enough. Godly able to clean it up. And you know, that I think is why we saw the Rayman swap. I think he wants that heavy, heavy axe. He wants to get those side airs and he wants to confirm against Delta quickly. And you know, Delta's got the hammer and he's got the axe. He's gonna be just heavy, heavy hits. And Godly needs an answer for that. And Scythe Gauntlet's 
was probably not cutting it for him. But he's he's got some great gauntlet momentum, right? Like he's been able to add up quite a bit of damage, getting those uh, those big strings many just down, down airs, yeah. just pummeling Delta's head. Yeah, I mean that many down airs in a row has to affect your mental as well. Yeah, maybe maybe you gotta get him a, a helmet after this oh, one. Oh, beautiful a weapon recovery. throw! Another recovery. Godly taking the lead. Oh man, how did he see that weapon spawn? It was hidden behind Delta, but he saw just like the little bit of the flames there. And he's able to uh, deny weapons from Delta and already. Godly on that ball. ultra instinct for weapon yeah. spawns. That's crazy. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel that Delta's struggling a little bit. You know, Godly is outmaneuvering him and just kind of showing a lot more control despite having, um, just, you know, being on the gauntlets is giving him a lot more movement potential. Delta, it seems to me, is struggling a little bit despite him closing off that stock real as soon as I said that. <laughs> Um, and narrowing the gap, but what do you want to see from Delta to kind of take control? I want, yeah, I, I mean, that's literally what I want, is I want him to be able to take some control back. So far, Godly's just had so much momentum, and Delta will get some of these big hits, right? And uh, shout-outs to Taro's strength to make sure that those big hits count. But at the same time, like, it's been pure momentum in favor of Godly. I mean, Godly has just managed to get a couple of those two, three pieces on X for free. Yeah, I mean, and he's just chasing Delta down vertically and horizontally to build up with those neutral airs. And there it is. Godly closing out game one. Nice and tidy little bow with the recovery on Gauntlets over there. Yeah. And they immediately go into game number two before the replays even come up. They're already banning out stages because <laughs> they want to just run it back. And I, I don't blame them, right? Delta, he, he had these strong moments, but at the same time, time godly's like i probably could have three stocked if i didn't accidentally not right. touch right there i feel like the lot like as we progress in tournaments the quicker is like the players are locking in quicker and quicker they're just want to get back in they're spamming that accept key and then just get right back into it they want to keep that momentum going and there you see godly with the weapon toss to maintain that momentum he's getting hit after hit onto delta Ooh, but double axes Ooh, Delta threw away the weapon and is being punished by Godly. I think he wants that hammer, but I don't know why. He was doing great on the axe earlier. Godly, though, just timing those down airs perfectly and punishing Delta. Wow. I think that hit true, and that is not easy to hit true. Yeah, definitely uh, can be a challenge to hit that sideline side air, but Delta's got a downline side air and again makes the weapon swap. Delta just trying to wow. juggle, but right now Godly's just finding hit after hit. Down like oh, ground pound. Beautiful interrupt there. Didn't even see him, GC, uh, down, down air, down light, I guess. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah, super quick. But that's all you need sometimes to confirm a stock. And Delta, now on his second stock. This, to me, seems like the start of Godly kind of running away with it. Um, and I think this <laughs> match... Holy cow. And, ooh, and this stock is going to be real important for that momentum that we were talking about. Delta needs... This is like make or break for him right yeah. now. Delta needs to get this stock. Otherwise, Godly's just running away with game number two. Okay, a good downline side air. Hey! It will even up the stock count. He's got his pick of the weapons. I want to see an axe. Okay. The hammer, it just hasn't quite been showing up. Oh, he neutralites the wrong way. Oh, man. <laughs> Didn't even have time to show off that second stock axis. Godly just hits recovery after recovery, and now full stock advantage to Godly. Ooh, nice little weapon throw there, a little fake out. Love to see it always. Some little trickiness again. The tricky again. Hey, listen, he keeps doing that. I'll always be a fan. I remember the first time we ever saw that in tourney, it blew everyone's mind. It's cool. It, it'll it'll catch you off guard because you're so ready to react to attacks and things like that. But with right. weapon toss, great way to bait out a dodge. Downline's coming out from Delta. He has not been able to put out too much damage onto Godly. Another down air. Ground Ooh, pound. Ooh, beautiful. Godly, disengaged. Godly just able to make it back, though. I mean, he's an orange, and he's uh, very close to losing Ooh. that stock. Caught him on the That's dodge over weapon toss, and Delta perfect, perfect. takes it to final stocks, but can he do it again? Uh -oh. yeah, and is it enough? No, nope, it is definitely not enough. Godly, nice little three-piece to finish off game two and take the lead. A really good dodge read from Godly to close that one out. And now he's one game away from a guaranteed top three finish. 
Yep, this is it. I mean, every stock counts now. The closer we get to the final, the more important it is. I mean, these stocks just weigh way more than any other stocks in this tournament. When you get to the winner semifinal, every little bit counts. And Godly is just taking everything from Delta right now. All right, Delta. Final opportunity. Winner's bracket game for him. Godly already getting some good momentum. Delta with the hammer gets the neutral sig. Weapon Ooh, nice little weapon. He can't do more. It's not enough. Godly just was able to make it back, pick up his weapon. Nice. Oh, beautiful little down sig from Delta. Love it. Another Love it. one. He has not thrown out any down sigs in his previous games against and, Godly, and now, and now he's throwing <laughs> only down sigs. We got three in the first 30 seconds. I was happy with one. Now he's starting to throw out a little too many. But Godly, he's only getting these soft punishes, these side lights on the Delta. I do want to say, I mean, that down stick is a great option. You know, it covers a lot of area and it's quick. Yeah, nice little halo of damage. Goes for the scoop. Godly hits the recovery. Delta's unarmed. Opportunity here. Godly denies the weapon pickup. He's going to hit the neutral light, but doesn't make the swap immediately. Oh, big ground pound. Godly takes the first stock. He's back to the gauntlets. His damage build with the gauntlets have been impeccable, and that's why he wants to stick with it. Yeah, you know, I thought that he was going to be more of a... Uh, he really committed to that one. I thought he would stick on the axe a lot more, but uh, I think he's really vibing with those gauntlets. He's getting some good combos. He's getting some good reads off of him, and uh, Delta just hasn't been able to maneuver around Godly's gauntlets just yet. But while I say that, Delta takes... Uh, Godly's third stock and well, first, and um, it's pretty much right back in. Yeah, uh, a much more even looking game. Oh, good dodging from Delta. Had the movement momentum to get through that neutral, like get close enough for the hit. But Godly with those weapon tosses, halting these forward movements of Delta. You know, every time I think Delta has just got the read uh -oh. on Godly, Godly answers back with a massive axe string just like that. Oh, man. <laughs> Follows it up with a little unarmed side air. Still touches. Delta able to make it back. Man, Delta took so much punish off that wrong directional side signature. Yeah. Godly capitalized so huge, but still Delta able to survive on the second stock and the side Beautiful air. Beautiful side air. That'll clean it up. Heavy, heavy hits. Godly throwing away the axe, picking up those gauntlets. He's it's clear, clearly favoring the gauntlets. Clearly. For sure. That axe is just, it seems like, a finisher now for uh, for Godly. Ooh. Nice little weapon throw there, but Delta seen through it. So much great damage being built up by Godly. Multiple strings onto Delta, and Delta hits the neutral light, has the hammer. A stomp side air might not be enough from center stage. He's going to need a little bit more damage. <clears throat> Scoop up. Yeah, not quite. Godly just playing so well right now with the spacing oh gosh. and the timing. I mean, shout out to Delta as well. He is doing great. I mean, he, oh no. he's able to, I, I'm, oh. dude, I, you were trying I'm, to say so many nice I words. Was, I feel like he was doing so well. Nice things. He did. He was scrapping. He was like playing. I saw a lot more confidence from Delta in that last game. I saw a lot better spacing. I saw I saw it all, it just wasn't enough. And you know, that doesn't say anything about Delta, it says a lot about Godly though. Yeah. That is just the kind of player Godly is, despite Delta doing an amazing play in that last game, it wasn't enough. Yeah, Godly, just such a strong competitor. Every single time Delta started to look all right, like it was constantly Delta playing from the back foot, he would get a stock to even up, and then Godly's like, nope, doesn't matter, I'm yeah. gonna just hit the gas pedal again and get some more damage built up. Yeah, and you know, it's not easy to negate damage that quickly, right? Like, having a lead and keeping a lead is not that easy. Uh, great damage built up from Godly, though. 593 damage uh, put out from Godly versus the 371 from Delta. Yeah, big damage difference there. But average damage per engagement, not that much. 10, 10 difference just means a lot more engagements coming out of Godly over there. Lots of light attacks, too. 
Yeah. Delta really relying on the signatures. I feel like six out of those eight are probably down six in the last match. He, yeah, he definitely started to lean a <laughs> lot more into the signature kit, was hoping that was the thing that was going to bring him back. He even saw, like, there was a neutral sig he was charging up in hopes. And uh, I know a lot of people in the community and the Twitch chat and things like that have been saying they're rooting for the Tarosis. I've seen it on the uh, chat. You and, would uh, say that. Well, no, I like literally like every single time I look up there, it says like, let's go Taros. It literally they, says, let's go Rayman. just as I brought it up. <laughs> but they, there's a, a ticker chat. So if y'all are uh, talking with us, if you're tweeting at us, things like that, or Twitch chatting at us, then we can see it live. You can see it in the bottom down there. Yep, uh, that's from uh, It's Red Live saying, Godly, let's go Rayman. And if you want to be up there, did you mention? Hashtag BH Esports? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's for the Twitter. I think that's just raw Twitch chat. Oh, that's just raw Twitch chat. Yeah. Okay. I saw a little Twitch logo. Oh. Well, don't forget to chat or tweet at us. Yeah. Uh, if you do, hashtag BH Esports, we'll probably show your tweet down. Get to there. communicate. Or maybe yeah. up there. He isn't named Godly for no reason. I agree with you. Yeah. As, as a, a, a convert to the Church of Godly, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I. You know, if he picks up that Taros at any point, I think you're just going to be a complete <laughs> Godly fan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think I'm obligated we, at that point. Have we seen him on a Taros? Let's get some highlights. No. But let's let's check out these taros, uh, these highlights of this Taros as oh, well. Oh, dude, that was, yeah, that was a heartbreak there. Heartbreak. But, you know, shout out to Godly. He came back. Didn't let that, uh, you know, that was yeah, not a run. Him. Yeah, not at all. You see sometimes when that happens, they'll come back. They'll, like, face palm emo or something like that. Like, yeah. Just, oh, man, that's a goof. But Feels bad, man. He shook it off immediately and was like, all right, well, I still got this one. Man, just the, the forward flow from Godly, right? Like, he's constantly just pushing forward at Delta. He'll pull back when Delta starts to move forward and then immediately is right back on top of Godly. Yeah, and, it, and it's the perfect balance of being aggressive but not being over aggressive and not he like he knows when to dial it back so he's not getting punished for it yeah. which is pretty tough now you're seeing again like that forward flow right the nair yeah. and then he chases afterwards not with a chase dodge but with just raw movement but we're going in the next one akno versus the ninja 729 Ooh, definitely man. in favor of akno this, this is, is gonna be a good one this is two history people you can see the lifetime score eight in three of yep but pr difference pretty close pr6 versus pr1 um, I think in recent matchups, Akno has taken the leads. Uh, 11 gold medals, 4 silver medals, Ninja on 2 and 2, bronze and silver there. Both players do have around the same top 32 placements, so, you know, they have the experience. They've been going around, at it for a while now. Uh, is your pick Akno? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I mean, the Ninja 729 is looking really good today, but at the same time, it's Akno. I, again, I'll, uh, you, you can't discount Akno. Such a strong competitor. It's Akno on that Yumiko. Yeah, this is the thing that I think Sparky was talking about, where Akno's been trying out some other stuff. Ooh. It looks like it's going to be the Yumiko. We'll have the carryover of the bow from the Koji, but really, it's the big swing and hammer that I'm looking at. I've, I've got butterflies, dude. I'm just so excited to see the Ninja 729's cannon right now and see what he does against this Yumiko. And honestly, I think this is going to be a great matchup. It's so interesting that there's a real battle of like the stage control, right? Yeah. You see the Ninja 729 throws out those cannonballs trying to take a lot of airspace. Meanwhile, Akno, he's throwing out wisps for days just trying to take some space away from the Ninja 729. Right. Just kind of like zoning him out of the stage a little bit here and there. And this is, you know, complete opposite of what we've seen from the Ninja 729, right? That like jet field cannon that's been taking him all across the stage. And he loses his first stock right there. Big side air from the hammer from Akno. And now he's over to the bow, but it's the same game plan, right? Many down signatures. I think we're going to see a really oh, low signature wow. accuracy from Akno just because he's doing so many to try to take space. But, you know, I, I feel like once he got that Ooh. bow, beautiful reply from the Ninja 729. He says, I'm still in it. Um, once he, once Akno was on that bow, though, I feel like we saw much less signatures there. Yeah, that's it. you can see like the comfort in the bows for the hammer. He's got a very clear game plan. It's throw out the wisps and then try to follow up afterwards. I want I want to see more Akno bow. Um, you know the little the little bit that he had on that first stock. We saw that great Akno stage control, that presence. You know he was getting great reads, just running one side of the map to the other and picking up great recoveries. And I want to see how that plays against the Ninja 729's cannon. Uh, not just as a finisher. Yeah, but I yeah, mean, they, they definitely have a real potential to have two very strong air games with the bow versus the cannon, but uh, the ninja making the swap over to the sword. He's been doing a really good job getting inside of these wisps from oh. Akno, but he spot dodges in it. Akno doesn't follow up, but he hits the side <laughs> sig. Akno is just hitting these signatures left and right. He is not holding back. I mean, as, as few signatures as he used in his last match, he's making up for it tenfold right now. 
Yeah, I mean, he's, he's I think, basically beating everyone in terms of signature usages at this point. So many down six being thrown out, but that's indicative of the character, right? She yeah. does it for the stage control. But, you know, despite everything, they're still pretty much neck and neck. Yeah. And, and you're right, I think it's a real clever way of Akno to, to use those signatures to shut down Ninja 729's movement, right? Like, if there are these flame wisps everywhere on stage, you're not going to be able to do those combos and those aerial movements that you are if you have cannon. And the big thing is, like, you got to give a lot of credit to the Ninja 729 for knowing this matchup and not struggling. You can see he's only gotten hit by the wisp like two or three times. Really, he's been able to get inside of it or space outside of it just right. Yeah, seasoned professional. I mean, to be able to to hold your composure and hold your play style despite, you know, changing weapons and, and these kind of, I mean, just this amazing use of signatures. I'm a big fan of it, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're, you're a fan of the signature users. <laughs> D-Light down air. Uh-oh. Opportunity here, but the Wisps, and this is going to be a tough spot for the Ninja 729 trying to slip underneath it. The bow swap Beautiful down-light recovery. No weapon? Okay. He's a little got bit of weapon start. Yep. Ooh, Cider yeah, doesn't connect. Punish? Neither does the neutral sig. Who's going to take game one? It's so close right now. Akno able to pick up the weapon. Oh! Ooh. Off the wisps, Akno. He's like, you know what? I might miss 90% of these wisps, but if I hit one, I got the follow-up. Yeah, yeah, and beautiful hammer nair just to send off that first last stock of Ninja 729. This is going to be a close series, Duke. I, I am full well predicting that this is going to go to game five. I, I, you know what? I think if the Ninja 729 continues to show his comfort in this matchup, yeah. that we might see Akno make the swap. Really? Okay. Because, yeah. I, I mean, again, like, Akno's throwing out a lot of wisps, but at the end of the day, they're not really hitting, and the Ninja 729 is doing a really good job getting inside of it. But yeah. here's here's my opinion, right? I don't think they're meant to hit. Well, yeah. I think they're, he's using them as zoning, and I don't see why any of these players would want to switch right now. They're obviously having a little bit more trouble than we've seen in the previous matches. But that just goes to show the quality of player at this stage of the game. I found the stat. 41 signatures used in last game. 17% <laughs> accuracy, though. 17% uh, accuracy. Yeah. 41. It, it, we, I, I am going to find out what the record is for uh, <laughs> most signatures used in a match. What's the eSports world record? Yeah. Signature and then I will try and break that record in ranked. All right. So far, though, relatively even. Akno goes for the neutral signature. That oh, could be fatal, beautiful. but it bounces off the stage. Oh, Look at that! What? A weapon throw across the stage. Getting I've never seen that. Pinballed all I've, directions. Yeah. Oh. I mean, this is Just beautiful Yumiko play. Yumiko mains, take note. Oh, he's spot dodging inside of it. He's getting caught more and more. Akno finding more momentum again. The Ninja 729 with his spot dodges. Relentless with those signatures. That count is going way up. That recovery though. Down like that. recovery to the take the stock. But Ninja's already in the yellow right now, and it's not going to be much more until he's in the red. There's those cannon things, but Akno knowing exactly when to dodge. We were talking about those perfect dodges. This is when he needs it the most. Yeah, I mean, that's the tough thing uh, for the cannon players out there is that there aren't that many true combos. Sure, you've got the downline to set up into a couple, but when you're hitting side lights predominantly, you can't go for those true follow-ups. Akno with the oh, turnaround punish. Beautiful oh, patience from Akno. This is again. You can fly over those, and you see Akno is using that side signature to get out of dodge. Throws away the bow, though, waiting for the hammer spawn. It's on the right side. He'll pick it up. Wisps up immediately. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot more stage control from Ninja 729, and I love it. This is what I want to see. I want him to, to just dominate the center of the stage right now, shut down Akno, and then Akno can go zone the edges of the, the, the map all he wants, because Ninja 729 is in the middle. The ground pound beating out the neutral signature. The Ninja 729 finding that spacing. Side stick thrown out. Ninja with just the punish. wake up, Sigs, left and right. Swapping over to the sword. Wants a D-Light into the recovery. Gets past the Wisps. Wisps again. Did he? I think he went right through two of them. Beautiful stomp side air. It's enough. Ninja 729 on his last stock. What's Akno going to choose? Sticking with the bow for now. Oh, ground pound. Finish it. Oh, doesn't hit the down air. Akno goes for the turnaround. No. Oh, the down. That was on the stage. Unfortunately, the soft platform, that likely would have been a ground pound. Yeah. Soft platform kind of got in the way of that one. Ninja. 
Needs to get this KO off of Akno and he'll find it with the side air. All right, sticking with the cannon, likely. Yep, just wants to delay the next weapon spawn for a little while. Nice, nice. Hey, Got the dodge hey, there. there it Chase is. Dodge off. Doesn't go for the immediate side air, though. Yeah, showing him a little bit of respect off stage there, and I think he knows he didn't want to overextend right now, especially when you're down a game. You gotta play a little more safer, especially if you want to take that double. But, you know, I uh, I enjoyed seeing that. Yeah. That was the longest string we've seen from Ninja729 right now against Akno. It was some good life. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he had to make sure Akno was disarmed. Akno did not let Ninja get away with that with a weapon at all. Yeah. And I doubt he's going to. Well, in he, this he's disarmed five. himself again. He's definitely looking for the bow. The Ninja729 was trying to deny, but it's back to the bow game. Good movement from the Ninja729. There's the Wisp. Ninja immediately trying to space just outside of it. He's gotten the spacing down. Charged up. Not going to do much. Oh, turn around. Oh! oh beautiful so read. No. The offstage D-Light into ground pound. Sends him just far enough that he's unable to make it back. Agno taking game two with relative ease, but it's a best of five. Yep, there's always one more game. Yeah. Uh, best of five, and you're seeing the damage being wow. done. The Ninja 729 keeping it close. 32 to 31 damage per engagement. Like, that was very close, and it's just that, that last burst at the very end where Akno with the unarmed D-like ground pound was able to close it out. I mean, there's like 15 oh. damage separates them. A ridiculously close match. Snap, Akno kicking it off with the bow play. Again, back to the Wisps. Yeah, this is, I, I feel like, you know, however which way this goes, you know, the 2-0 just doesn't do it justice to how evenly oh. matched. Beautiful! Do it again. Oh, no, <laughs> oh, no. That was your oh, recovery! No. Unfortunate. You saw the beautiful double D-SIGs over there, but just unable to make it back. Akno just reading through it. Yeah, and Akno, he's now got a massive lead with how close the last two games have been. Getting that early KO is huge for Akno, but the Ninja 729 with the offstage three dares, and he's able to clean it up. Yeah, right back into it. Game three, huh, he's got just enough time to make it back if he wants to push it to game five, but he's got to do a reverse at this point. You know what? I think he can do oh. it. There's all, I mean, these have been such insanely close games. There's always that possibility, but Akno finding a lot of momentum with this hammer, the Ninja 729 giving respect to the Wisps again. Akino just, I mean, I mean, this just makes me want to play Yumiko. I'm going to go home and I'm just going to hop on and <laughs> do, do down sig. Yeah, just down sig, <laughs> down sig to I the flat. Akino got caught. Ninja was just inside of it. Oh, a beautiful little read there. Akino not able to get the third one. Nice but weapon toss. Ninja 729 shutting him down. Really, really using those weapon throws now, which we haven't seen a lot of. I mean, they're really good in specifically this matchup. Good neutral light pickup onto Akno. Can almost finish this off. Doesn't hit the down air, though. Oh, no. And we've oh, seen no. we've seen this time and time again. If Ninja729 doesn't okay. connect, he gets punished by Akno offstage. Yeah, that was that was definitely scary. Akno's offstage unarmed is shown to be a very real yeah, threat. Just ridiculously good. But yeah, you know, we were talking so much about um, Ninja729 using those weapon throws as part of his kit, and I feel like we just haven't seen that here. And, you know, you're right, maybe it is a little bit of a, a you know, counter-specific thing, but I want to see more of it. And uh, and is it going to be enough, though, to, to beat Akno's just relentless down six? I think it could be a really good tool, though, because, like, if you put him into hit stun, those whiffs go away. So if you're yeah. approaching with those weapon tosses, like, it's it's not exactly what the Ninja 729 normally does with his weapon tosses, but it could be a really good tool. All right, basically even. Ninja 729 with a slight leap. Gets underneath the wisp again, goes for the weapon toss up, swaps over to the sword, goes for the anchor, was reading big, but he found the wrong book in the library. Ninja 729 holding on and actually slightly in the lead right now. Game three. Both players playing super carefully now. Downlight recovery is not enough to send to Akno. Disarms though. Ooh, the side air follow up, not enough. Akno really wants that nice recovery or a side air to, to just confirm. And you know, one big hit, one big signature from Akno is going to end Ninja 729's stock as well. So they both players got to be... The offstage, the offstage. Who passed. Akno did not connect there. That was scary, though. The ground pound could have done it. That hammer recovery, hammer ground pound could have done it. Ninja 729 
Citra right. decent. Citra oh, decent. He got underneath it. Weapon toss. Look how far it launched him. Acto so damaged. Ninja oh, the recovery no, though. The scoop. The oh, he makes it back. He didn't no. touch. Oh wow. Ninja seven two nine was dancing around everything Ooh. except the one thing that he needed to get close to the wall. And unfortunately, <laughs> Acno is gonna take it three zero over the Ninja seven two nine. That was a great. That was a great best of five, right? Yeah. There. I mean, a three zero. And, uh, you know, all memes aside, close, though, right? Yeah. Like, the 3-0 scoreline definitely doesn't do justice to Ninja 729's gameplay there. He played amazing. Great cannon work, especially against Akno's just zoning signature usage. I don't know what it's called. I'm going to have to make a word for it. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. just Akno played amazing, and so did Ninja 729. I mean, the 3-0 just does not do justice for it. Though. Yeah, I, I want to give so much credit to the Ninja 729. Like, that is not an easy matchup to play. Damage he played leader. it so well. Yeah, he, he had the huge damage. Like, uh, that, that first stock, right? Akno kind of stole that first stock out. Yeah. And even that last stock, it was Ninja 729 with a damage advantage. Like, there's such a real possibility of, of him closing that out. Yeah. Well, you know, this is the winner's semifinal, Duke. So all this means is Ninja729 is going down to the loser's bracket. He is not out. So we still are going to see a lot more from him. Akno moving on to the winners, which pretty expected, to be honest. Um, you know, I was kind of... I don't, I don't think Akno is going to go anywhere. I, I mean, if he's going into loser's bracket, he's going in pretty late. Um, but at this point, it's... Uh, it's a given, right? And, you know, seeing a lot of support from the community as well for Ninja. You know, he played great. He did. Yeah. I want to see a lot more of that, too. I, I'm excited to see a lot more in Ninja 729. And we get to see a little bit more because it'll be highlights of yeah. that match that we yeah, just yeah. saw. Great match. I mean, there's just plays on plays. I wonder what they chose here. Yeah, I want to see which ones they thought in the back room. Is this the one where he didn't balls? touch? No. no. Nice little stomp side air. And, you know, again, you know, that's something... At this stage, if you don't have your stomp side airs down, if you're not hitting them as close as possible, you know, oh, you're not going to make it this one. far. Oh, this was good. There were so many times where Akno was going for that recovery off of the uh, the Wisps and then tried to follow up. He didn't quite have those follow-ups down, but you can see the idea behind all of those. All right, again, you see the Wisps, and then he just goes for the clean Nair. That's what I kind of want to see from him if he's going to play this Yumiko more, is go for just, like, that clean follow-up of the Nair instead of going for that recovery into the style. Oh, this was a great air. one. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, the little ping-pong arcade table all the way from one end to the other. But, yeah, you know, having those just basic clean moves, whether it's a Nair or a Sair, you know, it's so important, and uh, it, it, it just fills out your kit a lot more. But I will say, all of that being said, and I know, I know we have... We have some um, differences on this opinion, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love seeing that signature play. You know, it's, he used it so well, so smart, and there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with using a lot of signatures if you're using them well. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Akno had a very clear game plan. It makes a lot of sense with how the character works and the move set, oh. um, and it's, it's just. Uh, it's also interesting to see the way that it gets played around, right? Like the yeah. 79 being able to really space around it when he was doing it properly. Right. Um, in that last one, 31%, or sorry, 31 six used, 13% accuracy. But on that note, we have two people in the winner's final. We're still finding the final people to be in the loser's side of top eight. That's going to do it for our block. We're going to go to a short little break. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Kaya, what's got you down? I just lost a match. What did I do wrong? Let's talk battle strategies. I'll bet my friend here has some advice. Ah, snake eyes! Give him the old one-two. Yeah! Call your animal companion. Thanks, snake eyes. Any more friends with good advice? Ninjas are everywhere, Kaya. Isn't that right, Storm Shadow? Oh, Storm Shadow! Watch your feet. Don't blink. He slices and dices. So many ways to win. And now I know. And knowing his half the ah, Animal Companion!
I've got this one. <laughs> hey. Guys, we're getting better at this, guys. 10 seconds, no pressure. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Why are you so good at this? <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to top eight of the Omen Oasis Championship, where we take a trip to the lower side of bracket. There's still a lot of incredible talent left, quite a few upsets that have happened throughout the day, and they're still continuing to possibly go here as we see Godly make the attempt at a 2P and a bunch of other great things happening, much like this TriCast, because it's hey. not just me at Flambo this time. We get to grab apparently my father, who was telling me I look like this <laughs> child between this. Sparky, how's it going? And I'm going to give you a little piece of fatherly advice here, Ajax. Make sure to enter into Twitch chat, exclamation point Omen. Uh -oh. That is O-M-E-N, four simple letters that will give you a link. You'll find a QR code there for a giveaway in order to get the Omen Oasis avatar. Follow all the direction there. That's going to hook you up. Make sure to do that real quick while we're talking because then once those games start, you really want to be paying attention to those games on this stream, on the other stream. Actually, the other stream is probably done right now. It's all on this stream, but keep <laughs> your eyes peeled on that for tomorrow, twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla. But now we're on the bottom side of top eight. Now, normally Foda is in on this block, and I'm not in on this block, so we get to see the real stakes here coming in. You lose here, you're knocked out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. No, I have to say, like, up to this point, right, we've seen some killers come in, do their best, get knocked out, right? I mean, earlier, we saw some crazy sets on the winner's side where, you know, obviously the losers of those sets had to go somewhere, and now we're gonna see, do they have a second shot? Or, alternatively, is this where the road kind of ends for them? So, yeah, I mean, one of those matches we were talking about before with the like the surprises, Swada going down 3-0 to Godly, and then actually took out Machete in the top nine. Didn't even get top eight. That was for ninth place. Swada oh, versus Machete. That is crazy to just give a little story of how things are going here. And we're going to be seeing Swada up against Wave God. This is going to be an interesting one. The other set we have queued up ready to go right now is looking like one of them is going to be Sarm and then the winner of Fozy versus Heisen. That is going on outside of top eight. But like you mentioned, we are starting with Swada versus Wave God. You see it on the screen right there. Now, we've seen a lot of very high stats today. Swada, even though he is the world champion currently for EU, still has some more humble stats compared to like your simple, mm. Compared to your Akno, and that's going to be even more of a thing once we see Wave God's stats up here. There you can see they really, they've both been around for quite some time, but don't have a lot of history against one another. It's just that 2 0 lifetime score on the top. Yeah, and just you talk about the history too, both of them being here quite a bit at top 32, but Swada really breaking through a lot at the end of last season, coming out on top with the international championships. But at the start of the season, it's been the story of Godly, who was the one who put him into lower side of bracket, and Swada definitely wants that type of rematch to get back into it. Definitely one of the people you, if you were predicting, Swada being in your top three is just an incredibly safe choice. I feel like Wave God's going to have a very uh, aggressive Swada coming at him because we saw that earlier, that That's match. True. They were swinging. That comeback, dude. Oh, man. Swada, like, I feel like this could be one of the best matches we've seen today because it seems like the story of this tournament has been player who has long established history of doing extraordinarily well versus player who, like, makes it pretty far sometimes, mm -hmm. and then player who makes it pretty far sometimes just deciding to really turn things up and come out on top. And that's going to be Wave God going into this one. So I really hope he got the chops for loading up into Mammoth Fortress for game one. Let's get it popping. Now we have Wave God coming in here. The endurance is going to be the biggest question for Wave God. Swada, we've seen him get this deep and go way deeper. Wave God, though, in losers round one, has to play this set, another set, another set, another set, and then a fifth set if he wants to get into grand finals, where he might even have to play another set. Yeah, the difficult portion of getting knocked into lowers early is having to make that deep run, like you were saying, stamina mattering so much, and Swada being so aggressive. But you do have a story with the guitars and the sword, able to box just the same. We're seeing a 
slightly sore swat of a Grizz and trying to go for oh, a big man. call on the side. And it's going to be Wave God getting the first KO. Yeah, you have to be careful with those gravity cancels off the stage, right? We saw the gravity cancel bear come out, and Wave God was like, oh, word. I'm going to go ahead and get this Katara Sayer to confirm my KO since you made an ill advised decision. So we're going to be looking for Swata to kind of maybe dial things back just a little bit and make sure that if he's going to rip that gravity cancel, that it's worth it. If he plays a little bit too aggressively and too quickly, I mean, we have Wave God who can basically beat him in frames on either weapon. He's either going to tie him if it's sword v. sword, or he's going to beat him if it's Katars mm -hmm. v. anything, or sword v. hammer. So I think Wave God, if he, if he has control on how defensively he wants to play, if he can handle Swata, he has a really good choice, specifically with this Asuri pick, to do well. He already started off strong, already has Swata in the orange, or at least the later stages of yellow on this second stock. Coming out unarmed, he's bringing some pressure too. Not even a weapon spawn on the field. <laughs> And he's going to even turn around that signature, so Wave God feeling himself. Exactly, as you should be, too. And you can see Wave God's almost trying to condition fear early into Swata. We saw the same behavior with Delta before with a lot of early signatures, but with that frame data check that you can put on the Swata, all those whiff punishes could equal a big side sync from the Katars, but it doesn't even matter right now because D-Light Recovery is pretty much going to take it out anytime soon. As we see one right there, it's going to take it out off the top. Yeah, I feel like if I'm Swata, I'm a little bit concerned. Just because I feel like Wave God is playing extraordinarily confident right now. He's going for these plays. He's going for these gravity cancel D lights. They're connecting. He just got a double recovery, and he shows no signs of slowing down. If I'm Swata, I'm deaf shook. He's not struggling to KO whatsoever. He already got the first stock, already got the second stock. You see the lead he has on Swata's final stock as well. Even if the stocks were the same, damage is favoring Wave God here. His lack of Whoa. consistency to kill is not a problem that he's having with Katars. He's playing extremely well with his sword. His signature usage is hit or miss, but he hasn't made any fatal mistakes so far that Swata has really capitalized on. So game one, Wave God looks incredible, but there's a D like D Sig that Swata wants to throw out there. Not only taking that stock, but definitely bringing himself back in this, getting some of that momentum back on his side. I, you a little, they, I, I saw the smirk come out of there when he saw the D sick. He was like, hey, dude, he's, <laughs> he's been throwing side six on sword all day, and I've just been waiting for the D sick. Oh man, but this is when things start to get tough a little bit. If you are Wave God, you got all this damage racked up. You need the final blow, delay recovery. That's going to be your ticket into a game two with a one game lead. But Swata has the hammer, and look where he's sitting, everybody. You know what he wants to do. And you cannot fall asleep on that either. How many times so far today we've seen a very comfortable lead in favor of someone, and then Hammer says no. And that's exactly what Swata's looking for. Delight recovery is not going to be off the top just yet, but that's Big Sarah trying to go for another one, putting that pressure off stage. Wave God's just in the orange. He hasn't caught too many stomps there so far. It's mostly been Swata playing a little bit slower, trying to find his moment. We did see that second, second stomp side air, but Wave God into the orange. It's really not going to take anything. He can blow nice. on that stock, and it is gone. There it is. Game one goes to Wave God. Started off incredibly strong, then started to falter a little bit towards the end. No, I have to say that unarmed neutral light at the end was like the perfect option to go for there. We saw the dodge get burned. We saw the recovery get burned. So all we had to mix up was like a couple jumps, maybe, if at that. So it was like, you know what? I'm going to put this meaty hitbox out right in this zone. And if you can't get past it, that's going to be your stock gun. I think a majority of that was just the dominant control that Wave God had. You were talking about how confident Wave God was playing. Had Temple the entire time. Was able to really outpace Swato when it came to the mid-range game. And I think that's a big reason why we're seeing Miami don't now they're trying to have access to those platforms a little bit more uh, you know, change up the like, the safety landings that you have but also you can put some pressure on with those hammers on the platforms too mm -hmm. i mean even taking a look at the way this is starting off we see waveguard kind of stuck in the corner a little bit manages to get back on stage with an air and then immediately gets hit by the retaliation from swata swata definitely seeming a little bit more content to try to hold center stage bait out some movement options and just play some classic hammer stomps there's way to victory Seeing the dodge circles coming out on the right side. It's both kind of going back and forth until just now. Wave God starting to find some momentum his way, but both of them are reasonably nice. damaged. That recovery turned Wave God from orange to red. I believe Swata is red as well after that side light. So they're basically just jockeying back and forth. Neither one of them has major pole position on who is going to get this first stock, though Swata does have the weapon advantage. Wave God is not going to tunnel vision towards the weapon. Swata is going to push up past the weapon spawn, find the side air for that KO. Look at very simple S the way he was covering that ledge earlier. Mm -hmm. That's something we were complimenting Simple a lot, and his ability to just control that space at the ledge, and Wave God just could not get by it. He does finally get access to guitars, gets this air, pushing that deep pressure off, but this is still... I, I think I think Wave God still looks really good even after getting that hit, and he's been able to keep it simple, but Flambo, 
What is it about that first game that you want to see Wave God just like pull back to be able to establish a dominant lead like before? Well, it seemed like in the previous game, Wave God, we were talking about that confidence he was exhibiting earlier, right? He was just going for plays and it was connecting. Now, granted, of course, Swata is no slouch. He's not just going to sit there and let you walk all over him, but you need to make sure that if you get your hit, you cash it out to the bank. Right there, he got a nice three hit conversion off of a dodge, right? That's exactly what you want to see. You want to make sure if you catch the dodge, especially, that you're getting the most bang for your buck. But on top of that, wow, that was a beautiful anti air reverse end life from SWAT. I just had to point that out. That was crazy. Now, we are seeing some Katars come out from Wave God here towards the end of last game and the beginning of this game. It was mostly Sword, but with these Katars coming out, he's done a decent job of finding his way in and then getting himself out before he takes too much punishment. But the average damage per move is really not going to favor him here. He's going to have to find those three pieces, the four Whoa. pieces, the extended momentum strings, exactly like he's finding right now if he wants to compete with this hammer. And now all of a sudden he's tied it up. Sheesh. That's a whole 10 piece combo with the coupon, just like cashing out every single bit of that string, able to take that. And you were talking about that damage difference. Wave God just kept the composure. And this is against Swata of all people. This is somebody you expect to be at the top, does get the Sarah to be able to close it out. But I, I am incredibly impressed by Wave God's play so far. Now I'm saying, man, this is a world champion, right? This is a BCX winner right there on the other side of that screen, but Wave God just kind of, you know, waving his way through, man, looking like Johnny Tsunami, the way he's coasting a coast all off of those waves right now, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know, honestly. I feel like Wave God, despite the fact that he's falling behind a little bit in damage in this game, I think he'll be able to bring it back. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely agree. You can see just trying to play around the mid range, but is currently unarmed, staring down the face of uh, Swata with hammer on access. This is incredibly scary. Whoa. Tries to wait it out, does Whoa. get the deer, keeps that pressure on here, Sparky. He just immediately goes over to the wall. He's nervous where he is right now. He had the lead, tied it up, now has fallen behind in oh this. Gosh. Swata has the hammer in hand. Wave God knows it's not going to take much. I didn't even think the dare would do it. But it does, and Swata takes the game. The seed discrepancy between these two players, Swata seed one, Wave God seed 24, that's huge. Absolutely insane, and that's pretty much been the story of Omen Oasis so far. The amount of upsets, the just the ability to, just everybody at the start of 2022 has been coming out swinging. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to get their name out there as we see a switch over to Apocalypse. This. We had incredible sets earlier where everybody was just boxing out, no slow play. We're getting that again, Flambo, as we get into game number three. And I'm a little bit more worried for Wave God. I was saying I want to see that confidence come back, but the confidence seemed to have found its way to Swata instead. I mean, he just threw out the bear again, so you know he's starting to feel himself. We saw at the end of that last game that Wave God didn't know what to do. He was just swinging, 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 and Swata was like, I'm going to wait, I'm going to down air. That's the game, right? So we really need Wave God to dial it back a little bit, you know, take a breath of fresh air and say, okay, hold on, let me regather myself, recollect. The hammer focus from Swata is so Jeez. good this game. He's already taken off the first stock, not letting Wave God get any time to collect. But if you look at the amount of time he held the hammer last game, it was 71% of the game that he held that hammer. He's got to get Swata uh -oh. off of that hammer as much as he possibly can. He's still in dangerous territory here, even though he doesn't have a lot of damage on this second stock. Wave God, he's, he's in dangerous territory of going down again. If Swata gets the momentum on his side, that's the biggest thing I'm worried about. Yeah, you do not want to be looking at a three stock to one deficit, especially with that hammer like you were mentioning. One of the best in the business at converting off a hammer consistently is Swata. But you see Wave God getting pressure deep off stage, almost getting connected on by the dare. Going to get a recovery. It's still not enough off the top. And one of those things that I am worried about is I have many a time seen in a tournament set where the lower seeded player starts off with a dub against the higher seeded player. And then after that, the higher seeded player just kind of gets the download. They see that's what's going class. on. That's a skill. And that's then a they class. just yeah. clean it up. And I'm wondering if that's going to be swatted this time around. You have to have that skill set when you've reached that point at the top. You have to be able to adjust post game one because you are sometimes exposed to things you don't see be, like too often. Like Smarky was mentioning before, they've only fought each other twice mm -hmm. before. So you don't have all of that history. And this is also the first dosage of a Surrey we've seen on stream today. That's true. So might not have had a lot of that running into in the bracket so far. Starting to even things slowly, but the stop there is going to take that out. Only in the orange, still doable, but not looking too good. This is looking like exactly what Flambeau just laid out. How many times have we seen a game one go the way of the lower seeded Ooh. player, and then all of a sudden at the end of it, it's a 3-1, because the higher yeah. seeded player just came back and bodied. All they needed was that four to four and a half minutes to get the complete 
complete understanding of what their lower seated opponent does. It's so impressive to watch every single time, seeing somebody at this skill level continue to do that. Swata is just continuing to cruise with the lead. Delight Recovery getting some extra damage on. Still possible wow. once again for Wave God to do it, but Swata, the, the adjustments are there. You can see it, and it is get, it, it's going to only get better for wow. Swata as it goes on. Does take out the stock. Is it still doable? Possible. It is last stock apiece. No, this is true, and especially Katars are a weapon that have, by and large, kind of fallen out of the meta a little bit this time around. So I feel like for Swata, it's also just like, oh man, I haven't played against this weapon in a little while. But despite that, like, still holding center stage extraordinarily well, got himself a free stomp there, looking for another one. He says, you know what? I want this game to be over. Can Wave Dog clutch it up? He only has maybe room for one mistake, if even. Wave God has to be praying for that hammer to somehow fall out of Swata's hands. Either he throws it away, he gets disarmed. None of those things are going to happen. Middle of the stage, stomp, side air, gets the KO. And we are going to a game four. It is now definitely in Swata's favor, 2-1. I gotta think that a 3-1 is yeah, coming. I know. I, man, <laughs> I, after boat. that first game, I didn't want to see it, but now I think it's just inevitability. I'm gonna remain eternal optimist because okay. I, I, I want to see it because some something that has been a pretty consistent theme so far is we've had some incredible upsets. Now, do we see a game Three, five push? That's two, gonna be pretty difficult, one, but we're gonna cut off a lot of the room to work with here. I don't know too much about going to here because Swata really loves trying to pressure people off stage, but you were talking about it. But with the Qatars, you have the access to be able to go off and go for those deep plays. I think that this is one of those times where Wave God is be looking to try and pull out that extra trick they've been holding on to all set. No, I have to agree, and I also think Asuri, right? You have that dunk in the end thing on the Qatars. It's going to prove extraordinarily useful on a stage like this where there isn't a whole lot of wall. But on top of that, I think Wave God kind of fell into a bad habit of trying to do these slide charge sigs off the platforms of Miami Dome. So I think this is also a little bit of a wake-up call for himself to say, I don't have that trick to use anymore. I don't want to bait myself into doing that. Let me try something else. Also, when we were on Miami Dome, we saw Wave God kind of retreat over to the safety of the wall, and we didn't see too much offstage engagement from either of them. So that was that was really Wave God's safe space. He doesn't have that nearly as much on this mm -hmm. map. You see how tiny those walls are. So he just kind of has that one flat area to try and deal with Swata. And as we can see so far, he's not. You know he's bummed that the ground pound did not send over the corner. It got the bounce and didn't lead to a KO. And Swata just keeps going to work. More damage being added up. Weapon and advantage here. He isn't too focused on keeping that weapon away from Wave God, but I guess Wave God's not even focused on getting the weapon himself. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, it's, at first it seemed like a weapon start, but actually it was just Wave God not even deciding to go for it, almost trying to be like, I'm not going to be so obvious as to go for the weapon, but Swata said, I have a lead. I don't need to approach you, so there's no reason for me to have to deal with this right now. It's Looking a little bit grim here. I was remaining the eternal, eternal optimist. Realism starting to set in a bit as we're looking at deep into red here. Oh man, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Yeah, Swata picks up that D-Light recovery because in the same vein that we've seen the 3-1 happen like this many a times, this is normally how game four also looks like, right? The most convincing game in the set so far. Now, I think Wave God can bring it back, but Swata is just playing so well. He's made all the adjustments necessary, and Wave God is having a tough time finding a way in with those guitars. It looks like the gravity cancel sidelight has been his most successful option, but that's risky because you got to burn a dodge for it. I think it's just one of those moments where like pull up, oh, like like go deep. for the big play, just the whole bright. But I mean, Wave God, you never know. You get that one good edge guard off of the off of a follow up stock, and all of a sudden we're going to a game five. Oh, but he's just throwing these down six out, man. It seems like he's he's just struggling to find anything he can in the moment. A GCD stick in the middle of the stage. Okay. I don't even know if that would KO, depending on where you actually pick it up. He does find the stock, but he's very damaged. I don't remember which weapon Swatter will be grabbing next. It is the sword. Okay, so that means, oh, big punish opportunity potentially Ooh. tries to go for a read. If it was a dunk, maybe that could have been it. But instead, we get a reversal here. No dodge on Wave God. It should be back by this time. Doesn't get it back in time. He actually gets clipped by the sidelight there, and that's going to be it. Swata putting it in writing in stone, saying this is going to be another one of those 3 1 sets. You can have one, tell your mom about it, but that's all you get. The writing was eventually along the wall, man, and you were correct. I tried, I tried, I was hoping, but it's just the consistency of Swata. BCX yep. champion Absolutely. for a reason, and Absolutely. after getting knocked in to literally the person who won Winters, yep. nobody's gonna be having a good time in Lower's bracket right now. So this is still a landmark placement for Wave God. Mm -hmm. He tweeted earlier today, top eight, long time no see. He also tweeted, it's, uh, let's see, I pulled it up right here, Spring Wave is back.
guys, as in the Spring Wave God, referring to a previous Spring Championship in 2021 where he got fifth place. He's not going to quite meet that just yet, but still, he made it into top eight. That's incredible for someone who is C24 going into this one. Look Something it. you were alluding to before. Yeah, I can see the pain in you. You said the amount of times that Wave God was going for slide GC Sigs off stage to try and go for a big play. Eight and none connected. And for Swata, he was up, so it's kind of worth it to go for those just for the, mm -hmm. the sake of if you overcommit, I get a big punish here. But Wave God just could not connect. Because at least, you know, for Swata, it's like, okay, you put out three, you miss three. Mm -hmm. That's one in stock. Fine. But, like, if you're a Wave God, bro, you just, woo, wah, wee, <laughs> monkey, wah. You know, it's like, bro, it's... It did not hit, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. Wave God was trying. Some of the SIGs hit in some of the previous games. It's not like they were all misses. We saw the GC down SIG on Sword get some mileage out of Wave God, but it, because like something worked once, I think he was like, all right, well, I'm gonna do it again because it worked. And it was like, well, it is what it is, I guess. An incredibly tough situation for Wave God. Still stellar play today, but we're moving on to the next one. This is going to be one of my picks Fozy up against Sarme. This would be an interesting one. Sarme has been taking some names today. If yes. we look back at what he did in the bracket here, he ended up taking out Seijuru. That was a 3-1 top eight loser side qualifier match. 3-1 okay. on that after what we saw from Seijuru today. Very impressive. Yeah, Seijaru is looking incredible from what we saw earlier to the point where I forgot that Seijaru actually lost the knees because I thought that they won. Yeah. But to continue that run through, Lusa, I believe, took out Blaze in lowers uh, as well. And then running into Sarme, who's the one who ended up shutting it down after all that. But Fozy out here with the, the Rayman. We've seen a whole lot of that of late. You're talking about the pick. What is it about Fozy that you still have some, some hope in to be able to make that deep run? I just remember back to 2019. I was going to say, yes, old school. 2019 Fozy. Honestly, seeing Knees today do well uh, yeah. was also giving me huge 2019 vibes. I was wondering if we were going to see 2019 Knees today, 2019 Fozy today. I know Fozy has it in That's the facts. tank. He isn't the player who brings it out and banks top threes every time, but we have seen him take people out in the past. We've seen him at least get this far today. And, I mean, even his set against Akno earlier, there were some True. incredibly close games. We've honestly seen that from several people who have gone up against Akno today. Even if the bleed. even if the overall <laughs> set count wasn't like, hey, yo, this is uh, these are close. You look at each individual game, extremely close. Last stock right on so many of them. Man, I got to say, though, like, I mean, you were saying he can bleed, and I'm like, how much blood he got, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, like he, there's a lot. There's, like, a pool all over the floor he, somehow. He doesn't let them often because Acto sporting those 11 first places, like, that That it, the, that was something we'd normally look at this bracket and go, okay, Acto's just going to walk away with it, but not now. EU is completely changed, man. And if you want to uh, let us know how you feel about these matches so we get ready to get into Fozy versus Sarman, make sure you go ahead and use the hashtag BHESports on Twitter so you can pop up right above my head right there so I can turn around rapidly to see it. Uh, GG Swata. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, true. So uh, this is going to be a good one. Once again, you're talking about the return of Fozy, and I would love to see it because I love one, seeing people four. return to form as we get in the game the one here on Mammoth. Now, if we're looking at sets between these two, if you look at community tournament sets, it's heavily favored Fozy from 8 to 2. If you look at just official tournaments, they've only met one time, Ooh. and Sarm won that, and that was the Europe Mammoth Cup in 2020. So these two have not run up against one another in quite some time, and I believe they were on different characters. Uh, it looks like Fozy reported an Ember. Wow. Sarm didn't report anything. So wildly <laughs> different characters in a different meta at a different period of, of time. And now we have Fozy rocking the Olgrim, who, like, Olgrim's come in and out of meadow, right? Like, he's been super popular and then kind of disappears for a little bit. Whenever Rocket Lance becomes relevant again, that's when he starts to make his little appearance. And he always had a pretty great Axe signature kit. He's been nerfed a couple of times in the past, but he still proves to be a staple. Wow! I was going to be so hit. mad if that did. I was going <laughs> to be furious. Ah, so deep. Here we go. Looks like they're going to be playing the game a little bit off the side of the stage here. Fozy trying to find a way in, get some weapon throw. Not going to be able to convert off of that, though. But it's getting to that point where you can start going for that Ogrim down sig, man, on that axe. It'll slice you. Oh, I was about to say, if you got the back to back left, right, I was about to flip. Yeah, getting the reversals <laughs> over and over again. The weapon toss should be enough to do it. It is going to take him out on the bottom, but this is very even. And just so far, they are both, once again, swinging. There is no passive play. You're not going to be running too far away from Rocket Lands uh, like on a regular basis, but Sarme's pressure 
with what we've seen from Koji and just the other Sulip characters so far today with the Mordex has been absurd. He is entirely about making you feel as uncomfortable as possible at all times today. We'll yeah. see what happens as this weapon spawn comes in. Sarmin's able to grab it quickly. It is the sword. Wow. We saw a lot of good bow work. Nice <laughs> yeah. GCD sig to get back onto the platform. That was a little bit disrespectful. You thought you were done with me? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Say, no, we're throwing hands all day, baby. The wake up from all the way over there. Fozy probably Ooh. did not expect that. A rare neutral signature oh. from the axe and then a drop on the D-Light ground pound that from hurt. Fozy. And he's going to fall. That hurt, man. Like that That's hurt one of those. every way possible. Because <laughs> usually, usually when people miss the, the D-Light ground pound, usually they're too close to the inside and then they pass. But he like overshot it and went on the other side. So he was even further away from the stage and he ended up losing his stock for it. Yeah, now you gotta recover from that. You do have the ability to get the KO. Pretty simple if you can catch him on a whip, especially with that right there, catching him on recovery, trying to push at the ledge. But Sarm is just playing mid-range, playing center stage, saying, absolutely not. You gotta get into my zone. You gotta deal with these D-lights and Ooh. just racking up that damage. Still not enough off the side. This bow is doing a really good job of handling Fozy's lance. Those weapon tosses were impressive. There's the ground pound right on the edge. Picks it up so easy and the game is done. Such a clean reversal right there. For Sarmi, too, you're up with stock. You have been con kind of controlling the offstage play, especially after you saw that whiff before mm -hmm. from the attempted ground pound. It's in your head. It's like, well, they, you know, he might not be as confident going for this. And if he messes up, I'm going to punish him for it. That's exactly what we saw at the end there. That, that That's unfortunate, man. Just too misplays from Fozy costing him a lot there. Like, I'm not even like, you know, okay, he lost that game, but I'm like, if you're able to clean it up in game two, like, it could look so different. Oh, yeah. Like, I hope he doesn't take it too much to heart because, like, aside from that, those games were looking fairly close to even-ish, you know? It's hard to say how the trajectory would have been if it wasn't some, some very crucial mistakes. And we also two, saw incredible one, work from Sarman on the other side of that. Really, really strong in terms of efficiency in his KOs. 448 damage is all it took. That's less than 150 damage per stock when you average it out. Part of that goes to that ground pound in orange that Sarmay picked up at the end. But Fozy coming in, wants to get this beautiful Rayman play that we love to see, immediately abandoning the Olgrim, trying to catch up as much as he can in game two. I think a lot of it has to do with what you just said a second ago, the ground pounds, Demon Island. You weren't able to get that pressure off stage that you wanted, so you have gauntlets, and you also have a good weapon toss. Fozy just had an incredibly dominant first stock there. Didn't take that much damage, kept Sarmay away, and I, I already, the, the Rayman shining through. Yeah, no, it looked like this is exactly what what Fozy needed. Granted, on the side of Sarme, I do want him to be a little bit careful when he's using that sword. He goes for D-Light Dare, and Fozy just got gimped. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. I was going to say, Fozy wakes up with a gravity cancel and like with whatever weapon he's using every time, and I'm wondering if he's caught on to that yet. But despite that, I mean, Sarme able to bring this back to even extraordinarily quickly. Fozy on the gauntlets. We haven't seen a whole lot of this gauntlet play yet, so let's see how it's going to go. We got to get Fozy back on the ground. So much of the damage that he is taking is just from anti-airs coming. Oh, is he going to get it again? Oh my god, Sarmay you were disgusting. Is so nasty. He got the gimp on the left side. And you're like, okay, well, you can't rely on that all the time, right? That's a once in a blue moon. And then you remember that he did it last game. And then as you're thinking about that and remembering, he does it again right in front of your eyes on the right side of the screen. Oh my god. Oh, is he going to do oh it again? Oh my god. Is right. he going to do it again? Oh, he's disgusting. Oh, you are actually he's disgusting. You are so rude. And I approve of all of it. Sarmay basically looked at everybody who was watching and said, you know what? Uh, I can not only lap these combos out on the left, I can do them on the right too, and you're gonna get hit by it, and you're gonna feel a little silly for it. Sarme, beautifully executed. You said we need to see Fozy on the ground. Yeah, not just in center stage in the air, we need to see Fozy on the ground too, off stage, because this counter pick trying to remove the wall was absolutely detrimental for him, and way more benefit for Sarme. Man, this is tough too, because Sarme got that D-Light into ground pound, which is a true combo, as long as you have, I think, like, five or more decks on bow, and then like Ko Koji got eight. So, you know, Ko Koji's straight chilling, right? Like he's like, this is an easy combo for me to hit. And then on top of that, it's like, bow ground pound has the highest base force in the game. So you really, you're not you're not coming back from that. He hit him with the twinkle toes just to look pretty, but you, you're not coming back. Let's look at some numbers on that one. A minute and a half, oh, long yeah. game. The whole thing wow. was done in that time. 376 damage was all it took for Sarmate to get the KO on that. Incredible work, immediately a 
abandoning the Rayman that we love to see over onto Sir Roland. Another Lance character similar to Ulgrim, one of the more higher reported characters from Fozzy as well. I think the oh. big, oh, you know what? I was going to say, you can, it's mostly to be able to get access to the incredible range that Sir Roland has on the signatures. We saw a couple attempts at that, but there we go right there again. Just to try and back off this air-to-air -air game that Sarma is just winning out on. Bro, you tried to go off stage, go for GCD zig on. Uh, <laughs> and he, all right, so okay, Sarmay's feeling himself. Oh, dude. Oh, he got. Oh, the he ran pound. into it. Oh, okay, perfect. Won't be able to make it. No, he gets the touch. He gets enough on the dodge. Just knows his resources. Says, let me go for one more ground pound, which I love the confidence, by the way, because Rock has a ground pound. Defa got some end lag to it, if you will. For sure. For sure. It can be very dangerous if you use it at the wrong time. And I mean, who has been capitalizing in this set against people who are in the wrong place at the wrong time? Yeah. Sarmay has been nailing those. Mm -hmm. Every single time. If I was Fozy, I would be 100% avoiding that ground pound. But you saw he's already hit two, especially after that first oh, one. The wow, stage wow, spikes from wow, Sarve wow. coming out, turning Fozy into a pinball. Honestly, if I'm Fozy, I want to stand Lance not even to fight. It's purely to stay alive because you need the you need the range to recover. Considering how often Sarme has been edge guarding and then chasing him up in the skies oh as well, consistently leading. My God, put him down! Put him down! He paid man, you let him play too. That's not fair, bro. My man Bose is just trying to get something, bro. He's getting tossed around like a clown ball, and he's like, please, just let me play the game. Now, Grant, you were saying before, like, yeah, all right, people pick Sir Roland, or in this case, the King Knight, because one, they want the range on the six, but two, he has. Defense out the wazoo, right? So it's like, all right, like he can live a very long time. But with the amount of consecutive hits that Sarman has been able to get, it's almost been a non issue. We are seeing it reasonably even up here, though, at least in terms of damage. Though, I would still say the confidence nice. and the momentum is on Sarme's side. Even after Fozzy grabbing the lead there and getting the second stock, he's going to opt for Sword. It seems like he did have enough time to swap back over to the Lance if he wanted, but he wants to stick with the Sword. It's now Sword v. Sword. He's, wow, Sarme's just going to open that up with a Gravity Cancel side side. I think a lot of what's going on here is you were just alluding to the survivability of Sir Roland really shining through because, let's be real, Fozzy was getting smacked up yeah. a bit there for a second. I was surprised that it was so even, but these air-to-air -air trades on these six are so good. There it is again. He's just doing such a good job of making Sarme for once finally pump the brakes on all these short hop burst attempts. Yeah, and you can see Fozzy is using that down sick to great avail, right? It's kind of hard to punish. You saw that? He tried to punish Bro. it. Immediate end light from Sword. Dang, and if what? he gravity cancels it, what was win. Sarme doing at the end of that game, dude? <laughs> that was a different guy. That's not the same guy. It's the imposter, bro. Yeah. He was just throwing out random signatures, like over, down, GC on the left side. When Fozzy's on the main platform, he just looked completely lost. Like, he was he was fighting some other demons in Fozzy at that moment, bro. I mean, look, some, somebody go somebody go make sure that this is uh, <laughs> yes, the same connection. Sure. Like, <laughs> we, we, we got, is, that a, is that a bot that took over? But still, uh, incredible credit to, uh, to Fozzy uh, in being able to, early on, try to catch those D uh, D6 a lot. Mm -hmm. Kept whipping, but it was mostly as an attempt as like, hey, chill. And then at the end, they kept connecting. And then the overextensions from Sarme that Sparky was just talking about really ended up giving Fozzy finally the opportunity to get the chaos. But back here to Mammoth, how are you feeling about the stage pick? And Sarmi's chance of getting back into it. I, I'm kind of like F. Mammoth is like kind of big. Like, you know, <laughs> that's Sir Roland over there. So he's like deaf happy to be like chilling on this stage. But Sarme, once again, I mean, we saw him find great use of the anti airs before, right? So it's like, okay, if you're able to continue that up, then maybe it's not going to matter too much. And especially if you get a ground pound here, it doesn't really matter how big the stage is. Wow, you are absolutely out of your mind. <laughs> You look like a genius if it works. It's like, well, why were you doing that in the first place? He's doing such a great job, just getting kind of back to the basics of what Sarme was doing very effectively nice. before. And I mean, based on this first stock, I can easily see this going the way of every other game except for the last one, where he's just controlling the main stage. Fozzy cannot land anytime he gets near. So much zoning potential that Sarme has with this bow. He's using it so well. He's gone back to the basics. A healthy dose of delight, just trying to catch Fozzy as he lands. Especially now, we didn't see a whole lot of lands in the second game because it was just the sword putting in so much work. So now he's getting boxed out. He keeps moving just out of range of all these Highlight attempts, and he just keeps Fozzy backed off. He does get reversed, Ooh, and Fozzy is nice. going to walk away with that. Are you, no, actually, he is going to get the wall touch. Fozzy trying to go deep for a dare, but does not get it, oh, and no, now he's going to be in a bad spot. Dude, I'm, I'm so worried wow, about Fozzy over here. I'm so worried about Fozzy over here. Oh my god. Sarmay might take the discard. Oh, wow. Yeah.
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Bro, that's we, the way to do it. We turned into a whole Tom and Jerry cartoon just a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to do it, though, right? You was able to... Because, I mean, Sir Roland doesn't have, like, the highest speed stat. He's kind of in the middle of the road to slow, right? Oh, he's so, slow. For so sure. he's, trying to, he's trying to drift past all this, but he's not moving very far. His aerial acceleration can't really keep up with Koji. Yeah, when he's when he's in the air, he's basically a blimp trying to turn on <laughs> like, it's, it's It's not happening. You can wish and... and scrunch your mouth up any way you want to. It ain't happening. And it's just so good for Koji, too, because if you're taking forever to try and touch the wall, uh -oh. especially in this position, oh, no. he's hunting for it. Oh, he does no. connect on it, and now Fozzie looking at bracket elimination here after going back off stage and being behind. He does have him in the red, so this is relatively close in terms of finding a D-Light if he can get access to the weapon in the first place, but it's actually going to be the Lance, so he's oh. still, still got the KO, but I think you definitely want the sword right now. Yeah, yeah sword's definitely going to give you a guaranteed conversion, but he does have, like, down sig on Rocket Lance from Roland is so fast. It is like, it'll pop you before you even get a chance to blink. But now that you have that sword, you got off. You can go for that down sig that's been working out for you a whole lot. Or you can go for N sig, which is also huge. He's been jumping a lot. You can anti-air him cleanly. But instead, Sarme is still finding all these little no, crevices no, to get no. more hits in. Uh -oh. are what are you, why are you down there? <laughs> why are you Please. down there? Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> is he back? Wait. Oh, he just saved Sarme. He was okay. still dead anyway, so like he had to do that, but that ended up saving okay. Sarmay. Okay. I thought I thought Sarmay was gonna go down with him. Hey. So he decided to take them both out. But the six is gonna come through, he's gonna get the damage on, going right back to the sword, and going to stay with the sword. I think that's I think that's your win condition right now. The Lance has been okay, but I think the sword, Ow. especially that, has been what gave you game number three and hopefully gives you game number four. We have seen him pick up that down signature on sword quite a bit, but we also saw one very important one just recently that Sarmay ended up dodging Ooh. through perfectly and then finding a two hit that ended in a signature. Now the signatures are continuing to come out, but it's not a gravity cancel on the left or right side. It's on the main stage, so it's going to be significantly safer for Sarmay to pick up, and he's been using them very successfully. I'm just wigging out, dude. I'm like, can you, <laughs> can you get back on stage? Weapon throw, weapon throw. No, you can't. Air. He doesn't have enough. He can't make it. He's rolling. He's too slow, and that means Sarmay. Is going to go ahead and knock Fozzie out of the bracket. 3 1. Valiantly fought by Fozzie. Well, holy cow, dude. What a. What a match. Yeah, what a set. And also a correction to the timeline because that does, in fact, ruin Sparky's prediction. It does. So that's also a Everybody's good thing. Everybody's sad out there. <laughs> Everybody, everybody crying right now. It's 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 a bummer. But still, <laughs> we got to see it at least done in that way. And we got to see. We got to see some amazing stuff yeah. from Sarmay yeah. that I expect to hopefully continue. Sarmay will be moving on to fight against Delta in the Losers Quarter Finals. But so many clippable moments from that set that I'm sure they're going to spend a lot of time on on the Monday Dead. Mm -hmm. I'm especially like surprised at the amount of time that Fozzie spent off stage with Sir Roland, right? Like, I'm like, ah, of all legends, like, this is the one you really want to be scrapping out here with, but he was able to get some turnarounds, actually, and, like, converting the KO, so kudos to him for being able to do it. From Sarmay, we saw a good amount of, like, D-Light into NSIG conversions as well off of the sword, which I don't even remember if it's, like, still true. I think Nine Dex Koji might still have that one, maybe, but I know it's at least one frame on the reg, so, like, he was able to find that and catch Fozzie slipping fairly often. I mean, even when it wasn't the Sir Roland, I, I, so one stat we don't have is offstage conversions. The amount of times that Sarmay walked away, usually on top with those offstage, especially that game with the the Rayman where we barely saw the Rayman on mm -hmm. Demon Island, yep. it was uh, it, you had you shouldn't have been down there. Like that, that's <laughs> like the way that Sarmay was playing, like he just that was his zone. It was almost acno esque the way that he was reversing. Anytime you stepped off stage with the Koji, it was fluid, it was on point, and it looked frustrating to deal with. Every time Fozzie wanted to go under the stage, like that's normally, I don't want to call it your get out of jail free car, but like that's your that's your escape hatch moment. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like what's going on here mm -hmm. up against the wall. I want to leave. I'm going to go under. And for a lot of characters, they can reasonably get over to the other side before the, the aggressing player is able to move over the top and get to them. That did not happen here with no. Fozzie. Every time he wanted to go under, it was just like a more hopeless situation. You were out of the frying pan, into the fire. Yeah, it absolutely just caught on fire quite a few times because of that. It was so ridiculous. And unfortunately for one of these two, they might be lit on fire as well because there is a cannon player coming up. It is the Ninja729 who has been piloting the Sidra all day versus Delta with that, excuse me, it's Squatta, uh, with that Bodvar. How are you feeling about this one going into it? Because this is, we're talking about aggressive matches and people going for like the clips. This, this is pretty much exactly how we go. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna take a look at the stats and have it speak for me because I'm pretty sure that Swata 
probably comes out on top here. I want to see the head-to-head -head just to make sure, because my gut is telling me that the Ninja versus Swada, I feel like this should go the way of Swada. That's what my brain is telling me. But the Ninja, I mean, taking a look at the stats, you know, almost 20k. We saw him chefing up earlier. He's going crazy with Sidra today, by the way. Gravity cancel D6 to shift his hurt box upward and get a punish has been working out phenomenally for him today. And if he keeps playing like that, maybe Swada got something cooking. They're head to head, surprisingly. Is it in favor of Ninja? It's in favor of nobody. It is 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, <laughs> no way. I almost want to say the tool is lying, but I trust the tool. <laughs> I'm very surprised that these two have fought None time. How is that possible? I, I don't I feel, know. I feel like it has to be it has to be seeding wise, right? Because these two, I mean, prior to Swada's recent runs, their seeding was relatively similar for a good range. So maybe they just think run into each other during like on the opposite runs. side of bracket. Yeah, they kept yeah, always ending up on the opposite side. That's the only thing I can. It's gotta be like that. I mean, even right now, there's seed one for Swada and seed six for the Ninja. But also, some of it could be that Swada's rise to power was sort of on the declining edge of mm. the Ninja 729's that's, empire. That's the point, yeah. So they're just kind of, they're, they're meeting each other. There are two ships passing in the night, one going north, the other one going south. Yeah, well, hopefully for the Ninja, we'll see him return to going north because it is an incredible player to watch. Uh, but also, you talk about the SIGs, and I think that's going to play a huge oh, part yeah. in it because you want to talk about massive range? Sidra has them all. Three, two, but it also one, incredible four. control at the ledge with that neutral sig on cannon. You can't jump for free. So now you're afraid. And then sword, you jump around me too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop you up real quick and oh, toss Swata. you out of here. Oh man, but it looks like Swada. I mean, we saw Swada on this hammer before, putting most of the game time on that hammer, and it was for good reason. He knows how to clean up with this weapon. Granted, on the other side here, we have the ninja you were mentioning before, right? Amazing SIGs on that cannon from Sidra. And that's what the first thing I was talking about. Using that grab the cancel down sig to shift Sidra's hurt box upward and get a punish on an aggressive player is going to be a very big thing for Swada to look out for. Weapon tosses over on the left side. Oh, As the down signature, Swada keeps continuing those weapon tosses back to the main stage. Oh, that was a close, close. tentacle, it's baby. So, that was a close tentacle. It's so good. You jump around me too much, you will get snatched up, and that makes you have to chill a little bit more often. I mean, Swada had a really good lead off the start there with the damage. Does get D-Light recovery. It's not going to take it off off the top, but the Ninja has answered it right back. Yeah, man. I mean, just taking a look. That cannonball coming out. Boom, clean hit. And the thing about the cannonball, too, is if you'd use that move, you can get cannon and light out before the cannonball has so even disappeared. Fast. It's, it's so, so fast. Whack. It's insane. <laughs> it's Such a so good tough. defensive option to use, regardless of whether or not that cannonball mm -hmm. whiffs or not. Just start mashing Jeez. that button to buffer it up. The ninja taking this first stock. That's a minute and 22 seconds into this one. Compare that to one of the previous games where I believe it was Fozy that got manhandled in a minute yeah. and a half total. So definitely a slower game, but really a normal pace game. It's only in comparison to those quick games earlier. Immediately even up by Swat. He's going to have his choice of weapons. Of course, he's going back to the hammer. Yeah, Swat would be staying on that hammer, but I think if anybody's in question why the Ninja has been playing so much more Sidra of late, we're seeing it played out right in front of us. They'll be able to like, like, counter edge guard and also just the consistency of being able to to kind of dip around issues with that while also still having the early KO power has just been showing so well for the Ninja. Very even so far on the yellow. Trying to catch that D-Sig off to the left. Swada is always swinging though. On the way back up saying, chill homie, I'm getting back on. And I think one of the great things about this as well is that for the Ninja going to the hammer matchup, like normally people think of like, oh man, I hate playing cannon into Axe. Great, beautiful ground pound coming up from Swada, by the way. Should be a clean up there. Goes for the gravity cancel down sig. Didn't get the touch, it's gonna be the stock. But it's one of those things where if you have like long long active hitboxes and the cannon just starts staring towards you right it gets stuffed out every single time but with the hammer you have to time your like side light or like your stomp or your end light you have to time that like almost perfectly pretty much to stuff it out time and time again definitely leads still here favoring swata he's gonna turn the ninja to yellow Hoping to extend this. Wow, Swat is only in the orange. I thought he might be the beginning stages of red, but he's still in the orange. But I am liking the ninja that I'm seeing today. The confidence, the speed from the ninja is like different than one of the previous times we saw. It might have been the last Omen tournament where mm. ninja was just playing slow. Dude, it was boring. But I, <laughs> he was using it really well. He was like beating down his opponent in terms of the pacing of the game, which was an effective strategy. But it's definitely different than what we're seeing from ninja today. I mean, a consistent statement you always oh. hear is defense wins championships, and Swat is pretty much 
much on the defense Whoa. right now, playing it so well. Deep in the red, still refusing to give up the second stock. You do have Sword out, so it's gonna probably disappear soon. But granted, it's gonna be the wrong stock. It's gonna be the ninja going down there. Swata, after that very early play, slowed it down. That confidence that ninja had, you can see it start to slowly fade away as Swata just kept playing perfectly in mid-range to avoid any big combo starters, any sidelights from Cannon, forced them to go on to Sword, and then we saw quite a few miss signatures, which we expect to see, mm -hmm. but Swata was always there to capitalize on it. Oh, man. Like, despite the fact that, like, the ninja looks a little bit more confident, we can see the ninja swapping over to the Hattori now, a.k.a. John Cena. I don't see, where, where is he? Hey, yo, nobody knows, man. <laughs> oh, I oh. mean, where is he, though? Where actually oh, is he, gosh. though? We can't see oh, him. No. Nobody dude, can see him dude, because Swata can't on? see him either. Y'all were doing a bit. I was looking at the computer, and then he just fell, bro. Yeah. What, <laughs> no, no, what happened? A quick one, man. I don't know. Was that was was that worth the sacrifice of the cannon? Now, granted, I know the ninja has, like, mixed feelings on the weapon. He doesn't like it. We've seen players have great success with it, like Snowy and Experience. Like, it definitely can be done. But the ninja has always had some strong opinions about where it sat in the metagame. And I feel like here, he feels like it's not working again. Against Swata, he wants to try something else, and we're seeing Spear, which is a weapon that has pretty much disappeared from top level Brawlhalla play. And yeah, when you do see, it's pretty much only Hattori. And you're looking mm -hmm. for that combo starters, you're looking for the big D lights and the GC D light, Sarah, to keep that damage going, try and get Swata to like kind of chill for a bit. It hasn't worked so far, but it makes sense in a nutshell because of the fact that your the Sidra got shut down pretty hard in, uh, in those later stocks. Yeah, he is moving to a character that he all had, has a lot of experience with. Level 90 Hattori coming in here. Of course, the number one is going to be the ninja Sidra. No surprises there. But second most played character is going to be the Satori pick. It's still kind of working about the same as the Sidra did, yeah. if not maybe a little bit worse. Huge gap between these two players right now. Even though the ninja has weapon advantage, Swata isn't putting too much out there to maybe put himself in a dangerous position where ninja's going to find two hits, three hits, four hits. He does get the KO there, but still so far behind. He is going to continue to control these weapons. We'll call that we'll call that intentional option coverage, maybe. That was definitely sort of jumping right on top of it, and you'll take that you'll take that every day that you can for Hattori. But like, look at the way Swata is just staring oh. down the ninja over at the side. You could press whatever buttons you want. Eventually, you're going to make this mistake in front of me. The damage you're going to do to me is going to be nullified instantly. As we see him once again go up a full stock. That's one of the tough things about playing Spear at a high level is that you're not allowed to whiff Spear Sidelight. If you're going to throw that move out, it has to connect. Otherwise, there's so much time for someone to get a punish here. If we see the ninja is struggling, trying to find these hits. I like the use of the weapon throw for the reset here. He used to get quite a bit more damage, though, before he could even start thinking about KOs. And I think a swap over the sword is probably the safer bet. Yeah, I think that's the player right now. You need to get that consistency of damage. It did work for you somewhat with the Sidra before. And you need something going right now, but you're going to get really hard there. Excuse me, just a big whip punish. D-Light into Dare, getting that damage on. You have to get this KO ASAP, though. Otherwise, Swata is just not going to care that much. Missing out on the ground pound as well. He's adding the damage up pretty quickly, but I still just think he's too outpaced by Swata at this point. It's going to take virtually nothing for the Ninja to lose that final stock. Side arrow will do it. A stomp obviously will lead into any KO option you want that Swata can use. Meanwhile, the Ninja, now he has a fresh Swata, so he's going to have to do all of that work yet again without getting hit by hardly anything. Yeah, it's highlight real time. You have to go for the big play. I mean, it's possible, Flambo, but it's definitely looking pretty grim. Yeah, it's just hard because I'm like, the, the setup generally for Spear to get the dodge read is that sidelight, right? And let's say the ninja goes for it. We saw the first time the ninja went for the sidelight. Swata just didn't dodge, right? Because most Spear players will wait for you to dodge and then try to react to it. It was like, all right, I'm just not going to dodge. And boom, he could have gone for an immediate D-light, but he was like, oh, wow, you just didn't dodge. And just like that, Swata's able to find the final Sair to close out that game. And I'm wondering, I don't think the Satori's it. I'm going to be honest. I don't think this is the answer. I'd rather the Sidra here. And if not the Sidra, I'm like, do you have a Zol? That would be a very meta I think, pick. I think you're exactly right on that. Spear is definitely not the play. You saw many times he was trying to get that sidelight to work. It just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Hit the sidelight, no move after. Hit the sidelight, no move after. I don't think Spear is the play whatsoever. Maybe if you want to lean into the Bryn for the axe side of things, but even then, that would only be if you're like dead set on having the Spear in your kit. I think the Zol is a good pick. I think and Sidra Onyx is too. a good pick as well, and Onyx is a possible good pick. Any of the major cannon picks that the Ninja comes yeah. out with. I think, I mean, the longest string I think we saw from the Spear in that set was 
was one D-Light Stare, and that yeah. was it. Like, it, it took so much effort to get that, and then even when you got to the Swords, like, well, you could probably be doing the same thing, but with the Sidra. So I think the Sidra comes back. Uh, you, you think about how you have been getting outspaced. Mm -hmm. You were doing a good job of controlling the ledge, or excuse me, your recovery Three, at ledge two, to keep one, him off roll. of you, but very surprising to literally all of us at the desk. We're running it back, not only stage-wise, but we're still going to see the Hattori. Okay, then I'm hoping that the ninja maybe sticks with the sword a little bit more and leads into that aspect of it instead of sticking with the spear, but he throws away the sword almost immediately. He really wants to bet something on this spear, but right now he just doesn't have a weapon, and Swata already has him approaching the orange here, but the ninja surprisingly is, is Bro, faring decently well in our... There's a weapon spawn, please. <laughs> please go over to the weapon spawn. He gets over to it in time, but he wanted to fight unarmed there. He had no problem doing that. Like, oh. like trying to reach a little bit too deep, <laughs> deep in the, the depths of trying to embody John Cena here. Now nice. there you go, finally getting access to some damage. Like Sarah off the side, like gonna get some damage going. But you have to find the KO too. Now, I, I know it's it's as cliche as possible to say, but you need a big ground pound reader, something off stage to get that first stock and get some confidence in you. Now, Grander, one thing I will say that I'm happy about is when we saw that. Side light, D light, air. The ninja did that D light immediately. So he was able to realize the Yomi layer of, wait, hold on, you're not dodging when I hit you with side light for the first time. So now he's actually able to play that mini game, but I'm wondering if it's a little bit too late. Ooh, we almost oh, no, found no, the no, spike no, there, like but Swata has some pressure on the edge. The recovery, picking up low, doesn't KO. More damage being added up by Swata. I mean, more damage being added up by the ninja, but he doesn't need damage right now. That's he fine. needs the KO options. He has to oh. find the D-Light. You see him hunting for it. He wants the recovery, but the one he found wasn't in the right spot. Immediately picks up the spear, wakes oh, up man. with the Sig. These signatures oh, on Hattori man. have not been working for the ninja whatsoever. He just swinging, bro. Like, he just yeah. threw out, like, at least three different gravity cancel Sigs. Went for the, like, Hail Mary, I'm gonna KO you. You're a gold ground pound. Like, he is trying everything and it took so much effort for him to get that first stock this time now though he already racked up a little bit on swata if he can get oh my god <laughs> yeah, oh my, yeah yeah correct bro my, my heart <laughs> it's going crazy and i think the only person we've seen today who's been able to actually avoid not only these chaos but the like being able to avoid swata when he knows you're seeing red was godly mm -hmm. everybody else when you're when when swata's at ko percent you can't open them up. Like, you literally can't open them up right now. And that's what we're seeing so far, because it's not like the ninja's gone for a lot of bad plays. He's just getting outplayed a lot right now as he's going deep off stage. Marky, this is not looking good. Everything SWAT is doing is basically landing right now, or he's not getting punished for it. He hasn't gotten hit, and it seems like 100 years. See ya. Oh, the D-Sig on Hammer, too. That's how you know how confident SWAT was. The first stage of confidence was the turnaround neutral signature mm -hmm. on the hammer on the right side. The second level of confidence was that Bodvar hammer down sig. I don't know the last time I saw that, let alone when it actually hit. Bro, Swata nice. Like, yeah, like, I... so, like, so, Swata is just nice, and there's a reason why this man is the reigning champion of BCX. But even though going down to Winters, you're not going to see him just let that go away after getting knocked into losers or lowers by Godly. He, I, I think we're looking at what's probably going to be Grand Final. I mean, Grand Final. Like, Godly is currently sitting on the winner side of things. Might punch that ticket. Pretty much cruising through a lot of people right now. Swata is looking like the most dangerous per person in lowers right now. I would definitely agree with you. We're going to see Swata moving through into the loser's semifinals after getting a 3-0 victory against the Ninja 729. So that's going to put him in a good spot there. He's going to be waiting for the winner of Delta versus Sarme. This Ooh. is going to be an interesting set. Was there anything that y'all had more to say before we move on to that one? I mean, I'm just sad. Like, I feel like whenever, whenever I watch the Ninja play, it's like the Ninja goes up against someone who like, like I feel like every bracket run for the Ninja ends like this, where like he's cooking somebody, he moves on to the next one. He's cooking somebody, he moves on to the next one. He cooks somebody else, and then he hits someone who's just better. Yeah, like it's they're just better. And then it's like you're watching him, and you're just like, you can do it, you can do it. But everything on the screen is saying no, and you're like, it, it, today will be the day. And I'm like, I'm still waiting, dude. Yeah. I think he can do it. Honestly, it's needed, and it's very frustrating for a lot of people when you're rising up in the levels of competition. But when you run into those people who keep you stuck, God, demons. That's the only way you're going to improve. And you have to constantly look at them no matter what. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's Godly, Sandstorm, and Akno, it doesn't matter. You have to say, I can beat them. And even though it might not happen the first time, you have to keep pushing forward towards that. And you're, you're right, Ninja always somehow finds that person who's in like top three and knocks them out in fifth place. And that was their first head to head, too. That's yeah. the other thing. Which That's is. 
It still blows my mind. I still don't trust him. <laughs> I, I, I still yeah, don't I, trust honestly, it's it's hard to believe. But I, th I think it definitely has to do with they they were just so just so even before, but now Swada is just taking over, or at least constantly in that top three. Ninja declining a bit, but also like decline while getting top eight. So it's like still. It's still good places, but we all know for the Ninja, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not from what we've seen in the past from the Ninja. I think he maybe just needs to find his place in the current meta. Like Flambo was talking about his opinions on Cannon and how it fits currently. I mean, you saw he went back with the Hattori for another game after he got mixed up. Yeah. And after <laughs> yeah. The, the spear was clearly not working. If he was that married to the sword, he could have gone a bunch of different other sword characters. He didn't use really any of the signatures successfully whatsoever. So there was really nothing about Hattori that was working whatsoever, mm -hmm. but that's the one he chose to go with. So I think maybe the ninja currently has like an identity crisis on how he fits into the meta when he's playing like those super high tier players on the other side of the bracket like Swada. Like maybe those things are working against your your top 32 players, but then you get you get to your Swadas, your Agnos, and maybe that's where he just needs to find something else mm -hmm. that kind of gives him that joy in Marie Kondo style. Yeah, possibly. I mean, character passion definitely matters a lot. Like, if you want, want to improve, you get character specialists for a good reason, you get weapon specialists for good reason, and it, you, it builds up. So having that the, having losing face, the faith in your character while also playing against somebody who's one of the best Bolivars in the business, you're going to be second, you're guessing, like, second guessing yourself where they are just confident in every choice. So I, I definitely want to see the improvements come through. We saw some really good defense at the start of these highlights where we saw those cannon neutral six to kind of back off, but the Hattori just was not it. That's Hopefully, Fox. Like, I mean, we talked about it at the very beginning. We said, John Cena, where is he? Well, I mean, it, was, it was not yeah. there. <laughs> That's Fox. Where, just... where is he in the meta? That's, yeah. that's the question I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people coming through with that, but we will be moving on to our next set. This one is going to be Delta versus Sarme. I want it like, man, I, I really just kind of hope Sarme wins this because I want to see more Sarme gameplay. Mm. But I also want to see more Delta gameplay, but I specifically I want to see do you? what Sarme is going. I do. <laughs> I do. I was just checking because I feel like you got some strong opinions on Taros, but look. I think amongst anybody at the table saying strong opinions on Taros coming out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wish, I wish Zip was in my corner right now. <laughs> Cause Zip would understand. He'd be like, yo, Flambo's talking that good ish, man. I'm telling you, Taros is the future. Eventually, I you have to come to terms with the meta that we live in. And <laughs> That's real. You, you have to realize that, that Taros is a part of that no matter how much you fight back against him. <laughs> and Delta to, like really found a couple comfortable seat in that too, because yep. now like it, it's just it, it wasn't a fluke. The BCX last year's qualifier was not a fluke. The run after that, the winter's run, and even today, this is no fluke. Delta is here to stay with that Taros. And I'm really hoping we see an incredible match here from Sarme 2, though, because this is someone who we've been waiting to see mm -hmm. have that big deep run. We know that they can do it, but we haven't seen it a lot of late. Today, looking incredible. Delta, however, looked incredible. Other than getting 3-0'd in winter, uh, winter side, True. getting knocked into here, that can mess with you a little bit. But how are you feeling about this going into the first game? Well, I mean, the biggest thing that we were talking about, right? We were saying that Delta is a player that can kind of embody the spirit of Taros, mm -hmm. right? Like, he will just do a SIG because why not, right? Yep. And a big part of the counterplay to him was, like, not getting too tripped up by that, not letting it get mixed, Dude, punishing it if you can, oh. but at the very least, not getting hit by it. And we're going to see if Sarme is able to deal with that. And I see a Diana on the screen, which that got me hyped. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while. Yeah. Like, it's been a while since we've seen, uh, like, it mostly... Uh, from from today, we've seen a, a healthy dosage of the Mordex, but this is not unfamiliar for Sarmin whatsoever. Like Sparky, <laughs> like historically, how like I'm how trying how to dig in. Is. Well, while we're waiting for that, also this stage, by the way, the the embodiment of like the the, the, the baits and the strong uh, six. This is where you're gonna see it. Yeah. You're gonna be seeing GC uh, neutral stick reversals attempts because you want to go off stage after Taros, but you probably shouldn't because Delta's waiting for you. Yeah, and the fact is, like. Diana is also one of those legends who has some incredibly aggravating six to deal with. Oh like, yeah, baby. The side signature yeah. on Bo that picks uh, up so is behind. just the weirdest Dude, places. It's so weird. The D sig on Bo that is your like game changing mm -hmm. signature. You pick it up in the right spot. The best people know exactly where they need to pick it up in order for it to go over that corner and really be that huge dunk. I think a big part of why we're seeing that Diana here too is I don't want to fight you. I don't want I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you stay, stay over there. Away. You stay over there. I'm gonna stay here. And what, so far, oh, yeah, Delta. Oh, that down sig. 
Yeah, Delta has done a great job of kind of invalidating that part. Damage mitigation was good, but we do see a stock loss finally. But with Blasters, with Bow, it's all about that spacing game. But Delta always finds a way to close the gap. And that's the scariest part about him maneuver with his character. Oh, man, that D-Light into the n is one of those things you got to watch out for, especially near the ledge. Caught the recovery, will be able to jump right back to the stage, but Delta trying to answer back here and get this last little hit to potentially get a KO. I love just watching the difference between the two of their pacings, where it was like Sarme, nice. which just came out and like did 14 dashes in half oh, of a second, oh. and then Delta just went and walked up and said, I hit you with X. <laughs> yeah. I picked things up, I put them down is the best way to put it. And also, we're picking wow. up a lead here for Sarme coming in. It was a start to Delta, and Sarme bringing it right back. Sarme's edge guards have actually been incredible all day, too. We were mm -hmm. comparing them to Akno yep. a little while ago. So I, I, I do not think we are in for a boring set by any means. There's going to be a oh my lot gosh, of people off stage. Uh, Go for one right he now. He went for it. Wow, he telegraphed that one, too. Impressive work, getting even before that, getting that beautiful string right before that. Sarme's bow play is incredible. Even though this is level 48, Diana, the neutral light is going to take that stock away. Delta's going to toss his axe, grab a hammer, hoping he can oh. grab the next one, but it goes right to Sarme. Yeah, Sarme summoned that weapon, as I like to call it, where it just spawns right where he needed it. And just like that, he's going to be able to scrap out with this bow a little bit more. But Delta doing things in Taro's fashion. One hit, two hit, three hit, four. Oh, snap, you're about to be knocked out the door if he's able to go ahead and secure this, but that delay recovery is going to be enough. Sarme able to close out game one. The Diana looking good, and he's been able to find, like, I, I wonder what his accuracy is on the signature count there because he got, like, at least two different N6. He got a down sig on bow as well. He's looking good. First off, I have to say, I refuse to speak until you were... Fi uh, yeah, I was going to let you ride out the whole thing because the rhyme and the smoothness was just going too good. <laughs> kind of like the end of that play. And you're right, I'm actually curious to see what the accuracy Young was Sims. on that. It was just so clean. Well, we're not going to see that just yet. We're going to see a uh, stage switch here. More access to walls. I think that is the correct play for survivability because yeah. you may have thought that worked out for you on that stage, but Sarme showed exactly why everybody's been having a rough time with those uh, with the offstage play. Now, talking about those signatures, you mentioned earlier, he's 44% accurate with those out okay. of nine, which means he hit just a little bit under half, but still, you saw how effective all of those mm -hmm. were. He didn't just hit a random sig in the middle of the stage to put out, like, 22 damage, hooray! No, it was these, like, major moments that he could actually build oh. a lot of pressure oh. off of, but he might get taken out here. Oh. oh, turns that one around real quick, hits the ground pound Sarme with the blasters in his hands for a rare moment. He's mostly been a bow boy. That's so. facts. Yeah. How many times today have we seen Sarme reverse off stage play it happened a bunch earlier kind of uh Kind of, kind of unfortunately for Fozy trying to box off stage for some reason. <gasps> but oh. we might see another one here getting back on with the recovery, dodging the attempt from Delta. The weapon toss keeping him pressured. Wow. Oh, the oh top side God. hits it. Oh, Delta right. would be so mad me? right now. All right, Sarme has plot armor. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Things are going so well for Sarme in every regard when it comes to those plays. Oh, man, dude. That that definitely has me fuming for him, dude. But he gets a D-Light recovery. It's still not enough. Now I'm still fuming for him because I could have been. <laughs> his stock but you know what he'll be able to adapt he has a whole stock lead it's whatever it's really up to delta here to try and mount this ko granted you know like it Look, it, that, it is that, what it is this is this is an even game <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah that's not, that like, taros, boom. it's taros so a, a fresh stock even game Neutral air, not going to take off the top yet. Going to need a little bit more mustard than that. You saw him go for the recovery. Oh. Yo, Delta's adding up some damage. Like, one nice. more hit. Sarme's going to be orange. That's going to shrink that lead just a little bit more. He's searching wow. for it. Yep, the wow. side air turned him orange. Oh, my God. One more hit. I think he's going to be red. Yeah, he, he, like, even though he ends up losing the stock right there, incredible job from Delta able to, eat, like, bringing, being able to bring that back. And all you need now is just one good call out once you get that weapon back. Or granted, giving up stage position. Sarmi's gonna push him away. He does get back to the hammer though, so that stock is on borrowed oh. time. That's gonna be a lot of damage there as well. Hit. <laughs> wow, oh man, Delta just kind of getting clapped up for the past like 15 seconds or so, trying to find this KO. Still has the recovery, so we're chilling. Yup, scoop, not gonna be enough to KO from that low on the stage. Another one? I don't think so, but maybe wow. a third. I'm actually very surprised that he's still in it. And now, now just getting okay, pushed back Sarmi. against. Sarmi, Sarmi <laughs> going deep on stage with the same Sparky. He's kind of filthy. <laughs> like, I was I was wondering what his blasters were going to look like. They're looking pretty dang good. It's not just bow here. Even though a lot of it is focused mm -hmm. on the bow, his bow is incredible. But his blasters are solid, too. I'm really liking this oh, Diana pick. Delta drop. trying to get a little bit saucy there, but he couldn't handle it. 
Yeah, he needed to get that chase dodge for the recovery. Kind of do like that beginning conversion of the Russian Mafia, essentially. But instead, he just like got the stomp and then just I was unable. He got a Sair instead, misinput, and it cost him the game. So shout out to Sarme there for being able to close that out. I mean, honestly, that game was pretty convincing. All yeah. things considered. Yeah, like even even with the attempts, like I like the attempt from Delta because you're trying to go for the big play. You're trying to get you're trying to get Sarme frustrated for deciding the box with you so much off stage. Sarme still just keeps winning out on all the off stage engagements. You whip one single time, including with the blasters like you talked about before. We didn't see a whole lot of that. They put in the most work probably in that game. I barely saw any bow. It looks so good there in game number two. And that's honestly, those offstage engagements are really why I kind of want to see a Sarmay victory here. Because I want to see what he does when he goes up against a Swata, a Godly, or an Akno in those Ooh. situations. No disrespect to Delta, but, or any of the other players that Sarmay has just been absolutely handling on the edge. His edge guards are so incredible with both weapons, including the tosses and the unarmed kit. Everything about whatever character he plays, he uses all of the tools in the toolkit on stage and off. There's one of those beautiful D6 oh, we like to talk about. Perfect catch, dude. That's just a perfect edge guard. I, yeah. th that's just, that was pristine. That's pristine. I'm telling you, I want that chart. Like, I, I want that chart so bad to see exactly how many times you decided to engage off stage and Sarmay walked out on top. And Delta is currently having a whole healthy dose of a bullet with his name on it right now, trying to just get back to the stage and having an impossible time with it. Some blasters, man. They're clean. They just have a really nice flow to them. Took a little bit of punishment there. We'll see if he's able to get back. Oh, Delta actually went out. Hit the nice D-Light ground pound there. One of the few successful, like, major edge guards we've seen. And it was in a good time, too. Yeah, yeah. This wasn't four minutes deep into the game where Sarmay already had 450 damage added up on his stock. That was a beautiful one, Ajax. No, it was one of those tougher edge guards to get as well because, like, you can drift a little bit with that recovery to catch somebody, but he was able to space it out perfectly where he could get that gravity cancel delay in the right spot right after the hitbox was done and get the finish with the ground pound. Hey, you can see the confidence of Sarmi because Sarmi's pretty much playing three-weapon game right now. He's been boxing with unarmed, gets back to the blasters. I think the blasters are pretty much the way to go right now. Just continue to space. Even if the stairs don't catch every time, that, that stair just barely missing the KO there. Delta's had a very rough go of it, just missing the D-Lights though. Delta Whoa, can't get a lead wow. and gets one right there, gets the stock. And Delta's chances, very slim, but still staying alive. Yeah, Flambo said what after that gravity cancel side yeah. signature? Uh, I 100% agree <laughs> with that word. Uh, man, I don't really know what that was. Delta wasn't anywhere near him. I don't think there was any chance for Delta to be anywhere near him, yeah. no matter what. A dash jump wasn't going to get him there. So that might have been Sarme feeling a little bit himself too much. Maybe got a little bit lost in the sauce. And now he's behind. So we'll see if he kind of changes oh. things. Not afraid to go really deep down nice. on the edge. He's going to eat a big boot. Delta going to capitalize on that. Take the game and keep himself alive. Okay. Okay. Games like that are what... Th that's what starts reverse 3-0s. Yep. Like, I know you just Absolutely. got a W, and sure, that's easy to say, but that was two stock. And the especially that big GC side sync off stage. Yeah. We saw that earlier, which kind of worked, but it was he was up two stocks at the time, so, like, it was worth it. But that was a big play that you needed at the time, mm -hmm. and that is definitely going to be a big confidence booster for Delta moving forward. Oh man, I don't know. We'll see if Delta is able to go ahead and bring things back. So far, this game starting off not quite in the favor. Sarme going for a quick ground pound off stage, see if he can get a quick one. But despite that, oh, oh, Ooh. <laughs> oh all right, hold your all right, all right. The true Delta form has started to show up. We're seeing a lot come out, and that's the stuff we talked about before. You throw them out, even if they win. That's a tarot signature. You do not want to get hit by that, so you back off intentionally, and that's going to give him temporal control. Oh, oh, what a catch. He is rejecting modern gameplay and reverting to tradition with the tarot signatures. That's what he needs to do. We have a deep... We're reverting back to our primal yes, form here. absolutely. <laughs> Oh man, and I'm like, we just saw once again the D-Light and Sig, I believe, come out from Sarme to go ahead and secure a stock off the side. Like, we can't talk enough about how good Diana's signatures are for not one, securing KOs, but two, specifically off stage. Like, even if it doesn't KO outright, it just puts you in the worst possible positions ever, dude. It feels like the punishment never ends. There are multiple spiking signatures that don't, they don't necessarily have, like, the best strength behind them like in a Surrey dunk mm -hmm. or a Mordex dunk, but no, you're exactly right. They put you in such a powerful position 
based on where you actually pick them up. And that's the best Diana players nice. in the world know exactly where to pick them up so that they can maximize that power position. Delta definitely keeping himself in this. He's only in the orange, has control of the weapons right now. We'll see where the next spawn comes in. Throws his weapon away, but does pick up the axe, keeping Sarm weapon starved. Yeah, weapon starved is actually so important right now because you need to take this time to get this back to even. Because if you see, and there it is, once Sarmay got ah. access to a weapon, you're going to be running now. You it's Exactly, spo. you have to run because you can't box anymore. And now just getting yep. called out on the recovery back in with the dare into the stair. Incredible coverage from Sarmay. That all dictated by Delta not being able to keep that weapon away. Yeah, and uh, I mean, especially, I mean, Delta, he had a 50-50 there. He either jumps after getting hit by the down air or he tries to fast fall out. He got caught on the jump, lost the stock because of it. But Delta, oh no. Oh, oh man, he's doing him not even. Oh, like, no. Look, oh, yeah. Flambo, that is the perfect. You you Gosh. nailed it. You were talking about that, and he showed it to us right there. That was a neutral signature in yellow. Mm -hmm. That didn't send him off screen. That didn't send him kissing the blast zone, but it put him in that perfect place where all it took was that down air to get the orange KO. Sarme has been doing everybody dirty this entire bracket. Straight up. Just like, hey, there's... The confidence level in Sarmid. This, you were talking about return to form 2019 Sarmid. I think you're getting it here today. Oh, man. The biggest thing is, like, he's making great players look, like, good. Yeah. Not, not, not great. They don't look bad, but... He's making them look like worse players than they are mm -hmm. with just the absolute confidence and swag that he's playing today. And that's why I'm going to say it again. I'm so curious how he's going to make players look when they're at the caliber of Swata, Akno, and Godly. Because guess what? If he moves on in the tournament, those are the players yep. he's going to be up against. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those moments where, like, Sarme has been finding great success chump checking people that's like really the only way to like say it like d light into nsig on bow is not a true combo right it's true if you will catch somebody's dodge and they can't do anything about it right you can go oh, it but he's just been doing it straight out raw because most players end up conditioned you just play enough brawlhalla where if you get hit by the move that leads into another move you're not pressing dodge because you know another move's coming you can't do anything about it so like you get hit by sword d light you're not going to press anything because you know you're going to get hit by recovery or sayer but bow d light is one of those moves where it's like all oh, right i'm getting hit by a nair or a recovery or a side air or something like that so you're not pressing dodge and sarme is consistently chump checking people with that yep. and going for a full signature and you can see how much it paid off against delta if there's one thing i live for it's a good story and even though the top like the top three that I am waiting for to like to possibly get that top three. My predictions being Godly, Akno, and Swata. I actually wouldn't even be upset to see Sarme get W's against them, purely to see this run continue. Incredible run so far from Sarme. And we are just like you said, getting into our top four in the winners bracket, the winners finals. We have Godly versus Akno. Going to be an Ooh, incredible that's be set. Good. That's going to be down so in good. the losers bracket. We have our other two players, Swata and Sarme. But before. For that, I know everybody is raring to get into those games. We're going on a quick break for just a moment. But before we do that, we need to talk about who is sponsoring this lovely tournament, giving us all of this beautiful gameplay oh, today. Who it is, is it, Sparky? HP Omen Oasis, baby. Wow. If you're on Twitch right now, type with your fingers, exclamation point, Omen, into chat. I'll go ahead and spell that out for you. That is O M E. In with an exclamation point in front. Follow the directions there. You'll get a QR code. It'll be entered into a Gleam giveaway. Pay attention to that, ladies and gentlemen. It's got some good stuff in there for you. We're going to be moving on to this break. Thank you so much for sitting down on the desk with me, gentlemen. I can't wait to watch the rest of this tournament presented by HP Omen Oasis.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Omen Oasis Championship. I am Foda. Joined here with me is Taza, the great Taza. Hello, Don't get everybody. it right, everybody. Yes. Get it right. <laughs> well, and so we've got some greats on stream coming up here. All right, we're, we're in the top four. We're in top four. So this is the cream of the crop. This yes. is as good as it gets in the European region. And, and, and while there are three names where I'm kind of like, okay, yes, totally expecting to be here. There has been one ride that's been going on in the lower bracket that I know, I know what you're talking about. Super excited about watching and that is Sarme. Yeah, He's doing so fantastic. He's in the bracket killing now. it. Yes. He's never done this well before. This is this is Sarme's first top eight, mm -hmm. and he's already in top four, right. fighting for the podium. Yeah, oh, and, and, he my is, and he has taken down players where I'm like, I, I want to see a rematch between Sarme and Godly uh, again after how he's playing today. Because before I was thinking, okay, Godly is going to become like a new tier of Sandstorm or Acno in Europe. <laughs> but now there's so many players that are just playing away. So I'm like, I didn't know Brawlhalla could be played that way. Like Sar <laughs> Sarme gets hit by knockback. He's already decided his next five moves for recovery to make it back to the stage to be able to get yeah. a return knockout. Like, Sarme's it's crazy. looking agile. Yes, like, like that's the perfect word. The, you, like, few people play Brawlhalla that fast, and it, which is like, how fast can you play it? Sarme is about the limit, it seems like. 
Um, uh, or, or introducing that a new limit is there, right? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. how, how far can he go? Yeah, it's so yeah. it's so awesome to see. So that's the that's the lower bracket matchup that's coming up. But in winner's side, we've got two players that haven't lost a match today. Who and are you they? Know, you all know exactly who it is. It's Godly and Acno. Godly and Acno. They are they are the two. Yep. And, and and they were they were in the winter championship, right? They they're the top two. Yep. They're, they're yep. The, the, the new the new major contenders right now. Yeah. The, the uh, story before. Other than been... simple, who who well. dramatically uh, left the bracket early. Yes. Yeah. There Earlier was a... th early for him. Well, I mean. there, there are a few upsets where it's kind of like, oh, simple. Oh no, Pavelski. It's like, ah, oh, our bracket's falling apart. But it just seems to be My this heart. is this is the new normal that we're trying to get towards, where it's it's like Acno and Godly as a rivalry as before, where it was Acno and Simple for a very long right. time. So it's just really exciting to see. And last time, Godly just destroyed everybody like that. Yeah. Like, and you know what? Maybe that was the surprise tournament. I was thinking, okay, let's get let's get into HBO Omen. Let's see if people are ready yeah. for him getting used to it. <laughs> Dude, after after the esports dev stream this week, I honestly I know I can't. we featured him. He did the what? he did the pro versus viewers and just absolutely thrashed everybody. Uh, yeah. Okay, look at these stats. Obviously, we don't have a lot of stats on <laughs> Godly right, right now. That, that is, that's <laughs> what I meant by the surprise it's tournament. Just back, right? Like winner, winners happened. We were like, oh, our PR is not even ready for this amount of yeah. success that he's got coming yeah. in. So Acno currently holding the, the PR rank one, going up against yeah. Godly. But make, make no mistake, Godly is the reigning champ this year. Yeah, yeah. Of, and though the power rankings season. haven't been calculated yet, and you're seeing a lot of zeros there, you could, I can, I can spoil some of it for you. This is a one. The, Gold medals are actually a one, All right. and the earnings are in the several thousands already. Yep. With one tournament under his belt, 100% yeah, right. win rate. Can he keep up the streak here today? 100% win rate, dude. It's, it's like true. it's like that thing with the batting average where you see like, it's yeah. a, the first time. If you the only bat, swing once and you hit one. it, but I mean, he could he could just keep going at this rate. Yeah. I mean, that that's. That's a, oh my good. I'm, I'm now rooting for this to happen for Godly. Two, a two tournament, 100% win streak. He, he could do it, but wow. he has to get through Acno. Acno. Who, let's not forget oh, the win streak that Acno has yeah. gotten me, right up until it was taken away from look, him. It's Those like 11 you, gold medals are <laughs> almost all in a row. Yeah, that's like how many gold, me for, gold medals for Godly? Like one? Okay, there's two yeah. ones there. Right? Like that, that's yeah. an 11. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, even though he's fighting against Godly, mm -hmm. Acno is a god. God. Oh, so goodness. this is a major, major clash of forces here, and I'm so excited to see what happens. It's winner's final. It's the only two players who haven't lost a match in this tournament, and only one of them can win. It's going to go down now in an exciting best of five. What's it going to be? Taza, what do you think? Just bi totally biased opinion. D no thinking allowed. What's it going to oh, be? Godly What's it going to be? Godly. It's Godly. What? Dude, the, I God think Akno's going to bring it back. I, I was talking to as Duke about this. As excited as I am about Godly. I was Godly. talking to Duke about this backstage. I, I, I know. It was eSports Dead okay, Street. Here we go. Here it, we go. It, it, it was Godly versus viewers. I don't care. I've never seen somebody so consistently take less than 50 damage so many games in a row, no matter what skill opponent he's yeah, against. Yeah, it, it like, was crazy. But you can see Akno's already switching it up. He's yeah. playing the Yumiko right now. Okay. And even though you've seen him playing some Yumiko today, I don't what? think he used any Yumiko in the Winter Championship. He oh. definitely never fought Godly in a tournament Vota. match with the Yumiko. It's the tech. I just saw the reason. Akno puts up the neutral stick. The, 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 the wisps come out, Ooh. right? It doesn't catch you on the ground, but it does catch you on the ground if you do the Axe Neutral Light startup, and it, st it, it catches him before the move hits Akno. I just oh. saw it happen twice already. Wait, that's huge. Where Godly was trying to... There is, there is a Godly. tiny little hop yeah. when you do the, ne the Neutral Light on Axe. Yeah. And he, he punished two Axe Neutral Lights, I'm like, that's that has to be it. Like, like I mean, there's probably more to it than that, but that is the coolest adaptation of Yumiko's neutral stick I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, I I, I feel like a lot of players have trouble actually utilizing the the traps on mm -hmm. Yumiko. And to be fair, they are very they're intended to not be abused in any yes. way, right? Like they're very tight. They're I mean, the they frame windows to they use don't them even well like do anything on their own. Like when you hit them, you have to. Do you the need combo. to follow up. Yeah, it does almost yeah. no damage on their own. The frame window to do anything with it is extremely Whoa. small. But Akno is going to be the one that does it right. And he's already started off taking the first stock away from Godly, putting a putting a little dent in his armor. Oh, he is just absolutely stumping Godly's movement. Here comes Godly. Wait a second. 
Don't forget that this is going. Oh, oh, he cut the spot dodge too, dude. Oh, he he did it again. oh my god! Dude, god he is just destroyed by it. Yeah, he is winning engagements with this Yumiko Whoa. trap. The surprise side sync. He's got a huge damage lead on Godly already. And this is crazy because Akno is a player who I would not be oh surprised to see He's a signature count of like two to three at the end of a game when we're looking at the stat screen. And I'm pretty sure Akno is have one. I think yeah. he's used more signatures than light attacks this game. It's so crazy. And that's how cool to see. Doing oh, so well with Godly, it. wait! He must have thought he had a recovery attack and he did it. Oh, oh no. Two stocks down. Oh, God. Godly is he's he's disconnected. Yeah, wait. No, 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 that no, was no, the no. bot. The bot just killed Agno. Wait. Did he disconnect? This looks like a disconnect. It does. He's, it's either Godly perfectly Oh, there he's back now. He's back. Okay, now. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. He did disconnect. He reconnected really quick. Maybe he, he had, maybe he like, had a, a connection issue on like, his side. Oh, I took a stock. Uh, and, and, yeah, and the bot took a stock for him while he was gone. Let's go. But it's not going to help him much. He's, even before that that little disconnect, uh, which he came out, he actually got a net positive from disconnecting there because Akno respected it. Yeah. The bot, <laughs> the surprise haymaker, <laughs> sent Godly out. And oh, oh man, I think he's just giving up on this game here. Right off the end. Because yeah. it was looking pretty rough for him, and Akno takes game one another, in a dominant fashion. Another interesting thing that I noticed there is that a common tactic from any Prohala player, really, is that when you're being faced with a lot of signature pressure, you could go for a dash forward weapon throw to interrupt the move, right? But Yumiko with the down sig on bow, he he went to throw the axe over it. The, the wisps are still active, right? Yeah. So he slid right into them. Like, it, that was something that happened. So Akno's got a very amazing, like, counter uh, yeah, aggressive style. Yeah, was this Yumiko intended to counter Godly? Akno, it, because it, it feels that way. is a player who, after a loss, like, like when, when a loss is that You got to imagine. It was, he, it was like three or four weeks he's, ago he, now, right? He's going to go into the lab and he's going to figure out how he's going to beat this guy because yeah. Akno's got 11 gold medals for a reason and it's not because he's a pushover, that's for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. So this is so cool. Uh, so I'm so excited to see how Godly's going to be playing against him in games uh, two and beyond and whether he goes from the Rayman over to the Mordex that we saw a little bit earlier on today. Yeah. The Rayman's definitely like what I associate Godly with as a player, as a this year, I mean, we've only had one tournament to look at it, but even even in in the in the show matches that we've got, this is yeah. like the, the the character that he's doing so amazing. Right. But he's got, I mean, we saw what him play eight different weapons, all in ways where we were kind of like, I never thought you could do that with guitars before. Like, it, like yeah, those yeah, are even guitars, it, yeah. I've never seen him play before at all, and he did he did amazing. Yeah. So we're waiting on the lobby reset here, guys. Um, while we're waiting, check this out. Well, you can see, we have already told you who's coming up here. Godly versus Akno currently happening right now, and Akno is ahead by one, and it's Akno is. It's, this seems huge for for Akno. I still consider Swada pretty pretty new blood when it comes to these top fours. I mean, I mean, despite it was, being the defending world yeah, champion, so, you mean? But that that, yeah. that was the recent thing, yeah. right? And so it's like we, we, he's been like he's been. I'm saying quote unquote relevant. I mean like top, top four podium for the two tournaments now, yeah. right? And looking at this bracket, it, Akno's the only one remaining from the old guard of EU that gets in the top four there. It's Godly, uh, Swada, and now Sarme in, in that bottom half of the top four. Dude, Akno's, Sarme, Akno's can we the talk only more about, oh no, we're remaining. ready. It looks like we're, <laughs> dude, Sarme is like, We'll have time. He will be on, he will be on stream. Oh, it's gonna be the next it's match. Gonna, it's gonna I'm be so good. I'm so excited about what, can, how much farther can Sarme go, right. uh, but, what we've got right here is like the new guard versus the old guard. Yeah, big yep. time. The one, the one remaining in, the, in this bracket. It's and so cool. Like you were really confident in Godly. Yes. Going into that, it sure looks like Akno has developed some counters specifically for Godly. I will admit, I never would have expected something on this level when it comes to, to be that play. one. Like I, I, I have seen. I've seen what I consider to be counter picks, and like, okay, there's a slight stat advantage, or he wants this weapon against this yeah. person. This there, is like a. There's rarely, there rarely do counter picks like that exist in Brahala, at least in my yeah. opinion. Well, it's a Everything's play designed style. to be able to beat everything else, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, there's no. But this sure seems to be working, and you're right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a counter to the play style. So, I mean, Godly's got some time to look at this and be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't dash or jump into these attacks. But it's like. I've never seen anybody yeah. use but the uh, the the wisps the to wisps. counter axe neutral light, or just it. so successfully he in did, general. He did it twice in a row yeah. at the beginning of the match, and I was like, "That's no mistake." He caught the hop. I think and you're it, right. It catches the hop before the move starts. And it's he the just... tiniest little hop too. It's yeah. enough to dodge a sword down light. Yep. 
Like, yep. Way low like that, you hop just over it. Oh. Uh, and apparently that's just enough to jump just into the wind. Just enough to jump into a move that's, that's not supposed to get grounded. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe it. I mean, I've never seen the Wisp used so well, but especially in this way that he's using it to counter Godly. Yep. And you know, when you get your opponent having to play differently, mm -hmm. That does a lot. That like just changing their game plan like that does a lot. Yeah. Because now they can't they can't play. A, a lot of Brahala just comes from mm -hmm. comes from the soul. You know what I mean? Like yes. it just comes right out. You're well, not thinking. You're not like. Well, uh, and that's why we're freaking it's, out so it's much about fingers. Sarve, right? It's because Sarve is bringing on this whole new oh, genre, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it's so fantastic to see. But that's exactly it's exactly right, and that's what makes it so terrifying. Godly's gonna have to yeah. change how he's playing yep. and. You know, one might argue that Akno should be much more capable of that on the fly yeah. changing because he has so much experience in the grand finals yeah. of tournaments. And like, the medals to prove seriously, it. Seriously, just right in the medals to prove it. Yep. He has so much experience in grand finals. Um, he's fought 10 game sets more than anybody, probably. It's up there. Or, or thinking, nine game I'm sets or eight it. game sets, it, right? It, Which is very rare. Been, well, because, yeah, and Akno has been in plenty of bracket research situations where he's come from the lower bracket, right? right. Like it's not, it's not like it's cr he's this crazy undefeated monster. He's just an you know, amazing player. Yeah, if there's one person you need you need more than one game plan to beat, it's going to be Akno, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And I think we're going to have to see, we're going to, Godly's going to be tested here in can he change his play style? Can he adapt to overcome Akno? Yeah. Uh, in this winner's final, he's only going to have a best of five to figure it out. If he loses this one, he's going to have it's, to he's going to have to go through uh, the winner of of uh, Swat and Sarme. Sa Swat and, and Sarme. And, and that's crazy in its own and right. And that's going to be right. That's gonna, yeah. that's difficult in its own right. Swat is the defending uh, world champion. Sarme is. Insane! I, Sarme's just been popping off like crazy. It's a it's a whole I new really, world. I really want to see how Sarme uh, sizes up against Swada uh, after that last matchup that we just saw on stream with him against Delta, because that was one of those things where Delta started off so strong game one, and then I was just watching and watching. I was going, Sarme, nothing that you're doing makes sense to me, but it looks so smart every and single it's time. Working. It looks. I'm like, <laughs> I can't. can't I be can't denied. even begin to think about where you're starting from, and that's so cool to me. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. And when we're going further into this matchup, I, yeah, I want to see how Godly adapts, whether it's yeah. with the playstyle or the characters, for sure. So, uh, sorry for the delay, everybody. We're, we are currently waiting for this. Ma this is a match worth waiting for, it okay? The, the rules are technically like a player has five minutes if they're having an issue. Right. But in winner's final, we're going to, we're going to try our best to make sure that it happens. And it's an online tournament, so mm -hmm. all kinds of problems can happen with the internet. It's a miracle that the internet ever works at all. So we're going to take a super quick break here to give our players some time to write the technical issues that are happening. And hopefully when we come back, we have got the rest of this amazing match to watch with you guys. So stick around. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like the match is ready. Thank goodness. Ooh. Godly yes. versus Akno is going to take place, and I am very thankful. Yes. Very thankful. Thank you, Internet. Please keep working. <laughs> I know that we're ready. <laughs> I'm glad that the match is ready as well because we're one game in yep. uh, with it being in favor of Akno so far. Very far against my expectations and I'm still I'm still riding on the gods that's fair, favor. That's fair and look he now, might have had connection problems in the last and one. And I am totally ready to be humbled by the amazing uh, ability of Akno to study out his previous losses and completely invent a new way to deal with it. Like yeah. that is like that is so cool to see. That's worth being wrong about. And <laughs> I'm interested to see if Godly's got any other tricks up his sleeve here. Oh that's right. Okay. Here we go. Well, we're gonna run this one back. Well, not actually run it back. Akno's up. Akno's up 1-0. But here we go. Can right. Godly overcome the counter that, oh my gosh, Ooh. maybe, yeah? Maybe? Well, Sounds so, looks like it. So far, it's It looks space. like he's, he oh. hasn't been hit yet. Daza, oh my goodness. I was going to say, so far, all of that felt like a punish off of Akno not getting the first weapon. But then Akno threw his weapon, and now it's just like, okay, this is destruction. And the weapon literally got kicked out. Oh, my God, a 25-second stop uh, yes. for Godly. We're and back to the Monday eSports <laughs> dev stream. <laughs> How much damage is he taking? 17. Oh, he's going to hit three more hits. <laughs> He's, he is making the most there the, we go. the most decorated European player look like a viewer on the death <laughs> stream. I mean, that's what that first stock looked like. But Agno is now stabilizing, and I, I, I really mean it when I say that that first stock felt like an amazing punish off of Akno not being able to pick up a weapon. And when he finally got the hammer, he was already in the middle of a combo. It was just it was it was just a matter of trying to get his feet back on the ground. And now it's now it's a little bit more back and forth. Yeah, and the traps haven't worked. The traps are not working on Godly. He's, and he's starting to mix up how he throws the weapon. Look at this yeah. air throw. He's he's mixing it up a little bit. And it's it's setting Akno for a loop here. He's doing the fakes. You can see him, he, he'll, he'll dash and throw the weapon downward and just pick it back up to, yeah. to, to juke Akno. You know, he's, it's like a pump fake, right? He's make, he wants to get Agno to react to a weapon though that doesn't happen so he can punish it afterward. Here comes the, oh, okay. Godly thought Akno was going to go low, but Akno went high. Oh, that's, the, that's the second side. It's like it just fell short of hitting him, and that one actually went punished. Oh, Godly could get an Axe Sider, and I think that might just be the stock. Yeah, that would put him up two stocks over Akno. That's crazy. Okay, X pivot. Gets the scoop. It's not enough. Godly. Okay. okay. That's an error. Okay, Akno, he, he equalized the stocks. If you squint really hard, and or if you're colorblind, you might think uh, this, yes. is a, this is an even match right but now. Then he gets hit with a neutral leg and stuff flying. But here's an opportunity. Let's see uh, how Godly's playing around it, because he has dashed underneath the neutral sink. Oh. And there we go. He dashes underneath yep. it again, and then he neutral on the other side. Akno still hasn't lost the stock, but that'll oh, that's, do that's it. That's going to do it. He, was, he caught it like as far as the ground extends to the right is where he landed that neutral light. It just makes sense that it would KO. Okay, Godly, a full stock ahead right now. And it is just not working for Akno. Look, Godly's not falling for the traps anymore. And oh, now he lost his weapon here. Oh man, that's Doesn't matter. twice in a row. I think Akno seen... wants the hammer so badly that he's not willing to starve out the weapons from Godly. So Godly's able to use his weapon throws as a projectile mm -hmm. and then just re-grab a new weapon because Agno's not letting go of his hammer. Right, He right. wants the traps. Traps are not working anymore. They worked so well in the first game. Yeah, we've seen one hit, and it was a bow down sig at, like, the beginning of the game. And ever since then, Godly has played around them perfectly. And we've seen Agno now put out quite a bit. And they are doing a good job at, uh, at tempering Godly's aggression. But it's not doing a good job of getting this lead back in Agno's favor as Godly is getting the hit that he needs in here and there. That's a neutral light down or neutral light. Okay, okay. Agno. He is getting a lot off of these surprise side sits. Yes. From, from, uh, from the camera. ledge. Yeah. Oh, big Nair. Let's see what he can do here. Okay, now he's now he's stealing weapons away. But Godly punches him out right before the weapon spawns. Able to grab the gauntlets. He can definitely finish a stock with these gauntlets. Okay, 
Akno ties it up once mm. again, but also once again, he is it's... deep in the red, and he's not going to have a second chance this time. Yeah. Akno's got to close out the stock right now, or Godly's going to tie up the set. Ooh, that downlight punished by the Exciter. Godly doesn't risk going for a ground pound. Mm, Bo recovery, yeah, pretty it's... good at grabbing that. And Godly is so right not to go off the ledge against Akno here. That's the that's the one way Akno can turn this around at the moment, is if Godly goes a little too hard off the edge, and uh, Akno gets a nice little ground pound, and then gives the rest of his jumps. GG. Godly looking for potentially a neutral light. Yeah, because the neutral light's a pretty good KO option. Oh. This damage on the edge. And Akno wants to touch the stage to get his jumps back. And he makes it. Godly goes back, has the axe. Gotta be really careful about it. Like Dude, sideline there. Fly away it's on that nair. He's so damaged. The best move to get hit by right now is an axe side light. When you're this damaged, you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's that's the, oh, okay. he's done. Okay. There's no, that's gonna KO. Wow. Okay. Godly came back with a vengeance there. Ties up the set one to one. He looked really strong that whole time. Yeah. Akno definitely got surprised in the beginning, but you could tell in the end, uh, even though he was playing, he was playing from a deficit the whole time, but he was keeping it straight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it looked like he got he got his bearings again. So this next match, I think, will be a lot closer. This next game in the match. Yeah, and we'll see if we go to Mammoth again or if we're going to be able to change the scenery here. I do think Godly did a fantastic Three, job before two, he was getting caught one, by the neutral six. Four. Now he dashes through, he pivots, he does a neutral light. He clearly gets his made adjustments. We it were was, asking the question in the break, can was, he make the adjustments? Yeah, obviously he can make the adjustments. He clearly made the adjustments. All right, so now Akno didn't immediately lose his stock at the beginning of the game for not picking up a weapon. And it's Gauntlet versus Hammer. He's putting up the neutral stick, but he's acting a little bit faster out of it. And he's, in fact, ju uh, jumping through the Wisps when Godly's not doing an aggressive maneuver himself. Oh, okay. my God, he charged what? an unarmed uppercut, and it went. He read that he's so hard. So, yeah, he is like a mile ahead. It, the game's not fair if somebody can see in the future, man. And Godly is clearly, he is clearly using his godlike there, powers. There are so oh. few moments where I think charging a signature like that is ever nice. good. And Godly made that look like the cool, like it was the, absolutely the best thing to do there because yeah. a, at no out of Hitstone, he just wanted to get back to the ground as soon as possible. And Godly was so Godly ready for it. Godly knew that. He was like so in tune with like how oh, Akno would react out of Hitstone that he was, he was steps ahead of him. That's crazy. Whoa. All right. Nair hits. Godly trying to grab him out of the sky with the gauntlet. Neutral comes forward. I just don't feel... I I suppose that is a gauntlet sidelight to turret. But Godly has been doing a good job getting underneath and on top of Akno with the neutral lights and down airs with the yeah, gauntlets. Yeah, the traps in the first game, the traps were like, whoa, how, do genius, you, how yeah. could anybody beat this? And Godly's like, and now it's like he's oh. making him look useless now. And now I'm feeling like Echo stopped even using those whips. He's, he's just getting hits on you for it, but... Mm. Well, here we go. Akko takes the stock. He didn't take too much damage, but he is playing from a damage deficit again. Ooh, down by an opener, trying to catch Godly off guard, and Godly yep, punishes. Yeah, he had the perfect punish, locked and loaded. Oh, that's great damage, though. And we're seeing a little bit more of a standard neutral game from Akno with the bow now. Uh, mainly just because I don't hear Yumiko's side signature and side effects, right? But it's like also when, when, when you're using a mixture of downlight and side light, gravity canceled or not to get on your opponent, that's much more what I would expect. And Godly is trying to be like, okay, what do I do now that he's not he's not putting out wisps all the time? And he's starting to figure it out. The side lights are coming through. Wow. He's like, okay, it's free game now. There's no... there. There are no booby traps on the ground. I can actually use this move. And he gets it twice in a row and the recovery up the top. He is really making Akno think twice about using all those signatures because he was very successful in punishing them. But once again, he tries to bust out the Wisps. It seems like it's going to guard him and do really well for him. Oh. But Godly gets through it. Not First that time, one. though. Not First. that time. Again, maybe? No. One, one more try? It'll work oh. this time. Oh, no, no, no. He lost his dodge. He has no dodge. Godly's going to go after him. Oh, he, I cannot believe he dodged. What? what? Oh, he caught him on the backswing. That's so ideal. I didn't That's even know. So, I did not I, even I know. I think Akko did way. that on purpose. That, that is, I learned something new today. I had no, <laughs> I, I, I knew the backswing hits. I did not know that it hit back. It hit <laughs> that, that is yeah. so sick. You got to be at the perfect range for what? it. What? Akko had it all figured out. That was so nice. Wow.
That's crazy. And now, now it's a really close game down to Yumiko the final stock. Is... Agno just caught up in damage. It's an equal game here. And Agno's got so much momentum. Godly's desperately searching for a weapon. Ooh, Agno's gonna steal it. this weapon Denied. away from Godly. Godly's still searching for oh. a weapon and he's getting destroyed in the meantime. Agno, weapon starving, not allowing Godly to do anything here. He's oh, coming he in for the kill. The side sink. Oh my God. How is Agno so precise with that move? Oh, he goes for the jump nair. Oh, oh God. My, come Agno. on. Oh, right. All right. Woo! Yumiko side sig uh, uh, showcase there. I can't. Do I want to see that that knockout again with that backswing? That's so crazy how much success Agno got off of it. And once like, we are, we are just flip flopping between players adapting to each other. It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But the set only lasts so long. So eventually, you alternate enough times that just one of them's gonna win. Okay, so there's the nair. Ooh. That nair from Godly was so crazy. He spot dodged the hammer cider perfectly, gets the nair, and then that comes out of nowhere, and I uh, catches everyone off guard. That is so sick. Yeah, look at that. He gets the dash jump forward, and at the very end of the dash jump, he puts in the grab to cancel side sig, and it makes it look like the distance is like double. At least to me, it does. I, that that is such a quick, deceptively quick move. Yeah, man, Akno is really uh, threatening areas of the map that are usually not threatened. Yeah, when you're fighting against somebody, anybody. Right. Right. I mean, between the wisp and that hammer side sig, that 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 extremely fast leap. Godly's paying attention to new things. He's yeah. he's got to he's got to be worried. What used to be a safe distance is now Whoa. no longer a safe distance. And Godly's got to deal with it differently. Look how long Acto was untouched that entire time. Like, oh yeah, it, it, you can I see that like, flat orange line. And then at five the end of times that. on that flat line, you were just kind of like, he's trying to get a weapon, but he can't <laughs> do it. And it's because Acto was just destroying him. Wow, 19, I think, was the signature count for Acno that game on the screen before that. That is just crazy. Well, and a lot of them were unsuccessful. Like a yeah, lot of them, not just not just missed, but actively to got my him surprise, got him hurt. 21 percent of the 19 hit. That's like that's like that's pretty still decent. pretty good, that's like, considering that there are yeah. traps that aren't necessarily meant to hit. Oh, oh Godly just changed. But wait. Okay, yeah, Godly changed to both bar. That was, uh, and he's using a loadout that is not uh, unfamiliar, right? Like, yeah, like this could be second. Swato, is this, this could be a call simple. out to simple? <laughs> like, it could be a lot of players right now. So this like, this is... seems like a call out to simple here, and, and I, I gotta question this from Godly a little bit. Acto has so much experience <laughs> yes, fighting it, yes. a Bode Bar in Winner's Final. Talk uh, about a maybe comfort Godly's, matchup. Maybe Godly's Bode Bar is way different than everybody else's. Okay, but how many times has Acto fought a, ha, fought a Bode Bar in Winner's Final? Not even just in general, because yeah, in general a million times, but just in Winner's Final alone. More often than not, I feel like. Because it's usually Simple who he's fighting out here. And Simple got yep. knocked out pretty early in the bracket today. A bit of an upset. But here's Godly holding the flame, holding the torch here for Simple. Ooh. Oh, Actum's so sick. Oh, that was that nice. Pick up Gravity cancel Silent Recovery to catch Godly's recovery. Even oh, in the game, but that Daylight Silent will get it. Nice yeah. punish yeah. from Godly. It's not quite the same on the bow, is it? Like, it, it yeah, it, it's a little bit slower. It, the distance is longer, but Actor just seems to fall Ooh. shorter than each time. I'm surprised that equalized. knocked out on Demon Perfect, Island. Perfectly equalized. That was great. I guess that's another benefit, is that you are going to get way, way more distance off of Yumiko's neutral sig than you would off of a gravity cancel stop in the nair. Like, that, that hammer nair gets that extra bit of height. Oh, look need. at this. Akno was waiting for Godly's weapon throw there. He oh. perfectly spot dodged it, and now he's got weapon control. He's going to starve this out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what you get for throwing that weapon, bro, just in neutral for no reason like that. Oh, he gets a good thing on the slide charge. He chases after him. Okay. Okay. okay uh, understandably, okay. <laughs> I, 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 he had to give up that weapon. But it was after getting a ton of damage. You know what's so cool about this is that in game two, I remember you talking about this, where with, with Akno's playstyle, you remarked that Akno was fine letting Godly pick up the weapons. And that's yeah. where Godly got a lot of his success. So, a, a small adaptation, Akno is putting the pressure on to deny it. it. Yeah, he is willing to throw that weapon away. He wants the hammer. You can see he just yeah. preemptively got rid of his bow there in hopes of grabbing a hammer. He, he clearly wants the hammer, be well, because he was very successful with that yeah. hammer side sink. But. 
It's paying off. The switching of his weapons is paying off. Uh-oh. Not that time, though. Yeah, he got rid of it, time. and right before he could grab the new weapon, Godly grabbed, the, gra Godly grabbed it. Okay, here we go. Is he going to try to side stick again? They're Act both no. close to getting knocked out. This could go either way. No side stick. Okay, okay. Get caught by the deal. Like, side on the ground. Weapon toss goes up. Godly could go in for the end card. No, pick up the hammer. Goes all the way around. No! Oh, oh okay, he no, almost unpunished. got the same punish. Yeah. An Unarmed recovery was enough to knock out Godly. Now he's on his final stock. If Acno takes this stock from Godly, he will move on to Grand Finals, guaranteed top two position, and a seat at the throne. Mm, but side air. Not if Godly has anything to say about it. Here comes the edge guard. Oh, okay, shame. wow, an unusual yes. edge guard. Usually you knock people down when you're edge guarding yeah. there, especially on that tiny wall, but he was so damaged. Ekno knows, Ekno knows the damage thresholds on every map, I, I assume, because he's really, really, really good. Uh, and he was right to do it, man. A recovery like that covered the entire wall. It, it covered more options. It was a more consistent thing to land. It has less killing power, but he didn't need any more killing power. It worked perfectly. Here we go, down to the final stock. Man, Godly's Godly really has to win this. this, or he's going down to the lower bracket. Yeah, there was a moment there where Akno just stared at him, being like, "I know, I know that you're you're in the position. We got to approach. I got that damage lead, and now the Nair comes through. Weapon toss up. I think a hammer's prime, and Godly's really thinking about this. Cause he, you're right. If Godly goes down. That's a trip to the lower bracket. He doesn't get that that uh, winner side grand finals bracket reset security that you would like right now. And Akno one stock oh, away. Oh, they're scared, dude. You can see oh. it. Akno's getting. He's getting damaged. Godly might take us to a game five. Uh oh, here comes game five. He perfectly dodged the weapon throw, but he's got nothing else. Oh. We're going to game five. Huge. Yeah, wins. Demon Island, the only stage where recovery like that won't work. Like that, he just barely <laughs> yeah. gets to the bottom of the stage, and Godly gets it. And he was really patient there towards the end, not going to give Akno any opportunity to punish off of the down stick or the neutral stick that he's been going through with the bow and the hammer. Really well played. And now. We're going to game five, and the switch over. To, I can't. That recovery was so cr I looked at that, and I was kind of like, oh, he thought he, did, he couldn't get the spike, so he went for damage instead. And then it just ends up knocking out anyways. Oh, oh. huge. Yep, so close. And Akno was betting that Nair on hopefully catching Godly going for to a get a chase pound, And then Godly goes like, nope. nope. <laughs> he just he knew, right he knew. back. Don't chase dead people. 27 count for Akno on the <laughs> signatures at 11% accuracy. It's just so cool to me. I like seeing it. Yeah, Akno is normally a player that has like five or six, and the accuracy is like. 60 to 80 yeah. percent because it's like he's playing Koji. If he goes for the down stick, the neutral stick, it's, it's because he's bred you. He's, he, because he's trying he, to he, knock he, out. He's with punishing it. you. Both perfectly. signatures are designed to knock out, yeah. and that's why you see so that, few of them. That's why he's using so them in very different ways. He's oh. using them to build damage. Speaking of Koji. Speaking of Koji. Yeah. Okay, game five, and Akno after that last game goes like, all right, he thinks that Godly's got it solved. And also, I would be willing to argue that the Yumiko was designed in his head to deal with the Rayman. For the Rayman, and, and right. Now, and now that he's forced to switch, and because he this won. This is a more familiar matchup for Akno. And because uh, because Akno lost and Godly won, Godly has to lock in the legend first, right? And he so, got to so, make sure so that Godly like, was going to use Bodvar again. Bodvar? All right, now I'll go back I'll to I'll use the guy that I've yeah. beaten many, many of Bodvar with in tournament play. Play. Absolutely. So and, here we go. We don't get to see that kind of counterpick strategy often. And that's right. really cool that that's happening right now. So game five, I would be saying, at least in terms of history, I'm giving this matchup advantage over to Agno, even though Whoa. I called Godly with the set. So let's see who gets oh, the first stock. Sniped. It's huge. That's a big damage lead, dude. This is looking like, I mean, what a great start. This is going to be very difficult for Acto, or for Godly to come back from now. Ooh, nice wake up down air for Godly. Stop, side air, could go forward with the side sig. Acto dashes back, gets the stop out of Godly, and both of them are just waiting for them to make a first move. Oh, oh huge bait! What a, that was so slick. Weapon throw totally down. Worked. And it was the first time I think he's done the set, so Acto totally reacted for just yep. like a regular weapon throw. Oh, and but that's what it took. Oh, Acto went for the neutral sig. Oh, Godly man. goes down, but this is so huge. Acto's about to be what? up two stocks. Dude, Godly, oh, oh, what a play, dude! What a crap pounded Acto has perhaps secured Whoa. his place now. This is a huge lead. 
And what? This, even though Godly, Godly has had Acto in knockout range for a long time, but he cannot seal the deal. Acto's too quick. And the dukes aren't working. Well, and, and, and part of Acto being too quick there was when the platform was traveling across the stage. He used the platform to get in range to get that recovery right as Godly got a new weapon to get even more damage. Now that recovery hits again. Acto. No way. Is he going to three stock his way to Grants? Oh, it's, Lee Cow. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. Oh, wait, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. We, 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 You're telling me that sword recovery knocks out on the side of Demon Island, but not on Mammoth Fortress? What the heck? I cannot believe Godly hasn't gotten that stock yet. Is Acto going to three stock him? That would be so crazy. Oh, he lost his weapon. Oh, okay. that's, that's okay. got it. Ooh. Ooh. Dodges the, he dodged the weapon throw using the downer, but... Makes it Ooh, back. He still has enough. I can't believe it. We that go, that, that weapon throw had, like, three weaved stock. through. Three stock. Okay, I think the Hammer three Nair, dream. It's on the air. way. Everything does it here. Godly's just got to get one. Okay, how did Ecto not get hit? What? Yeah, right. Ecto, you're crazy. crazy. He's crazy. I mean, this is... There's, He's this, got a lot of room this, to mess this, with. It doesn't, no, but this the is, three stock dream... Oh, oh destroyed. Okay. Even if Gali doesn't win this, he did prevent the three stock. That would that's have a big. been uh, something. Uh, he still has the JV opportunity here, and that's huge because the I was, just, I was talking those. about we how Godly is a super efficient player with not getting hit in general, and to see him almost get three stocked at game five here in Winners Finals, oh, Foda, I, I cannot Wait, believe wins. how crazy Akno is on the coach. And it, I really do believe it worked out exactly as we uh, hypothesized, where it was like, okay, Yumiko specifically for this Rayman. Oh, you're off the Rayman? Let, let me show you how good we I am this We talked about the that, adaptation. Yeah. We talked about it. Every single game. Every single game this set. Akko is making adjustments. And it... Ooh. That was a really... Oh, Look man. Oh, this is some good slow-mo. Yeah. Oh, we're eating good today, dude. This is a good slow-mo. I think this is where he gets the ground pound that clashes with the recovery here off the D-Light. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, he goes for the down light, and he goes for recovery, and he gets hit by that. Yep, yeah, that's right. And then we've got the finisher here, that neutral stick. I, I don't even think Godly was that damaged. But he landed the neutral stick so He's high so up in the high air. Again, Look at there. this. Jump oh. up, bam, snipe. Don't worry, it hit. The, you knew it What hit. did I say? Five to six signatures per game on, a, on, on an Acto Koji with a higher accuracy. And that's exactly, that's that's why the Yumiko so bonkers to me. It's like, I didn't even know Acto had it in him to press the heavy button that much. Like, I was like, I was like, I cannot. It's different with you because the is. signatures mean it something is. different. It is. And I believe that for sure today. You can't even know the side stick had the backswing. What? Are you? And you he, because so intricate. He displayed it perfectly. Yeah. It's so intricate with that character. And if anything, it shows me a little bit more why more players don't pick her up because there's just, it's such a different way to play Brawlhalla. And Acto showed a good case scenario when to do yeah. it, which is like you're tired. And he of didn't even use the hammer neutral sig on Yumiko. That's right, the one which that is like down. one of the most dunkiest yeah. dunks. That's crazy. Yeah. So that was that was amazing. Wow. Looking at that time frame where Acto went without losing his stock, it's just one constantly growing orange oh, yeah. portion he of the went grab. So and, long and then at the very end, loses his stock. Okay. Bow neutral sig. You're done. Off the top of the map. The damage that was dealt there from Godly was just too. Yeah, and that that's um I I kinda wish that Godly stuck to his guns on With the, the Rayman. Rain yeah. I I, 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 I kinda thing. always do. Yeah. Oh nice. We're gonna get the whole replay for the, the whole for the least, whole series now. Or oh, at the very least when stuff. you got the win with the boat bar. You go, eh, maybe we go back. <laughs> I was like, maybe that only worked once. <laughs> like, it we, was... we go back to the Rayman there. Cause, yeah. uh, well, I got to imagine if he picked Rayman, yeah. Akno in, in game five at least, would have gone with, he had Yumiko. the opportunity to watch him lock in and then change who was yeah, going to yeah, pick. It was in, he had it the was... Yumiko ready for Rayman. He had the Koji ready for both. That box. is absolutely the reward for making it to match point first. That is and absolutely that is, what that is. And yes, it's, it's that totally, is totally by yeah. design. Yeah, esports baby. Yeah, <laughs> it and it's sense. awesome because we we don't really get it's it's a it's a system that's in there for these rare scenarios where it really matters. Right, and that most and of the time they'll just play the same legend yeah. regardless. So right? that was really cool to see and, and, and to know, man, it's so. Awesome to me that Acno is like that is that is the fire of a competitor that is not yet ready to take the backseat, right? Like Acno's been on top for so long. Yeah. Losing he's not one tournament up like that. completely reinvents the way that he's gonna approach a single player matchup and then and then execute it perfectly on the stream. I mean there were some hiccups, right? It was a game five scenario, but then they, yeah. they were just absolutely going like, okay, you got that game plan, now it's time for 
strategy B. Like they both, <laughs> both of them were doing it, and it was such a pleasure to watch. I cannot wait to see how Godly performs in the lower bracket. Ooh. Yeah, so bravo to Akno. He's made it to grand finals. It's a guaranteed top two position, but he hasn't won the tournament yet. That's right. And Godly is not out of the tournament yet either. He's sitting there in the lower finals to face off against the winner of our next upcoming match. And yes. this is a match that me and Taza are personally very, I mean, very excited were, about. We were literally talking about it during Agno and Godly. And we were yeah, like, okay, we're like trying to not to we talk to about it. Too it much. is Sarme and Swada. So Swada essentially graduating as the new Simple of the region with how well he's been playing. The fact that he's been beating Simple after, what was it, like 15? And Bogar the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was like it was like a, a lifetime record of like nine losses in a row to Simple until BCX, and now here he is with the Bogar doing just as great. And now Sarme, Sarme's played a few different legends, but the one that we most recently saw was the Diana, and that was one of those picks where we was kind of like, huh? The Some, Diana somebody, was impressive. Someone picking That's the one a that Diana. had me like, I didn't think she could go that fast. I mean, I didn't like he's. He's using it's, every frame. It's 2022. He's not wasting any right? Like I, I think it was like, this isn't 2019, bro. Holla, what are you doing picking the, the, this character? Yeah, Diana was but even older than 20, Diana's like a 2017 That's character, true. dude. Yeah. It's been some time. And, Wait, uh, what is that? Wait, Sarve's playing. Oh, and, uh, cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's uh, okay. why. That's why I, I I prefaced it with Sarme's played many legends, but yes. but, but the one that we saw was the Diana. So he's opened up the dive right. here. Here we go. This crossover. is a really important match. This is a battle for the podium. Okay. And yes. if you're looking at this from Sarme's perspective, Sarme's never even been in top eight of an official event before. Mm -hmm. Now this is it. Top three, maybe? On the podium, maybe? Well, but let's, let's get a hit first. Well, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because so far, Swat is like, I'm talking oh. like, yeah, Sarve's going to win this. And you're like, I mean, I, like you he said still that, hasn't and, landed a hit he on gets, Swat again. He, he gets hit by a side stick. I'm like, oh, no, Sarve. Uh, okay. Oh. Weapon throw doesn't count. Swat still hasn't gotten hit. And that's a full stop. Right, all right, no, okay, it's a, okay, it's a JV try. flawless stop. Second, second try. It's coming up. All right, let's start, man. Let's go. Okay. Weapon, thr weapon Let, throws let's count. As excited as we are about Sarve, let's remember that Swata is the defending oh, world champ. And even though he's not this? in winner's final, this is Swata we're oh, talking about. Oh, he still hasn't hit him. He I can't. He still hasn't hit him. Oh, yeah, Wait a second. Down like, oh, there is a, a clash. clash. It counts. Does that count? It counts. I, I he has damage. Okay, right, okay, right, okay, right, right. okay. The side stick was it. Let's go, Sarve. Oh, <laughs> let's my go, Sarve. goodness. Dude, Swata, okay. what is happening? <laughs> Man, this Swata is popping off. That's what's happening. Oh, I thought he was going to bounce him to the recovery there off that down air. He doesn't quite get him, but Swata is just going crazy. Okay, Sarve is getting in there. Sarve's back, yep. Nair hits, doesn't get the downline. So I try to get the recovery up the top. Okay, this could oh. be a stock equalization, which would be crazy considering how wild that opening was. He needs it. It's all, it's, oh. it's all he needs to equalize. Hey, it's AP. Neutral hits. Oh, it disarms him. Oh, Perfect weapon, throw. weapon throw, dude. He knew Sarve was going to go low, and he caught him with the exact angle. Okay. Right. Well, Swata has just not let up on the on the pressure here. He's waiting for that weapon. He's this not, is brutal, he's not dude. waiting for. I was gonna this say waiting for the weapon spot. No, he's just going in unarmed until the weapon shows up. That downsing. Oh, he didn't have the space in the dunk him, so he bounces him off the stage. Okay, Sarme not giving up though. All it, right. It, it, could be, it would be easy to say go next, fall off the side, and get to the next game. But no, Sarme is gonna fight this out to the end, and I think. Do it. Well, Scythe and Gauntlets can do some pretty crazy things. Oh, That's stay. right, yeah. Wait, and, and here and we go. Wait, this could be the start of it. Uh, Silent, he doesn't get it. Sayer into Nair. Downlight puts him towards the stage again. All right, he's picking him up, and he's winning almost all of these neutral exchanges here. Sarmi's been in this amount of orange since Swata was on three stocks. Uh, and Sarmi's getting, hit, getting hits back now. Ooh, that was scary. No dodge, no uh -oh. jumps above the stage no like that. Scythe either. Sarme in now in knockout range, but oh, wait, oh man, one Please hit stop. away from taking the stock there. Yeah, that ground pound surely would have finished it, but Swata avoided it perfectly, used the dodge at exactly the right time. Oh, ground pound punish? No, Swata Ooh, dodged on the side. I think a signature just could have finished him off. The punch of punish with the side light there was a misstep. Ooh. Oh, he doesn't go, okay, he, he turns the ground pound around, beating a dodge in. Swata gets several weapon throws over the stage. Delight and recovery. That's it. All right. Gee, Swata gee, man, wins with a two stock. One, big win. time. That being said, closing that damage gap as much as Sarma did was really impressive because the beginning of that match was just awful for Dude, him. Yeah, Sarma was just just a little cold. Sarma was just a little right, cold yeah. on that. You know, you had to warm up a little bit, had to rev up the engine a bit, you know. 
I feel and, like much uh, he's better. He's gonna come back way stronger about in the next game. about the next game for sure. Because towards the end, I'm like, okay, this is what I was freaking out about Sarme from the start when we were watching him against Delta and watching how he's able to move. It's that play style of just having the next five or six things that he wants to do locked in yeah. already, nice. right when he gets that first neutral win. So let's see him go here. Yeah, not even switch off. I am totally down with that decision. I don't think. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think the legend had anything to do with what happened there. Swana just had the upper hand, and Swana will do that. When when Swana catches you being uncomfortable, you're going to spend the next minute and a half trying to land on the stage again. Like, that right. just happens. Yeah. All right, here we go. Sarme not switching off of the legend despite the brutality that was ensued. And I think that's the right call. As yeah. much as I want to see the Diana, uh, Sarme was Ooh. starting to get it under control towards the end there, and it'd be a shame to, to miss out on what could be. And already equalizing the damage here, Sarme Staying in it. Try to get the downer again. Recovering back to the stage. Oh, no, he gets recovering back. Doesn't matter. Touches the stage. Sarah's back on. Swata dodges a D-Light Slider. Pick up after the weapon throw to Nair. Swata just making these combos happen. And that D-Light recovery takes the stock. Amazing play. Yeah. A great peace of mind to be like, nope, no down air bounce necessary. D-Light recovery is all you needed after all that damage. Oh, so close. All right, oh. Sarame is has got Swada in knockout range. This could be the finish right here. No, misses the weapon oh, throw. Gotta oh. watch out for the hammer recovery, and smart enough, Sarme gets underneath him so that he cannot get hammer recovery. That yeah. was a nice move. Oh, he had no dodge. He gravity cancels oh, that side no. stick. Swata's Swata. starting to run away with the damage. Oh, oh my god, he does it so fast. Nice. Okay, I like that. That's the, the, the way that Swada recovered there was nice and tricky, but it left him with only one option at the yep. end of it. He Could was really hoping away. that Sarme would try to edge guard earlier than that final option, but uh, nothing doing. Sarme caught it, but is now in kill range himself here. So this is pretty dangerous territory for Sarme. He's got to play an awesome stock right now and avoid all these killing blows. Any one of these things will finish him. Oh, like that, that'll yeah. do it. Yeah, that now a full it. stock behind. This is a tough spot for Sarme to be in. Oh, and Sarme looking for that weapon spawn. Swan is stopping it. And I wouldn't be... Man, Swan has been doing such a good job in this particular set. When he gets a D-Line side air and his opponent goes far enough off the stage, he gets the weapon throw, it bounces, picks it up, combos it into something. And I'm expecting that again here. He goes to the side light. Okay, nice down air from Sarme. And let's see. Oh, he's off stage. Swan, how are you getting so... Oh, look. Granny kills the side light recovery, catches the die. I thought that was it. I thought that was it. It was so close to getting off the top of the stage. Oh. Oh my gosh, this Swata, what? Is, oh. Did you see the perfect spin? So when you chain dodge off of a hit, you could do it earlier and it will decrease like your total distance. Right. Because you're, he max chain dodge to the right, to the left, fast falls to the downer to get him off the top there. What a crazy mix up from Swata. The first time he's done it all set, so incredible. You are absolutely right about that final play there. Let's check it out on the replay. Dodged. Oh yeah, here's the cider back to the stage. Great Check punish main. there, yeah. Whoo, man. All right, three, game three. Two, switch. Sarme oh. is switching it up. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not seeing the Diana right now, but Koji's got the bow, and I think the main event of what he was doing with oh. Diana was with the bow. So let's, let's see what he can do. I already see Swata again, that extra bit of confidence. That's something I've, I've watched Swata do a lot in his previous sets where he does the slide charge, uh, pivot, neutral sync uh -oh. for Bodvar Hammer to completely cover Demon Ooh, Island. He, oh, he's gonna oh. get a wow, that was so good! Oh, it hurts. That was it's like so good. it's like that that is stage specific tech, right? Getting that side air into the stage, bouncing him off, getting that knockback that otherwise would have saved him if he hit the main stage. Oh, and Swat is fighting even more off now, left side of the stage. Sire gets him off. Oh, Sarme is just getting demolished, Foda. This is. I feel bad. We. <laughs> We were talking about, we were talking about, we were talking about so a lot. We were talking about Swat is pretty crazy. Who knocked out Swat again with a godly? Oh, no. Dude, EU is crazy this year. I can't keep track of it. Every time that I see a player play, I'm like, this is the new best player in the region. Then I see them fight up against somebody else, and I have no idea what to think. Sarme could still bring it back, but honestly, Swat is just doing such a great job against Sarme's specific play style. I have yet to see too much success off of how he's been playing. Now he's here on the, on the bow. Bow's gone. It's three stocks to one again. It's been three games, photo. I think adaptation's off the table at this point. I think adaptation's off the table, bro. This is... Uh, this is... Well, he gets the recovery. Wait, but do you believe in miracles, Taza? Because maybe I do. 
Maybe. I do. Okay, let's watch. I've seen him. You have to believe. It's not going to happen if we don't believe. This so let's try. Let's just believe really for a good second. Right now. <laughs> I know that it keeps continuing to look worse, but we got to believe, Taza, or it won't happen. Okay. Let's By go. the way, you asked earlier who who knocked down Swada. It was God. It was God. Yeah. yeah. So it's and like. Wow. He won. <laughs> I looked away for a second. Dude. Two stocks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Swada, welcome to the podium. I mean, he made it. He earned it. Yep. But I've got to give all the props that are due to Sarme. Despite getting absolutely thrashed in that round, I'm not going to sugar sugarcoat it. He got thrashed. Well, it was rough. And, but, and the, but but look at all the other games before that. Yes. Sarme played an amazing tournament. Not only his best performance ever, but top four after never That's... making top eight before, he got what thirteenth yes, 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 place yes, 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 or yes. ninth place or thirteenth place in the Winter Championship recently. And that was his All best place. The top and, four. and then looking back at the previous year, and that's the part that I really want to highlight. The reason why we were so uh, excited about about this uh, performance from Sarme going into this tournament, getting into top four, is that because he had never done such a crazy run like that before, and while he was doing it, he was knocking down players in a way that I was like, "Whoa, you, you, like Sarme is going to be leveling up so hard this year." Yeah. It's just so happened that the players that are in front of him are Akno, Godly, and Swada, who are just on another, like, I don't know, plate of existence at this point. They like, really <laughs> are, like, the most decorated. And along with Simple, even though he got upset earlier in this bracket, I yes. got to add Simple yes. to that list there of just, like, those are the kings mm -hmm. of Europe, or, or the monarchs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and now I'm not so sure about this matchup with Godly, where this might just be a thing... <laughs> It, we're getting to a point where this trifecta of the top uh, top three, top four, where they might all have to do what we just saw in winners finals. All the adaptation. Which is play a huge adaptation game of just literally play the game different every like game. They, yeah, like they have Pokemon like, types. Like, I, I think, <laughs> like, I think game, and this has always been the case of any best of three, any best of five, but I think that uh, game one is mattering more and more as the You're result right. for the set because ha it gives the, the higher pick seed advantage. and giving you gives you that counter pick advantage which yeah. is usually just nothing like we need a tiebreaker but right, it, it right, is right. starting to mean something in the top top levels of Europe yeah that, that how these players are, are with, with the characters. Out. and that's just fun I love that as a spectator and as an esports fan in general. Yeah, it's like when, it when the skill is so high that you have to worry about these other things that usually we just talk about because it we doesn't can. matter to almost any player. Yeah, it definitely doesn't matter yeah. to us. Yeah, I, I pick my main, and if I lose my main, I'm like, I gotta do better next time. <laughs> right? It's yeah. like it's like I like that's all that's all there really is to it. So we're we're getting to that level of competition with Brahal, and that's so sick. So we're gonna see here if Godly opens up. So there's a few different ways that Godly can approach this, in my opinion, and that is he can approach it as pick the pick Rayman or pick the character that he feels the most comfortable with. Just he's got the seed Swata advantage, with. so he's yeah. got the counter pick advantage, right? Or, he's gonna he's gonna get to see what Swada picks, but like. What else? There's what do a, you think? There's, a, there's a possibility that Godly, and this depends on how much confidence he has against Swada, yeah. completely disregards his opponent and warms up with whatever character he thinks he needs to bring up against Akno. Oh in the my rematch. gosh. And do we you really seen, think he would do that against I, the defending I, world champ? So I have seen, Maybe, I have honestly. seen cases where like players will go through a tournament with a legend game plan. They'll get up to a point. It doesn't work. They switch. It works way better and they stick with it the rest of the, of the tournament. Sure, yeah, and that, that and happens that's the a thing lot. that can happen. There's a ton of different ways that Godly can approach this. Swada, on the other hand, I fully expect Bodvar. I have never and, seen him play I, anything I, I other think, than Bodvar, I think maybe right? he's been like forced off something in a dire situation in the past, but lately it's like, why play anything else? Yeah. If, it's, if it's anything else, it better have Hammer, for, for Christ's sake. Like that, It's right. so sick watching him play. So we're going to find out in just a little bit what Godly locks in, uh, whether it's Rayman. Uh, I know Godly's even played Koji before. Maybe it could be Mordex. Honestly, he, he's getting to the point where his 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 legend pool is so large that it's not going to really surprise me unless he picks. What would be surprising? Blasters. Blasters would Blasters be very surprising. Would, I think for God, I think for Godly. Uh, after watching his Caspian well, on the dev stream, that's I, I'm right. Like, yeah, I'm like, I, don't I know, would, maybe. dude. If he played Caspian, I will pop, I will dance on this table. <laughs> if he plays, I mean, it would be sick. If he played, Caspian, I, I think is a character that has been locked in by like two people in history. <laughs> I think like Wilson was he one of them. Really awesome I, with I, it. I, I like, think, we've like, seen it, we know it, but but he's playing against Swat. He's not gonna mess around like that. I don't think. I mean. I don't well, know. It might not be messing around for him. His, yeah. his tactics are Love beyond our understanding. So, guys, we've stats. got two more matches left in this the tournament. The it's here. the lower finals and the grand finals. What we've got coming up Whoa. next is the lower finals, and you can see the stats behind us here. 
These godly numbers don't we'll, they we'll, don't look like a we'll lot. We'll fill it in. It's a one, one? for gold and a seventy five. Seventy five hundred. Not seventy five dollars. Seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred. Seven thousand five hundred off of one, yeah. one win compared to the. I gotta move. Wait, it's right here. Well, was it, it was it one win exact? I mean, it's one win and one v one, but his earnings include one v one and two v two. He got second place in two v two. Oh yeah, second. I guess First that's okay. Place in one <laughs> hey, it's all right. I no, did it's, all right. It's, it's amazing <laughs> how godly did in that championship. Wow, and man, his PR is going to skyrocket. I can't wait for them to calculate it after a few official tournaments, right? And being able to see where he finally lands because he is just doing crazy. It's top three guaranteed, but this is the matchup that decides whether he moves on to that top two. It's Godly versus Swat, a rematch where Godly won the last time these two met in bracket. Yeah, it's either it's either the epic rematch of the winner's final we just saw or the epic rematch of BCX Grand Finals mm. from last year. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Lower finals, wow. Godly versus Swada, and Godly's opening up with the rain. Okay, man. That's, that's what I was hoping for. I, Same. I, Absolutely. Yeah, selfishly, I just really wanted to see his rain man some more. Yeah, this is this is the character that I as a as a as a commentator the most faith in with Godly Force. So let's see how it goes against the, against Swada here. Down Sig Dude, on the right side. pixels away from get, from yeah. the dreaded third glove. Everybody out there knows what the third glove is capable of. The first two gloves are a distraction. It's all about the third glove. Yeah, yep, that's the one that actually sends you flying. <laughs> and it was pixels away. Ooh, nice there. Let's look at the recovery. Swata hits back with his own nair. Godly downering on the way back to the stage. Side of recovery, no. Tries to go for the double sideline. It doesn't hit, he gets scooped away. Swata gets that stop sider. Weapon out of his hands. He has to dodge back. Swata. What? what a crazy guy, dude. Goes I, for I, I guess he was covering like a really vertical recovery there. Oh, oh. that's what he wanted. It it's a good first move. Time. It's it, a good move, and it's it 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 has a lot of hitboxes for a long time. Yep. That's the big that's the yep. big deal about it is that you can hit pretty late in it. It swings forward one way, and it swings backward. Ooh, Swata. Oh, yeah. the neutral and catch. You heard the hammer swing of the side air, but it catches it before it connects. Nicely done by Godly there on the edge guard. He's been getting a great, he's been, it, it, on, on all of his matches in general, but even against Akno earlier on, Neutralite on the edge of Demon Island has just been working out so well for him when he needs to close out of stock. Falling air now. Recovery hits, side air hits, Godly. Getting the damage back on. That sideline air ground pound comes through, backswing of it, catches Swat off guard. Swata finally gets a hit through. But the recovery comes through and Godly tricks him. Gets Ooh. him to the sideline before we get like the weapon. I like that. I like that. He's like, I'm going to go back here and get the weapon. Psych. And then he goes back and gets the oh, weapon. Oh, but is that enough? Oh, no. tricky. Okay. Godly's still alive. He can, oh. And, and Swada, even though he's got a damage lead here, I mean, Godly could take the stock. Oh, that'll okay. do it. Yep. Okay. Yep. This is a pretty nice lead for Swada right now. He could ride this to victory in game one. Godly needs like axe picked up, gauntlet picked up. Oh, I thought he was gonna get off the dodge, but no. Okay, Nair. I think I think if he was able to get uh, a chase dodge recovery that he's looking for on Gauntlet, so it would take him off the top. Neutralite pummels swatted to the left. Dodge forward, weapon throw covered. Oh, he's so good. He, he slid up a little too far. I don't think he meant to slide up that far. Well, and even then. Godly dashed forward. He didn't buff the neutralite. He dashed forward and he like waited for yeah. him to slide up far enough to react to the neutralite. That was really sick. That is so godly. Oh, and now he's dead in the game. Yep, and down to the final stock here in game one. Set. Oh, what? Dude, what? <laughs> what? Was DI available there? It could have been. He, he just, no, he just, he just it, it wasn't true. Yeah, because it, it wasn't just true, that, but yeah. it just looked, like, it looked so <laughs> true. Neutralite, neutralite, it gets the side on the back of the stage, but the sideline from Swat oh, he wants that down six so bad, and, it's a, and he's right to be using it. It's a pretty close game one here. Godly dodges the weapon throw, Swat goes for the recovery, hammer picked up, stop oh. there, could be huge, but he can't get the, oh, is that just it? Uh oh, wait, Pushes Godly's gonna use the side airs to help him get back to the stage, he's still fine, he's still alive. What? Whoa, oh, Whoa. dodges the, that surely would have knocked him out. Oh, that one's going to do it. Godly was so close to turning it around, but Swata is going to be the one to take game one. I couldn't see if it, like, my brain didn't register if it was a side air or a gravity cancel downlight that Swata punished there. But I think no matter what Godly chose, the Sair would have won every single time from, from, uh, from Swata. Great job punishing towards the end there. <laughs> I, was, I was ready. We, we had to get back to the next map, but I was ready to see it. All right, here we go. Game two, same map, but a new, a new, 
new vitality. And yeah, no, like uh, Swat is, uh, Dude, he did it again! Yeah. What, does he have, is he reading Swat that hard? Like, Swat as a player oh. is definitely uh, the kind of player that wants to get back in the fray the second he gets hit. Right? Yeah. And, and that's a great way to punish Godly is just taking advantage you did, of that. You just, you just ride along and he gets the weapon throw there. And now Swat trying to get back to the stage. Now, keep in mind, Ooh. even though Swat is at the back foot here, he is up a game against Godly. Oh, I can't believe the third hit. I, I cannot believe Swat it. Swat is great at avoiding it. I mean, his, his positioning is pixel perfect, quite Ooh. literally, because he seems to be like one or two pixels away from hitting it every time. Oh, good punish on the, on the golly there. Yeah. Goes from there to the side. Sidelight hits. Go. All right, Swata. You got some guitars there, buddy? Like, what, what, <laughs> what, what was that I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is, I, I like the mix-ups that Swata's doing with the movement. It's just sometimes so jarring for me. I'm like, I've never seen a hammer player do that. Okay, that one didn't even go over the side yeah, of the stage. Yeah, slightly there, okay, so. a misposition there. I was just talking about his positioning, but hey, what are you gonna do? Swat has steals it away. And he does. He was he was behind that entire first stock, but yeah. now he's ahead because and, he got the knockout. It's not gonna take much. I'm surprised that that didn't get the knockout, oh, actually. Oh, that's huge. He's so close. There we go. Just to stay out of the way back down. Nice done by Godly. Ties so. up the stocks now. Oh, Godly's got it. Godly needs to take this game, man. I, I don't. There, no, being down 0 2 against the defending world champ, that's, that's, pretty that's tough. no way to be. And all eyes are on Godly to win this, man. He he yeah. won the winter championship and his grand return to the esports scene. And uh, everybody, he's got a lot of fans out there. People are expecting him he's to win this. He's got a 100% win rate, Foda. He's got to maintain it. 100%. 100%. Oh, uh -oh. man. This could be it. Oh, oh wait, no. Falls with the cider. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything that could have gone wrong that went wrong. He was really hoping that Swat would fade away from the wall. That's what he was hoping for there. And Swat just holds it for dear yeah. life. Yeah, it was kind of a 50 50 there. I, either oh. the gravity canceled down thing on Rayman X to absolutely thrash him off the wall, or the side air for when Swat ejects himself from it the wall. Have, it which... would have been a guaranteed knockout, too, if it had. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you see that. Oh, what a nice okay. weapon throw. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah a heat-seeking missile from way downtown. And as, as much as I was getting bent out of shape of that last uh, that last talk, it was because Godly was an orange when it happened, right? Yeah. He equalized pretty darn quickly. And now he's taking the lead he's after like three downlines in a row. Yeah, it's it's close right now, but oh, but Godly's starting to run away with it. Wait, he could take it right now. Is it Swatic side disarmed oh, at the worst time. No he read his movement with the weapon throw so perfectly. That was awesome, and Godly takes game two, tying up the set now one to one. That is, this is uh, a good. This is a good match. That, this is gonna be a great one. That's a Godly special on Demon Island. We saw Akno fall in the exact same way on game two in their best of five, where he gets hit by the cider. The weapon throw comes at a slightly delayed timing, and then you just have not enough resources to make it back, just barely. And that happened to Swata now after we saw Godly versus Akno in the winners finals. Really good game two from Godly. Ooh. Even that's things the weapon th up. That's two awesome knockouts that he got with these weapon throws. Okay, check this out. Reed, yep. he knew he was gonna dive kick right there. The dive kick's the best way to avoid the straight on weapon throw. Yep. It, it just, it decreases your altitude so fast that you're probably gonna dodge something coming straight and at you. And the straight on weapon but throw Godly is, knew, man. is what Swata lost the stock to the stock prior. Right, right. And then, but it was up that yeah. la the last time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Swata, Oh, Godly crazy. was right to go around the edge there. You know, there there's a lot of stages where that wouldn't have worked, but it's gonna happen here. That was a good one. Oh, I can't believe Godly. It's pretty crazy that Godly won that what? last game after how that second stock went. We, we, we were like, oh no, oh, yeah. Godly, ah, yeah. just kidding, you're amazing. It's like, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, we believed in you oh, the whole time. Meanwhile, Swata, and then, so this is cool too because we were talking about game one really matters in the best of five, but when the set goes back and forth like this, might as well be a best of three that's at this a, point when it comes to advantages. Yeah. Oh, you got a point. So Godly and Swata, uh, now one to one. Godly taking a huge lead here in game number three. And it's looking really good for him here. Swat is trying to get something started with the hammer, falls down, sideline hit, dodges in place, gets the stops there. That's huge. What is he going to go for next? Oh, just misspaces it, and Godly gets the punish. Weapon throw forward, pick up down light, double down light. He loves doing that, but no, he goes for the neutral light instead. Swat doesn't seem to be falling for these throw jukes. He's, he is well aware. Whoa! No, no! Oh! oh. He faded away to avoid the recovery. I he think was he was absolutely right. It worked. He dodged it. 
but he faded away a little too far. Pretty hard, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was, was it was close too. Uh, you might have been able oh. to still sway sway away and avoid it, but that is a heartbreaking loss of a stock there. Gauntlet's literally scraping against the edge, and your fingers just don't get any yeah. purchase. Well, he, you know what? He's he seems to be fine. He's yeah, doing yeah. fine. I mean, honestly, I feel like worse happened to the last we're, game. And we're he, more he, distraught he about. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! What a dodge! How and did... a perfect punish. Wow. Wow. Okay, Swata was that was crazy for Swata. That to do that down thing there, I was like, wow! I can't believe it went for that option. It's there. worked for him before. And it worked for him in the World Championship. It would have been huge. But if you know it what? Godly there. wasn't playing in that World Championship. You're right. You're <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> oh wait, this could be huge. One more. Recovery? He gets it. Oh my God, dude, that's. Two in a row. The mind game. Two in a row where Swata has actually pressured him so hard that Godly has chosen to dodge down. And, 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 and just, just played himself. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. His presence, Swata's presence is so powerful that it is defeating Godly. Oh, it could happen again. Okay, Godly makes it back to the stage. And at this point, I'd be careful for Godly uh, uh, if I was Godly going off the side of the stage against Swata here, because Swata's had some really great wins off that side of the stage. Downer hits, doesn't get the bounce in the oh. air. Never mind. Okay. Godly just hit one swift hit. Gauntlet ground pound exactly as it was intended for that move, and that takes Swata down to game point. Yeah, and all the of lower a sudden, finals. All of a sudden, Godly's about to win. Oh, man. Wow, oh, that was that was the perfect slow-mo on that. Dodge, he dodged straight up through the down sitting, lands right over, takes Swata out. And we're going to see this, uh, this knockout here from Swata, which was pretty huge. Yeah, just dodging around. I wonder if Diagonal Dodge would have even been better in that scenario. It doesn't really matter. Godly goes down, and he still manages to get this game here off of this ground pound. Once Swata's off the right side of the stage, we're about to see it. Oh, Swata dips down. I wonder if he Boom. managed to hit the stage and do a jumping there, but I digress. Whoa, here we are. Swata's with the legend swap. So, big, I'm big swap. surprised. Very I mean, surprised. A Koji is starting to become like... A okay, safety if, pick? If, if Taros was South America and Hattori was North America, Koji is becoming... <laughs> is, is becoming uh, you're a, you're yeah. a, I, I feel like everybody's got the pocket Koji at this point. It's it just why, right popularized by Blue first and has just ever since been something that everybody besides Simple has picked at least at one point in time. Yeah, he's the last holdout. But here we go, game four. Godly needs one to win uh, and get that rematch against Akno. And it's 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 looking good. I mean, not only did he force Swada off of his main, but he is starting with a pretty early lead in game one here. But yep. Swada's keeping it. He's keeping it in check. He's not out of control yet. But while Godly has an act, Swada has nothing. No, Godly expect. maintains weapon control. This is not a good position for Swada. He is. <laughs> how, how's he oh, gonna get through this? Okay. Godly's so good at edge guarding like this. <laughs> and, and I feel like that's something. That's oh, very nice. Rayman specific with how powerful that kind of edge card is. Is that both? Oh, dude! Yo. No way! Swata had the perfect punish, and you heard the start of it did actually you happen. You heard the and swinging? It did not. It did not happen. Godly just took that away from him. And Swata was robbed. And he pivoted in there too to yep. make sure that the spike was optimal. That yep. was crazy coming out from Godly because Swata, why that neutral sink? And, and and that's just a thing. And it's so Rayman and specific. And he still hasn't gone down. He just keeps dishing oh. the damage out. What's oh. Rayman? What's Rayman oh, specific? So right there, what we just saw. No matter what weapon he's got, unarmed, axe, or gauntlets. If your opponent's enough, Ooh. is damaged enough, that neutral is going to get the knockout, and he's yeah. going to get edge guarding with that so well throughout the entire game. Uh, wow! So godly now, up almost an entire stock. I mean, oh, I thought that was it. I thought that was it. He, but getting hit by a gauntlet player on the sidelight, and you're just going to be like, what's he going to do? Oh, but Swan's fighting back. Both looking great. Yeah, I love that little bow true combo that we're seeing these pros do when they're at really low damage. They'll gravity cancel, sidelight, chase, dodge, nair. Yeah. And, it's, and it's true. Oh, but pumped Ooh. away. Oh, that left throw game so close. That's <laughs> oh, it. Oh, man. And then Godly gets the punish. Nicely done. Yeah. That gravity cancel downlight was a bit ambitious. Yeah, the neutral lights of Godly on this stage are just so amazing. Godly's one stock away yeah. from grand finals. Oh, Swata. Could even things up. I'd love to see a game five. I would too, man. Let's go. Oh. Uh oh. This could be it. Oh, he was so close so to getting close. it. I was about to finish the job. He knew. He knew what he had to do. He knew it had to be the double. Recovery doesn't get the backswing. It could have spiked if he gets it. But Godly so far has been winning all the neutral exchanges. Neutral catches him out of a jump. But Swat is his way back. Denies the weapon. Could down air spike Godly here, right here. 
right now. Weapon spot perfect oh my for Swada. That the dealer recovery okay. will even things up. Swada's not out of this yet. You've got to believe in the game five. Here we go. Swada is he is he's worse for wear right now for sure. Godly can definitely take him <gasps> out. Dodge. What a d oh man, that was a slick engagement. Okay. Oh, oh Swada's in trouble, man. Here, here he can comes. get him again. Oh, that's the third, third glove, third glove. Oh, Godly with the dodge down. Brings Swada back onto the stage, fumbles him away. Sidelight goes back down to the fast ball. That's Looks it. Like gets it, and that's G -G. it. GG, Godly wins. One, one, Moving win. on to grand finals for the big rematch against Akno. Wow, what a great job from Godly. And that in, in that match, I love seeing Axe. Gauntlets doesn't matter. If you're trying to get back to stage, you better recover high. Otherwise, Godly's going to hit with a neutral light, and he's going to knock out with it every time that it's available. I'm wondering what Godly's map striking spread is, because at this point, I'm like, Maybe players should start taking him to Enigma, Great Hall, a place where you could go somewhere else other than on stage because he is just every single time punishing these recoveries perfectly. There's Neutral A, he's gonna be over here. He's like, I know where Swat is gonna land. He goes back down, there it is. Punishes him off the left side of the stage. There he goes flying. It is so amazing. And Voda, we get, it was one, it was one rematch or the other. And we're getting Godly versus Akno here in Grand Finals. Yeah, that works out great for us. Cause I mean, come on. You, we all kind of knew it was going to come down to this, man. This is this is the big... akno has been the king for so long. Yeah. Uh, Swada is the defending world champion. What a pop-off performance in the world in the world championship. But still, I think we kind of know Akno's the king, despite not winning the world championship somehow, twice. <laughs> it's still twice, right? He keeps getting robbed in the world championship, but I yeah. still would consider Akno the king. And, uh, but here comes Godly, clearly the main opposition to the throne, and uh, he's killing it. Uh, and, and now this is the great challenge that's happening here, is yeah. Godly versus Adam. Well, and so what's cool about this, too, is that now that Godly's experienced a, a, a what Akno has planned for him, going into this grand final set. He has more data. Yeah, I, 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 now, it's, it's going to be a question whether Akno only has the Yumiko Koji prepared to combat Godly's characters, or if there's like a third, even more super secret option that like comes out of this game, which kind of like you thought that that's what I had prepared today. No, that was just that was just the warm up round, right? It's gonna be, that would be exciting. I, I, I'm 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 kind of leaning in favor uh, of Godly here in the matchup now that we're going into the rematch because I really saw a lot of that adaptation, and I just think that him being forced onto that boat bar against the Koji just wasn't really great for a game five scenario, right? Yeah. Like, it's like if, that, if he could if he could stay in the Rayman the entire time, I have a lot more confidence that this could go to a bracket reset. I, I am feeling the same way. I'm so, I'm much more confident in Godly's uh, Rayman than anything else. And yeah. I and I feel like he he can figure out the Yumiko counter. It's it's not, it's, so. not a, it's not a 100 to zero matchup, dude. He can, he could get it. Um, but like you said, another trick up the sleeve. I would, that would be. That's why this matchup is cool. so, it's and, so and crazy. And we don't know. Like, very easily could be true. Yeah. It yeah. all depends on what they want to do. I mean, Akno could start with Koji regardless of what, what Godly yeah. locks in. Because the Koji was but it was almost a three stock. Like I don't care what I don't care yeah. what Godly's playing. If it was almost a three stock, like, all right, maybe mm -hmm. the Koji is the yeah. pick. So we're gonna find out in just a little bit here. here we're game number we one. Go. Game one of Grand Finals is about to begin. Akno versus Godly. Who's it gonna be? The king or the challenger to the throne? We're about to find out that lifetime score is now one to two, I think, after that last right, yeah. that bracket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting to see that was that 2-0, and now we got okay, so this is this is the Let's scenario. Go! Grand finals! That we were talking about. Um, Acto could just start with the Koji because it looks so darn good. And then yeah. game five, he was like, well, maybe I don't have to play Yumiko at all. Like, maybe this is fine. So let's find out. This is the matchup. We did. We have not seen this legend matchup uh, get, uh, between these That's two. That's right. Today. Even though we just saw these two fight. Yeah. Uh, we, you're right. We haven't seen this matchup. Oh. Interesting. Oh, and so far so good for Godly. Oh, man. So many unanswered hits. Many down lights. Down air, side air hits. Acto is yet to get anything started. And a down stick, a neutral air, a down air weapon throw. Acto, can you make it back? Oh, this is the... This is, 
God, I, 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 I don't care how simple it looks. Godly is so darn good at catching anybody with neutral at the ledge and turning it into an edge guard. He's so fantastic at that, and he takes that first stock with just a shred of damage on him. Oh, Godly. Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh stop. Stop. <laughs> I, oh, I was maybe, not ready for maybe that. He oh, does no. need to give a go. <laughs> uh, it might just be that matchup specific. Acto can't get it. Go. Dude, okay, Axe is not supposed to oh hit that much. Oh, my God. One Bono. minute in, and he's taking two stocks off the king. I, king who? I can't. I'm getting, over, I'm getting overwhelmed by Axe connection that sounds. Right? Like, that, <laughs> it, it is not. That is not. This is a slow, heavy hitting weapon. How are you hitting him this much? It is it's unreal. music. He's making music. It's a oh, really sweet goodness. drum beat. Godly is now up three stocks to one against Akno in the grand final. Holy cow. Akno slowing things down, trying to regain control of the situation because every time he touches the stage, Godly's got so much ready for him. Oh no. All right. So, side stick comes through. Godly puts yeah, up the side Yeah, see that same side stick? Would have worked on you, Mako. That's it's true. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm thinking he's thinking that too. I think I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the next game. Like, he's going to be like, all right, Godly, would you, uh, Godly, would you knock, uh, lock in? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Rayman? Rayman? Okay. All right. <laughs> Better uh, switch switch over. Oh, Rooks and Kits. Neutral Light connects. Godly. Oh, I think you're trying to go for a side air, a uh, dodge and read, and Akno just hits him with the Sair right on the way back. Let's see if Akno can avoid the three stock, because at this rate, Godly is trying to say, uh-uh, you are not playing Koji against my Rayman. Oh, he went for the double side light, and that could have been an amazing Dude, knockout. He cannot get three stock, right? That's not a real... Oh? There's no uh -oh. way! Oh! Three stock! Dude, what? And they locked in so fast. I don't think Acto. I saw a Koji face. Uh, oh, we can see it right here. I don't think he switched legends, dude. He went too fast. Yeah. No way. Actually, three stocked Acto in grand finals. That is godly. If there's one thing that's godly out there, it's that. Yeah. It's three stocking Acto in this grand finals. Getting the recovery after all that. Three, that was like eight two, axe hits. One. And Acto is actually row. going yeah. back to the Koji. What? What a brave man. Okay. Let's see. We're game two. On the same stage, too. Same he stage. just got three stocked here, and he's still going to fight it? There's like a... Oh, no. Okay, Ooh, that, 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 that could have been it. Uh, there's a, there is a dynamic here where Akno has the cushion of another of grand the reset. final. It's yeah, not, he still hasn't lost a match it, yet, so he has to get double eliminated, and Godly's the only one left in the tournament. It doesn't mean that he's thinking this way. That's just how I'm thinking right. to justify what we're seeing here right now, yeah, which was he's that, like, I gotta do, yeah. yeah this might like, be a personal like, challenge. Yeah, yeah. She's like, like, I, can I can't go out that. like that, yeah. yeah. We talk about he needs that to show the, the people in North America. Anytime Noel is on <laughs> on screen, where he might go down 0-2 on Brawlhaven with a Surrey, but he'll win game five. But he'll, like, he'll get there. Yeah, he'll and, just and keep he, going. And it was the same map the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Akno's bringing oh. that out right now. And, you know, it's already going a lot better than the last one. But true, it's not going great. But pick up. And after the third recovery, that's enough to take him off the top. Godly With up the recovery three, off the ground. When you, when you do the gauntlet recovery, it actually sinks down a little bit before shooting upward. And he's using right. that little dip to catch Akno while he's standing on the ground, Akno. It's like a super fast uh, blasters recovery in the same sense. Like where you can't oh, tech, yeah, yeah. you can kind of pick up with it. Oh, uh, not kind of, you definitely can. It's just hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's just hard to do. And seeing Godly succeed with that is pretty cool. Because otherwise you go for the side light and unless their dodge is gone, you're playing a little bit of a, of a rock, paper, scissors game there on whether or not the recovery will hit afterwards. So let's see. Can Akno take his first stock up the set here in game two? Weapon throw comes through. There it is. Oh, that was nice. Pivot grab. Pivot uh, down. Speed. Yeah, after the weapon throw as well. So Godly coming back in, waiting for a weapon spawn. Can Akno. Okay, not in favor of Akno there. He gets it, and the axe picked up. Neutral comes through. Siders on the way back. Akno's been doing a good job on the bow using side air on the way back to the stage to interrupt Godly for edge guarding him. I think that that's kind of like the uh, uh, maneuver that I'm expecting to see from Akno a little bit more until Godly adapts, which is just like, okay, if your neutral to the edge are working so much, I'm just going to uh, read that it's going to happen and hit you with something a little bit faster. Man, Godly's got so much control. This is Akno we're talking about. He's so good at the game, but like, like here comes Godly. 
ready to knock him out for a second time in game two while he's already up a game oh. in grand finals, need I remind you? Oh my goodness, godly, once again. All right, two stocks to one. Weapon spawn perfect for Akko. Let's see what we can do. That was blessed. That was a blessed spawn right there. Oh my goodness, dude. I gotta calm down. I gotta relax. I'm they're giving you an opportunity <laughs> right Woo. now. Right now, yeah, they're like, yeah. okay, all right, like, all right, Foda. Are you good? You, you took your three deep breaths? All right, let's, guys, let's go back. guys. I needed that. All right, let's get back to it. Here we go. Oh, oh man. And godly. immediately, Godly just starts demolishing Agno. Downlight after downlight. There's the recovery, but that's not enough to knock out. If Agno could get another one off the top of that platform, then maybe it could get the stock. Godly gets to that recovery. That's not even it. I thought that was it. Agno needs one more strong hit. And oh, God, oh, good idea here. That, that was so close to being it. Nice dodge of the weapon throw there. Godly is uh, close to going up 2 0 in the set. There's are hitting. Oh, he goes for the side air. Oh, Acto lost his last stock oh, like that. Man. Uses the That's a good way to. Whoa, no, never mind. That's a bad way to dodge. <laughs> you, it he was actually dipped down a little too low with that. A good way down. to dodge it, but held too long. Or maybe it was that the same way people use unarmed down air yeah. to dive kick their way down to avoid a weapon throw. He was using the sword, sword ground, ground pound, which is the fastest way to go down. Even better than the dive kick. It's the best, the fastest yeah. way to go down. He just uh, it actually went a little too fast. Too I far, wonder, too and, fast. and I don't actually know, like visually, the distance off the top of my head. I'm not sure if that was like the minimum distance you could travel, or if he just held it a smidge too long. I I'm think he had sure. one Two, less recovery option one, than he realized. Oh. Yeah, was the problem. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he probably good, thought he could just take it back. Point. Whoa, really? big legend swap. Is that Azoth? Oh, I, I it's mean, the I Lord of Darkness. Okay. Oh my goodness. Well, at least he looks we've like had. A, he looks like a level 99. Great boss, well, at dude. least we have a, a thematic here with the weapons that are between all three characters that Echo's play today, which is oh, really yeah. focusing on having Bo to play against Godly on the Rayman. But You're Godly right. up 2 0, by the way. So, match point to get the bracket reset. And Akno is like, okay, Yumiko, no. And Koji, no. Let's try the Azoth here against Godly's Rayman. Well, he still has it. Like, the Yumiko is still 100% against Godly's Rayman. True. He hasn't busted it out again. I think he might be holding on to that trick for, for the reset. reset. If it gets to that point, yeah. If it has to get to that point. Because remember, even though Godly is up 2-0 now and it's a best of five, Godly's coming from the loser's bracket and Akno is in the winner's bracket. So if, uh, if Godly were to win, it just resets the bracket, puts them both in the loser's bracket and we fight out another best of five. Yeah. However, Akno, he just needs to win this set to win it. But he's down 0-2. Oh, he's down 0-2. And I'm going to be real, like, act note, you're good at a lot of legends, but those aren't some happy side six. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, I'm looking at that, I'm oh, like, oh, I'm oh, like, not falling for these. I've seen, but, I've seen I the mean, master of Azoth play in 2v2s. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's oh, fair. I spoke too soon. Ah, well. That down sig was actually pretty cool. It worked. Because he, even though the down sig Started beneath the stage. He, he had, had the line of sight. He had the line of sight. And so yeah. the active was there, and he got the spike off the, or not the spike, but the knockback off the top. That's pretty cool for Mac, though. Oh, and uh -oh, maybe uh -oh. he's like, what do you mean? He's a pappy. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me show you how this pappy. He's kind of uh -oh. go crazy. Uh oh. Uh oh. Godly. Wait a second. The finish? Oh, oh he was waiting for Agno to re-grab that weapon so he could finish the job, and it almost worked. Cider hits. Akno has an opportunity for Edgar here. Downsigs are coming through, trying to catch him on the ground. I guess if I really twist some logic, okay, go ahead. He's off downsig is a bit similar to Yumiko's bow downsig. Just a little, like a you little. You're really twisting like, like, you, get what, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I get I, it. I, I get it. I think it like it like stops. It's uh, like Godless sideline a little bit because it covers like uh, dash forward weapon throws and sidelines on Godless. Like it's it, it doing the same thing. Ooh. Okay. Oh, Interesting Wait, decision for Godly to Azoth? spot dodge there. That's like a thing. Like no matter how much of a veteran you are in Brawlhalla, the amount of time that the blast is actually super, super strong on Azoth side sync is unreal. Like I, I, you'll be just like, how did that? What? How did that get me? I, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I never got hit with that. <laughs> and now it's a day of a game where Acto could stop the 3-0. It's close, but Godly's keeping it closer. Yeah, Godly wants his reset. Chat wants his reset. I 
the only person who doesn't want this reset is Akno. <laughs> well, and Akno's right. fans. Akno's got fans out there. Rise up, Akno fans. I think he needs your strength right now. Oh, he might be getting it. Oh, Science is waiting out from Godly. Sarah's coming through. Weapon throw stops that Science. Six Silent is on the side of the stage, and Akno really trying to catch these landings. Keeping yeah, a Godly yeah. in the air, and now mixing up with the recoveries. Now that you're airborne, he's going to start punishing that. That's two in a row. Wait. Akno actually the best Azoth in the game? Dude, you were talking about the extra pick. I think you meant Godly, but <laughs> you were talking about the extra well, well, pick. Well, I, 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 it's both players, both right? Players, like, it's like, yeah. like if Akno had this a secret, is the surprise. if Akno had a secret, secret weapon, this is maybe the, it's, this is it. This is the rabbit in the hat that oh, we were waiting for. But he's got to get the win for it to count, right? Otherwise, it was yeah. just a... Uh, Oh, that's... <gasps> I cannot believe wow. he dodged in on that side oh, air. Okay. Akno has done it with the Player Azon, no win. less. It did come down to the last hit, but he is keeping the set alive. Now, one to two, still Whoa. in favor of Godly. But Akno, if he wins two more games in a row, he will be so, the HP Omen Oasis I'm champion. gonna double down. I actually don't think it's too crazy to compare how Akno's using Azoth signatures to how he was playing with Yumiko. I, I, I don't. I'm willing I, to agree. I, I, I think that like the way that he's doing the side sigs is really making sure that Godly just completely jumps around that area in front of him, and the way that he was doing the down sigs as well had a similar Three, effect. Two, and something one, that I'm noticing four. with Godly as a player is that it does actually take him a full game before he like sits down and goes, I should stop running into that. <laughs> and, 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 and Akno's kind of taking advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, he, he had the, the, the freshness, the, the advantage of the, the fresh uh, play style there in the last game. But now Godly maybe has some time to adapt, see if it works as well the last game. And consider that it was, it really came down to the last hit last game. It was game. close. Yeah. Oh, oh Akno no. disarmed at the worst time. Oh, and it's on Demon Island where Godly just literally never misses a neutral light. Oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. Well, you didn't see. Look, you didn't look, see look. It's fine. He got. He got. He got it. The neutral light scared him into getting hit by five million downloads. It was, it was all fine. part of the plan. All right. So Akno now down to two stocks. This is a really good lead from Godly. Look, okay, dude. It's a high accuracy. Dude, it's a high accuracy. He keeps landing that double neutral light, and I am just. I am confused. What? How did the Dare side of oh, go? Oh, oh God. What? Oh, at that time, playing around the side sink. Akno, just like recovering to reposition. Godly, it's one neutral light. It's time for the weapon throw afterwards. Do you like grab Oh, he was oh. A oh, I thought he was going to get it. Pixels away from the super stylish finisher. Weapon throw. That was a great target weapon throw there. Akno oh. didn't have much options left, but he's above the stage, so no big deal. I think he whiffed on that weapon grab. And now Godly has weapon control, but what? What? He he had I, weapon control, think, and then he was like, "I don't want weapon control." I, I mean, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if he went to do like a straight down. Like he didn't need it. Clearly, but, he didn't need it. Yeah, he's fine. He's three doing fine. To one. This is looking this like is, a reset. And so when I, when I was talking about last game about how like Godly like will take a game and go like, hmm, maybe I should stop getting hit by that. It's just I know some players who literally are like when they're in the game, they just don't have the brain. Like, Dude, like it's process. Oh, it's a three stock. Oh my stock. god, three stock again! <laughs> that's so crazy. And that's, that's the reset, baby. Zero, zero, zero out the scores. Akno is now in the lower bracket, and we are gonna do this one more time. No more second chances. One more best of five to determine who will be the Omen Oasis champion. The the. <laughs> How well Godly and Apps is so crazy because we went from a game that was super close last hit to not losing a single stock, and that's yeah, the, right? that the yeah. difference and between. You, you totally called it with like the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not get hit well, by that. I'm gonna well, stop running so into these. There, things. there are players that have different ways of playing. Like I, I, I will, I definitely know some players that adapt mid game, and we can see them making the adjustments as they're fighting their opponents. And then there are players that like once they locked in how they they're going to play against their opponent for that one specific game. There's nothing else that they can do until after yeah. it's done. And then they reevaluate and they go like, okay, I'll just do something a little bit differently this time, or a lot differently in Godly's case, because yeah. that was incredible. He didn't get hit by a single signature all game and three stocked Akno for the grand final bracket reset. That's so insanely sick. And now Whoa, Akno. Right the next one. What? Akno. Oh, uh -oh. he's my new favorite player. <laughs> wait a Lock, second. Blocks in a string. Akno is, wait, dude, wait.
Wait, this is the coolest development oh. that ever could have happened. Acro locked in with the Surrey. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to this tab on a different screen right now, I need to let you know that it's time to look at the screen because Acro's playing a Surrey. That's super awesome. Let's go. Oh, look at the beautiful guitar. And He's a so Surrey good. is a character that no matter how I try to twist it, I cannot say it can play like Yumiko Razoth. I just can't. I mean, I'm just like, there's no twist way. The logic, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, well, if he holds the side stick long enough, he covers the whole stage. <laughs> and then he never wants to touch the stage. No, that's not what's happening here. We've got this Agno. Is just, this is, a, this is the, the next rabbit in the hat. He's so a, we've got a uh, we've got a Surrey versus Rayman for Grand Files, and Godly's awesome. is awesome. doing strong still. Agno's keeping it close, but Godly's poised to take the first stock, and he does no, with don't that pickup recovery. Don't worry about first stock. There's no way Agno loses this game. No, All right, there's not a no chance. Not a way. Chance. Where's that weapon spot? Perfect. Hits oh. with the side air. Yep. Equalizes right here. And then, oh. and then he comes in with the very play. Oh, oh no, he lost uh -oh. guitar. He's done. There's no <laughs> he's screwed. I don't know how he's gonna. <gasps> Sword picked up. Doubts it. Uh oh. Godly oh, oh, gets. Do it. What? Uh, but he used this. Godly just used this dodge like off the top for no he reason did. there. Acto got an extra hit off of that. There really is no reason to, to use the Luckily dodge that like extra that. hit was in there. Takes a little bit longer for oh, that guy. Okay. okay. Perfect, Perfect dodge. You know, out of the unarmed downlight, there are many, many options, yep. right? You got the recovery, you got the ground pound, yep. you got side air, side light, even you got time to do anything out of the out of the uh, unarmed downlight, depending on how early in the downlight you landed it. And that move he did was the most optimal move in the situation. The gravity cancel neutral signature that hits the farthest that you could possibly hit uh, out of the slide kick. So really good decision by Agno and it worked out perfectly. Here he goes, tying up the stocks. Oh my goodness, the, and the, the damage is tied up too. And he's, he's looking so good on these guitars despite getting hit for the times right there. A little double seal on the sidelight into recovery from Godly. Oh, he puts on the neutral light trying to catch Godly. Oh! <laughs> Come on, Akko. Oh, the side, the oh, rare yeah. side stick from Godly. Doesn't hit, but he gets that recovery. Okay, pickup recovery, I think, does it for Godly. Oh. And Akno, oh. Man. Every time the guitars go from his his hands. It as just it, gets worse. Yeah. It gets it's worse just, and worse. I can, I, like. Lesson learned, what? never let go of your guitar. Oh, and he gets fumbled <laughs> off the side of the stage, and now. One stock away from giving Godly a match up in the grand final reset. Nice dodge back. He's got to be careful about the He's neutralize. so close to taking out this stock from Godly, but just as easily as he could take this stock, he could lose so much traction and, and, and be put in like an unwinnable position. He's got to equalize right now. Oh, what a spot dodge. Godly without a weapon. Akno getting aggressive, but oh man, oh, but oh, jeez. Godly just takes so much damage. Okay, okay, equalize before it's too late. What weapons he gonna stick with? What weapons he gonna stick with? Okay. Sort of this. That makes sense. He, between Bodvar and Koji and all the characters he plays, he is kind of a sword man. Well, and he hasn't really had that much success with like, uh, I feel like a lot of guitar players love uh, starting strings with guitar neutralite and getting the read afterwards, and Godly hasn't fallen for a single guitar neutralite. I watched Akno yeah. like with three in a row, and then Godly just a scram for it. So going over to the sword now, uh, oh no. Man, I've seen that happen like seven not, times. Yeah, the weapon throws have really not been working out for Akno. He oh. wants to use the weapon throws the way Godly is. Godly's making. Oh, oh, oh he just he goof him into the weapon throw. He just goof tripped him with that weapon throw, dude. Oh. Yeah, Godly's really good at making use of these weapon throws in neutral, and, and Agro's not having the same success. In fact, it seems to hurt him a lot every time he does. And even when Godly misses, it feels like it's an opportunity. You know, <laughs> like where it's like, yeah. when it, it's it's so oh, crazy how he does man. it. man! Okay, awesome Play game. I really wish the Hisori won. But what are you gonna do? GG Godly taking game one, and now I wonder for if the Akno... first time in this grand final is in the lead. That's true. That's true. I guess you do start off with like a negative. Your neg is basically <laughs> negative three. It's like a negative three. Yeah. It's like ah, finally back to <laughs> a positive number. I wonder if Acno keeps switching until something something hits. We've seen Acno in this situation rarely, but it has happened where it's like he's like, okay, this legend, this legend, this legend. Let's find something that's a little comfy. I wonder if he thinks that because the Yumiko did drop a game to the Rayman in the winners' finals, he doesn't want to do it again. I, I don't know. It's time for Yumiko. I think. Yeah, I think so too. What's it gonna be? He's got oh, some time to is, lock it in. A, they're taking a second to figure it out. Oh, man. Godly. I wonder it's if it's one of those things man. where Akno's like, okay, you're locking in the Rayman. I couldn't see Godly doing anything else, right? When when the Bodvar came out and he got three stocked, I'm like, okay, let's, let's stick with it. Um,
Yeah, okay. signature so how did this, how'd this Asuri game go? Well, 100% signature Honestly, accuracy. It nice. doesn't even look that bad when you're just looking at damage per engagement and damage alone. Well, and, and it was a close game. You yeah. know, it was a close game. I think Akno really lost a lot of ground on those two failed weapon throws. Yes. Where he lost weapon control and godly held on to and the it, weapon it, control it, it, and, it like, and really punished it. Was him like for it was like lost weapon control, went to side of stage could never recover at that point. Like it yeah. was like, it happened like twice yep. that game. It, and it got away from him big time. But uh, without those accuracy. two errors, I think these numbers would be much, much 86 closer. to 87 light attacks with the accuracy being 37 to 36. I mean, that is some pretty dead even neutral. Three, that is, two, that is crazy. Whoa! Wait, it's, it's, it's mega Rayman. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's negative Rayman. Wait a second. Oh, Wait. okay. This is this is dirty. This, this is, is a so dirty. Sick. This is a dirty play by Asno this, here. This he is, is trying to take Godly's vein away from him. This is and like imagine a, if he wins. I mean, that that'll be pretty disheartening for Godly, right? I mean, this is an, as as anime as Rayman can be in Brawlhalla. <laughs> like, like, that, that is what this is right now. It's like, okay, if I can't beat you with anything else, I'll beat you with evil Rayman. Evil <laughs> Rayman. It's like, it's, Shadow Man. Uh, Shadow Rayman. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so far. So good. I mean, there's that weapon throw from Godly. He turns it into an opportunity for a neutralite. Silent recovery hits. And Godly is looking to take the first stock here. And that goes to, okay, oh, Agno off the top. And it's, this, it's this, looking about this, as high as I would expect. This legend pick would have worked a lot better if he took the first stock. Yes. Because it would have been like, wait a second. Yeah, but right now it's just kind of like, all right. Now Godly has the confidence. He's like, oh, but actually I can beat him. Well, maybe he's rethinking that now. Wait, wait, wait. That's still, pretty good. Though, he only still. took like a single hit of damage before yeah. equalizing. Yeah, yeah. He's Agno was in a, in a plenty fine spot, but but if I can speak to Godly's confidence, I think he's still feeling good about it. Ooh, Cider hit. Agno, oh, nice dodge of the weapon throw there, and that's yeah, the first time. So prepared for those weapon Godly throws. does the weapon throw, normally gets a narrow or neutral light follow up. That time, Agno got the punish off of dodging the weapon. Yeah. But Godly oh. regained weapon, a, rep, a oh. weapon pretty quickly. Agno didn't, even though Agno dodged the weapon throw perfectly. He did not maintain weapon control for very long there. This is a good adaptation for Mac. Oh, no. the read again, dude. That's Godly is all about those perfect so weapon throw good. reads. He always knows whether, whether someone wants to go high or low. And, we, and we, we've seen him do both throws, catching the dive kick or catching yeah, the jump. And he, yeah, and it feels like he's right every time. I don't know how he does it, man. And I was just about to compliment how Agno was doing so good at side airing Godly for going for neutral light. There was like three times he went for neutral light and he act side, -air side aired him all three times. But that edge guard with the weapon throw was just too much. And now Godly is a stock away for match point. Oh man, and a 2 0 match point? That's crazy. Just a second ago, Godly was in the lower bracket. Oh no! Oh, that's dirty! Oh, weapon oh, throw didn't work dude, out. Dude, he was so, he actually could have slide kicked ground pounded him there. That was so close. Down sig? Oh no. <laughs> Agno goes all the way up. Oh, side light, recovery, nair, oh, side wait, air, so weapon side throw, so Godly! Agno's in trouble. And, 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 okay, great what turn for Agno. He yeah. needed to do that because Godly was like in complete berserk mode there, trying to just end that <laughs> stock right he away. Berserk, he yeah. was like, it was just nonstop swinging. He, I think he was like literally in sweat beads when he did the ground pound, so it was like. Yeah, do or die. Truly. Oh. Okay, Agno's in trouble here, but don't play the pass to bring this around. He can still win this. He's a beast on the gauntlets. Oh, but he lost the gauntlets. Okay, now he's in trouble. That's oh, it. that was good, dude. The pivot recovery, yep. following Agno back to the stage with a huge hitbox. GG, Godly takes game two and is now up 2-0 in the grand finals reset. There are no second chances for Akno anymore. He either wins three in a row or he's gonna lose another tournament to Godly and Godly's gonna maintain his 100% tournament win rate. That's so sick. That's All right, sick. That, that is the best, e that is the best Brahali esports storyline yet. Like, if that keeps going, how I long, know. if we can be like, how long does he maintain his, like, literally undefeated on all official esports? Like, oh my god. Exciting. But, Acto's Ooh, got, that was let's so see perfect. what Acto locks in. Let's see what Acto locks in for this, because at first I was like, oh it's no. It's his last chance. I was like, production, you got this mixed up. No, they I were think actually Ko both Koji is game. always his rock. <laughs> Koji's the, if all else fails, break glass, you got the Koji I ready did, to Am go. I remembering incorrectly that the Koji three get three-stocked? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I think he's retired the Koji now. All that's left is Yumiko, I feel like. Yumiko's the only thing he's actually beaten Rayman. Wait, wait, it did I say that wrong? I, I, I feel he like, won a game I feel like he wouldn't want to rely, yes, you're right. Azoth, 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 he won. He won a game with Azoth. Yeah. So well, he hasn't. He hasn't lost his. His Yumiko is a hundred percent 
winning against his Rayman. Yes! The only time he lost with Two. Yumiko was oh. against Bodvar. He actually did it. He went back. Oh, all right. He, it's I, all right. All right. It, it is his rock. And, and this is, as you said, it's this rock is what he has gotten the most wins with. That's what, like, 11 yeah. gold medals are on the back of. And here he is with the, uh, I was about to say with the Akno, because that is just such an Akno <laughs> loadout. Load but it is Koji. It looks like oh, Akno. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. Akno survives what I thought was going to be a 20-second stock. Here we go, match point, Boda. A big, a big difference here between the last time we saw them fight on these two legends a yeah. few minutes ago was is this small stage. Last time they That's fought, right. it was on a very large stage. Now we're playing on one of the smallest stages in tournament play, and uh, maybe it gives Akno an edge. I don't know. I can try to logic my way to why this could help well, Akno, the, but the, it probably can help Godly in every every way that it would help Akno. The one thing that I think. Uh, objectively helps Akno over Godly is that he Akno can go to a platform instead of on stage and avoid the neutralites that Godly has just been ah, decimating. Him okay, with. that's nice. the one thing I'm I can think of. Glad you did it. Glad you brought it. But even it. then, oh Godly, what was that? That was crazy. Okay, Godless picked up. Oh, weapon throw forward and it succeeds. He does the dodge down. He's trying to get the ground pound. Akno holding on here. All right. I mean, this is do or die for Akno here. Let's see if he can yeah, get his first time. This first time matters so much. Oh. There's no other way. All right, does it kill it? Okay. And see. you're right again. As soon as he touched the floor, he got hit with a neutral light. <laughs> he's you're, you're he's right so about good about it. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's like, how do you turn this move that I, I really only thought of as like a, like a, a punish nice. for Akno somebody? Takes the first stock. I think he needed that for morale. Jumping into you randomly and turn it into one of the best knockout options of both your weapons. How do you do that? I don't know. It's just a neutral. It shouldn't be so good. Godly is just so that powerful, good at it. And, and now it's even it game. It but like you said, I think Akno needed uh, that first stock there to really make this game three happen. Yeah. Oh, oh, he went for it. You can't blame him, man. I mean, that would that would have been the play. A gimp here. That's exactly what he needs. Just totally nice platform movement. Whoa, that was sick. Dodge the weapon throw. Oh, but he's pummeled. Godly went for delayed downer afterwards to try to react to what Akno would do, but Akno punishes him, falls from the platform. Both players just dash it over each other. This is getting intense, dude. Godly's playing like he's got no more lives left, even though he could move yeah. twice still. Oh, and, man, this and that's boy. gotta be putting Akno on edge. I can't imagine how oh. these guys are feeling right now. Gets the recovery. Tries to get him out of the recovery again. Recovery from Akno hits. Oh, he can get the neutral sync. Oh, I oh, felt man. it. I thought yeah, it was coming. me too. But like, I guess that maybe that's a thing that you just do after a Nair when you catch the landing. Let's a see what Nair Akno could do. Would have worked. That, that, a Nair would have been fantastic. I think actually he's probably looking for the Nair. Bo is pretty good in that scenario. It's not. It's not quite like Blasters where the neutral light, like or neutral air, you don't have to really worry about too much. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. No, the neutral air. Bo will just high knock up out. Like that will knock him out big time. Tried to catch him with the cheeky snipe. But Godly didn't fall for it. Akno makes it back onto the stage, and ooh, Godly really yeah, bedded on that double side light that oh. he didn't even wait to react to. Survives. It. He just let it Dodge rip. gone, though. Makes it back, side light, waits it out, goes for the ground pound here. He does, but he gets side aired, and Akno goes and picks up a weapon. Chooses to get That's the weapon it. instead okay. of pressing the edge guard, and it totally works out oh, for him. Man. The sword gets the knockout. Akno has the stock advantage, but he is very, very damaged right now. Gotta build up a damage lead before losing this. And here comes Godly with his axe, and the the perfect weapon throw read again. How does he keep getting it right? Akno avoids the weapon throw that surely would have knocked him out. He still hasn't built up the damage that he needs on Godly before he loses this second stock of his, but he's trying to figure it out, man, and Godly is just playing this so well. Akno is working harder than I think I've ever seen him in a match. It's so yeah, cool. Yeah. Like, this is like, I, he is so lasered oh, in, so man. focused, this and is, Godly's keeping up. This is tournament it's point crazy. right now for Godly. If he takes this stock, he wins. Like, I, I okay, I want to see more games, but at the same time, I want that 100% win rate for Godly to keep going on. It's so sick what's happening right now, but Akno gets hit by one neutral light off the side of the stage, down line for the anti airs, and Akno's going to try to play on the platform to get something started on the stage, but no, Nair hits, return with his own Nair. Akno gets hit by the side light, Cider from Godly to down line. Oh, Godly's running away with it, Foda. Oh, That's four hits, five hits, he's low on jumps. He's winning right now, Godly could just take it out. Uh oh, oh, but Wait. Akno hits back. Oh, he okay. can do this. Akno can bring it back. <gasps> oh, what the grab gets a neutral light. Awesome. Okay, that was awesome. He needed that side light. Too. Slide charge neutral sick. Do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do I felt it. it. Wait, Game. match we point. Are, it's the final moment, Staza. Oh, 
That was so close. He dodged the silent recovery. He makes it back to the stage. Weapon throw comes forward. That's the first one we've seen work from Acto. The neutral and catches up the weapon oh, throw. What hits. A weapon this throw. could be the win. He can finish it now. But Godly somehow oh. makes it through the edge guard. And now Godly's got the advantage. No, Whoa. Acto kicks him away. He has a weapon. Did weapon spots perfectly. The, right now? the Nair. Oh, one more bow there. No, one he more. Was grounded when he lands as far away from the sky as he could be. What? That recovery hits him and it bounces off the stage. He's still alive. Godly just drifts down. Is that it? How are you still living, Godly? What is this? How are you? I, what? He's unkillable. He's, He's unkillable. unkillable. Weapon throws are going to do at this point. Oh, he did it. Oh. He did it. Well, the game the tournament is not over yet. Oh, man. That was insane, dude. Okay. Okay. Miami Dome. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how much it made a difference, but I'm going to say it did. I think it, it did. It, it, clearly it did. I, I really do think Acno against Godly, if you can whittle down the stages to at least have two platforms each, that might be the way to go. Just have a place to escape to, because Acno's platform movement really did wonders that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Godly is, he is got God, the ground Godly is every game on out. Demon Island. Godly has won against everybody that we've seen today. And like Demon Island, he's uh, just you destroyed. You might be right, yeah. And, and, and like that, that matchup, while still Insanely GG. close was the first time that we've seen Akno really have a chance with the Koji against uh, Raymond. I, I say have a chance, he won the game, but like that Woo. was such a tense game. Four, Man, game dude. three, dude. Okay, Woo. all right, all right. This is what this that is the was... grand. This is the grand final reset that I was looking for. Okay, I was fine. I was willing to settle for the 3 0 and be like, all right, Godly, you did it. But now it's dude. like. This is going to get five. Agno just will not give this up. He wants to stop this uh, this this potential rain that Godly has here. Because it's not rain yet, right? He's, he's got he's got one tournament win, right? He's, yeah, he's yeah, trying yeah. to. Yeah. Oh no, but it's Demon Island. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh no, let's Dude, see if I'm wrong. Agno I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. But Godly has been so good. Agno didn't have to go back to this map. Why would you go back to this map? It's got these tiny walls that Rayman acted out. Sig is so awesome on. You only have one place to go. He's got no platforms that, that he was using so well to avoid. This is, but, oh. but if he wins this. But if he wins. He's overcome it's... all adversity. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Oh, but Godly so far being like, ah, no platforms. I can just dribble you on the ground oh, no. <laughs> like a basketball. He is just going crazy. Godly with the axe in hand now. He's looking for the neutral lights on the ground. Akno's like, okay, all right, relax. Oh, Dodges in place to the sidelight. Newton air hits. Oh, that sidearm. I think Akno's low on jumps. That might yeah, be it. Yeah, yeah, yep. Oh, oh. But that weapon throw saved him. Oh, Ouch. but then you go. Godly giveth and Godly taketh oh, away. This is Godly's like best stage. Okay, I, well, let's, right, see, let's see like, if Echo can fix it. That is analysis right there. I've never uh, that is, Taza now. I've dude. never that just came out. I've never even nobody has before. actually ever said that. <laughs> I've never thought of that either. <laughs> I am so, one. that is so good. That's I'm like not proud, even, it's not, proud. that's like not even bad good. That's like a segment. That's like, okay, we have to save we'll that for later. That. We'll, 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 we'll save it. We'll save it for later. Time, next time, next time. Well, we're not in the middle of the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we, Godly versus Akno evens it up pretty quickly. Wow. And, and now, I think it's like one or two hits on Akno, which is huge because Godly really ran away with that last go. Oh, the yeah. dodge in place. The fact that Akno is keeping it straight right now means that he has just gained new powers. Okay, Godly, what have you got here? Both players are starting to, I, I can feel it sinking in, like the gravity of the situation, where they're just, oh, oh, this is grand finals, and now it's really close, and both players Every, are so evenly matched. Yeah. It's like, Everything ooh. matters. Every little thing matters here. Acto is right right stabilizing. Okay, that's a big pickup from yeah. Godly. The dribble into the neutral light. Acto, perfect hits. answer out of hits. Weapon done. throw hits, Acto's getting the weapon throw to connect now. Oh, they Dude. both did the same thing! <laughs> this is so anime. Disarmed. Oh, but the okay. neutral the landing gets Again. him in the weapon throw! He's so Again. good! Godly I've seen it like five times. That. Five Godly times. is the best at those preemptive weapon throws. He and always now, gets it right. Acto is on one stock, potentially the last stock of the entire thing. Godly needs to take one stock to be the champion here. Now Agno once again is dealing with like this extremely oh, difficult thing. Can he do it? Oh, Dalian recovery will get it, I think. That's it. Okay. 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 Oh my gosh, I can't take this, Daza. My heart. 
I am. This is so I, it is like it, it oh, is a little sick. stressful. <laughs> just a little. Oh, okay. I go. off too. We're going. This is gonna go to game five. Oh, it feels like it. Okay, so that goes through. Godly dodges through, tries to get the landing, but Echo waits it out that time. One down air hits when Godly starts getting hits in. It's like five or six clean hits. And there's the fourth right. one. And, right. and it's so even. Oh, he gets a recovery. Godly's got so much damage on the neutral. He gets the landing. Oh, Godly doesn't get the landing, though. Echo, one nair, fresh bow. He can't get disarmed from it if he gets hit too much, at least not yet. Well, he, sw he switched to a fresh bow. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. good, he's good. Oh, no, oh. suddenly there he dodges out of the nair. He picks the weapon. Oh, is uh -oh. that it? The other weapon though didn't work this time, but this, what? <gasps> so there oh hits. my gosh! I thought the downline connected, I oh, is that gonna get it? They're both unarmed, they're gonna go against each other unarmed. Godly goes for the weapon, weapon spot comes through. Oh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen! Wait, the wait. tournament is over, and Godly is your European HP Omen champion! Woo! He kept it going, dude. The 100% oh. win rate, two in a row. All you right. thought it might have been a fluke, and now it's been proven wrong. Godly is a god. Holy cow. I cannot believe how these matchups are playing out. I mean, Godly is insane, but <gasps> by no means did Acno make that easy for him. That was a hey, godly. That, that was so, so funny. Look that at was... the health on here in this final stock of oh. the replay. Is it, what, what is he? Does he? Does he does he gravity cancel here? I really want to see what this is. Yeah, gravity oh. cancel, pivot, down and recovery the for the finish. It's true, it's true when you oh. do it that way. He did it perfectly. GG, man. And I say that in the most wholeheartedly honest way. Good game. Damn. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. You're up. Uh... Woo. Godly's bringing, bringing the best out of everybody that he's playing against, I'll tell you that. Like, after after watching all these matches today, uh, everybody's, like, leveling up in different well, ways, and, too. Yeah, and it's I, all I feel different. like it's, it's happening so fast, too. Yeah. Like, Godly is forcing Agno to increase his power level. Yeah. And then, and I mean, if Swata didn't do it enough, now here comes Godly, and it's just getting and, insane. And then, meanwhile, maybe Sarme is the next, Sar is the next Sarme's one. Sarme's already on deck, yeah, yeah to, 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 to show up on the next it's, one. Uh, it's a beautiful Ooh. thing that's happening competitively in this region at the moment, and I'm so excited to see it because there, there have been like, I, 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 I it's weird because it's all a matter of perspective, but sometimes there are lulls in the meta where I feel like one player's dominating everything and everybody's trying to do what that player's doing. Right. No one is playing similarly here. Everybody is doing a completely different thing yeah, to win. You are and, it, and, and it is right so much that, fun dude. to see. And, and some of these matchups between the players, some of them just straight up counter each other. And, and, then, I, and then I go, Sarmi must be like the, most, the best player in the world. Like, oh no, he just really does well against Delta apparently because <laughs> because Swana destroyed him. Swana. And then Swana gets destroyed by Godly. And then yeah. Godly destroyed. And it's like, it's like, what is going on? I can't even follow it. It's so, it's so freaking cool. Yeah, that's so exciting. Woo, man, let's take a look at the bracket. Look yeah. at everything that happened here today. Here's the top four. Oh, this, is man. What, this is what we, we were just casting here. Godly versus Akno. Game five, Akno barely squeaks it out. He goes to grand finals, all right? And, uh, Swa uh, and, then, and then Godly goes down uh, to losers finals. Swada and Sarme play it out. We thought it was gonna be close, but geez, Swada absolutely destroyed. Still Sarme with an amazing, amazing performance. Best placement. Okay, moving to the right of that right. is losers final. Godly versus Swada. Godly just came out on top. Swada put up a really good fight. It's an yeah. awesome performance, but Godly definitely wanted that rematch against Akno, and he got it. Boy, did he get it. After three-stocking Akno twice, he resets the bracket and ends up winning three to one, and he did it with Rayman the whole time. Oh man, yeah, that's right. There wasn't even Ooh. there wasn't even like a hesitation with the Bodvar like there was in Winners Finals. Yeah. It was Rayman the whole time, and he had Akno swapping between everything. Even though the Bodvar worked in, in Winners Final. Yeah, it it did. totally worked. It, it beat the Yumiko, it was awesome. Woo, what an awesome tournament. You know what? I'd love to see some highlights of yes. this awesome Hey, look at that. <laughs> Would you look at that? Would yeah, you so, look at that? And, and so this was this was the the moment where we're, I remember we were talking about this at the beginning of of this set. We were this like, okay, three we, we never saw Koji versus Rayman. It was game one. He got yeah. three stock that he just never went back to Koji until the very end. Here's the uh, I think this was the Azoth that the did Azoth, win. Azoth and it it worked. It worked. It and barely godly... worked down to the oh. last hit, and then it got three stock. Demon Island. Isn't that crazy? 
Everyone will know. But you're after, right. After this tournament, Godly. Yeah, because of the Taz analysis. <laughs> well, it, 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 <laughs> I, it, I, I, I can't stress it enough. You're right. Godly I think you're just right. destroyed every single landing from every player today on stream. Yeah. It was no you question about it. You platforms when you're fighting against Godly because he has that ground locked, oh, locked down. I, I could not believe. You need believe. air superiority over, over Godly. Wow, so good. Whew. Godly oh, is man. incredible. You know what? And now, and now I feel a little bit better about locking in Godly prediction so uh, confidently in Winter's Finals. <laughs> Even though it didn't work out, it was, I'm it like, was a like, bit of a tumble, th th but you is, were right. We got there eventually. We got there eventually. Like that's how that is just how confident I am in Godly as a player in the region right now. And the right thing is happening right now, where I'm seeing the rest of the region step up to the plate and be like, "We can't have this. We've got to get better." Right? And so it's been so much fun to see this. Um, what a tournament, Voda. This was such a, an awesome top four. What a tournament. Yes. That was awesome. Between Sarme having the, the performance of his lifetime, Godly continuing his 100% run, Akno putting some of the greatest gameplay we've seen from Akno despite him not even winning. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. The amazing upsets we had, I can't believe it. P Pavelski went down before top eight and Simple went down before top eight. Yeah. That was an awesome tournament. And you know what? For as awesome of a tournament as it is, you might be sad that it's all over now. Well, guess what? What? It's not over. Because what? tomorrow, we've got the North American bracket of the HP Omen Championship. Oh, so make sure you join us tomorrow for the action. Head over to Brahala.com slash schedule if you're trying to figure out exactly when that tournament starts in your time zone. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. I am so excited for tomorrow after the performances that we had here today. We'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye.